Welcome to the Autobiography of Fast Ed, Who Am I Growing Up with Edo, Part 1, by Eddie Hughes IV, written by Eddie Hughes IV, and illustrated by Monica Hughes. Hello, my name is Eddie Hughes IV, aka Edo4, and Fast Ed, and I want to welcome you all to my audio version of my book called Who Am I For Real, Growing Up with Edo, Part 1. I'll be reading through the chapters and pictures from my book as well as a little more information that wasn't in the book too. The first picture you see is me and my family at my graduation of recording arts at Full Sail Florida in February of 2023 and that will be explained by the end of this book. Now before we begin this book one thing I've added is a little sound when it's coming to the next page. And if you don't have the book, just pretend that this sound means that a page has been turned. So here is the noise right here. Falling means to turn to the next page. And like I said, if you don't have the book, just pretend that a page has been turned. I'll do my best to not have this sound be too loud and constant for anyone to flip to the next page or to anyone that just wants to listen to my voice. Now let's move on to my book. As you can see in here, there are 10 chapters, and I'll be going over all of them too. This book was published in August of 2023. This book was actually about to be finished in 2013 to 2018, while being revised in December of 2020. And now for the prologue. Falling. Prologue. Thank you all for tuning in to read or listen to my story. However you found this book is all good. Even if it's stolen, I forgive you. Please enjoy. Originally, I started my autobiography journal in 2011. Unfortunately, at that time, the file in Windows document got corrupted in 2017 on my birthday. So in 2020, I began it again. I hope my life journal inspires you to become and do whatever you want to do unless it involves hurting people. Enjoy my story. This book is dedicated to my late and great Auntie Lydia Legale Phillips, my great great grandfather Eddie Hughes the first, and his wife, my great great grandmother who chose the name Eddie, and all my loved ones who have passed on too. Sincerious, Eddie Hughes IV, aka Fast Ed. This is a picture of me reading a book in 2021 for my 88 Rising Report, and my graduation cake for a film in full cell during the 2020 pandemic. Falling. Chapter 1. Birth and Growing Up. 1997 to 2006. This is my parents' wedding ring. How did it all happen, you might be asking? My mother and father, of course. Monica Phillips, my mom, mother, Okasan Ohaha, which those two words are Japanese for mom. Born on October the 3rd, 1963, in Lubbock, Texas, and Eddie Hughes the third, my dad, father, Otosan, or Baba, which both are Yoruba and Japanese for dad. Born on January 31st, 1966 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. My parents met in San Francisco, California in the summer of 1991. That was also when my cousin Kanisha was born. Within a two year time frame in Grambling, Louisiana, my father asked to marry my mother four times. Finally, one day, she said to my dad, give me 30 days to fast and decide because she knew that this would be the last time my dad was going to ask. So they both waited those days by fasting and waiting to see what God said to my mom. This picture is my mom and dad in Ocho Rixos, Jamaica in July of 1996. Even though my father's friends said he was crazy to wait this long and not to fast, they would wait and they fasted. 
They got married in Grambling State University spring break Mardi Gras of 1993. What is ironic is that the weekend my mom and dad originally met in San Francisco, California is when the fortune teller told my dad is that the person that you love is right in front of you. My dad didn't believe of what the fortune teller was saying and my mom thought nothing of it. They assumed that they were not talking about each other in the same room. Ironically, a few years prior of my dad and my mom meeting each other, my dad went to go visit his, his then girlfriend, Regina, in the Bay Area of California. A palm reader told my dad, you're going to visit this place again. So at that point, he broke up with his girlfriend, Regina. Therefore, he didn't believe in the psychic. This is the picture of my parents first meeting each other in San Francisco, California, summer of 1991. My father and my mother knew that they just had to go to San Francisco, California at that specific time once the summer of 1991 was coming up. As a matter of fact, my mom had changed her mind and was actually not going to go to attend the conference because she was babysitting one of my nieces and nephew, Iman Tanum and Aisha Tanum. Those are my Aunt Lydia and my Uncle Grady's Tanum's children. Auntie Lydia convinced my mom to go and said it would be a life-changing experience. So that means she had to go. My mom was legally separated from her first husband, Peter Reed whom I met later in time, and honestly, I was actually happy that he wasn't my father. And my dad was already seeing other women at the time that they met each other. They went because it was the International Black Writers Conference. They were both looking to get published, and that's how they met. And now we're going to move into their first child, which is me. This is the picture of my parents married on that Friday, February 19th. 1993. I also like the way that the pastor is looking at them. It's like saying, get a room, you two. Pauline. It all started on a Monday morning, April the 28th, 1997. My mom's water broke. It was a water-shaped heart on their bed sheet. They rushed to the hospital. I was born 12 to 13 hours later. While in labor, my mom was asking the doctor for medicine to numb her pain. Initially, the doctor told my mom no to any of the medicine. He said, this is your first baby and you would take all day if I gave you pain medicine. You need to just bear down and have this baby. Then he walked out. Hours later, my mom said that she felt something inside her vulva. Well... The nurse came in and then at this point my mom asked once again if she can have medicine because she was in severe pain. But they said it's too late because the baby is coming out right now. The nurse called the doctor but by the time he got there I was already out and the nurse were already holding me at this point. But the umbilical cord hasn't been cut yet so that was the time that the doctor took over. And this is a picture of me as a newborn. Some fathers would never want to even be inside the delivery room when their child is born. But not only did my father stay in the delivery room, but he took pictures of my birth too. And no, no, it's, it's not going to be shown in this book. This was happening while a song was playing inside the hospital called Move On Up A Little Higher by Malaya Jackson, not related to the Jackson 5 family. I was born at 9.09 p.m., but my doctor, named Mr. Hood, who delivered me, put a minute later, so it now says on my birth certificate, 9.10 p.m. instead. I was born in East Point, Georgia. We lived in Decatur, right outside of Atlanta, Georgia. I was already crying once the doctor slapped me on my bottom and then my father held me for the very first time and the first word he said to me was, Son, 
Why are you making all that noise? And then I stopped crying. It would have been funnier if I would have said, because I don't know what anything is. Like, what is this place? I recently asked them not too long ago how they would have responded. But my mom and my dad did not have an answer to it. Like, they don't know how they could have responded if I would have said that after I just came out. And this is a picture of my dad holding me. Something funny happened before one of the prenatal appointments. My father had talked to me inside my mother's belly. My father told me to wave once we got into the hospital because they were doing a sonogram. My mom thought he was crazy. But when they showed me on the screen while they were checking all my measurements of looking at my hands, feet, body, I moved my little hand and I was actually waving at them. They both said, wow, and started laughing because I heard my father and waved at them. They shared the story with the nurse who was doing the exam and they all started laughing together. I was probably laughing as well inside. It's interesting to me that my birth was a month right after Biggie Smalls has passed away and that my mom was pregnant with me a week before Tupac has passed away. I shared my birthday with Violent J, who was 25 years old at the time when I was born. He is one of the members of the duo Insane Clown Posse, Melanie Martinez, who was two years old when I was born. Also, Big Gip from Goody Mob was 24 years old when I came to this earth in 1997. Too Short was the same age as my father when my mom gave birth to me, which was 31 years old. And me and Too Short has changed my mom's life forever. Pauline! This is a picture of my mother holding me. I could not leave the hospital right away when I was born because the doctor said I was too small and didn't weigh enough to go home yet. I weighed 4 pounds and 4 ounces. Since everything about me was developed and I was completely healthy, my parents wasn't having it. My mom insisted on nursing me, aka breastfeeding me. The hospital felt that it was too risky that I would not gain weight from my mother's milk alone. So, at first, they let my mom stay a few extra days to nurse me. Then, they said that she had to leave because she couldn't really feed me throughout the day. My parents would come every day to see me so my mom could nurse me. They would stay until late at night when visiting hours was over. After a few days, they talked to the director of the hospital staff about me coming home. The, the hospital staff decided for me to come home, but they would need a nurse to weigh the scale every day to see if I was losing weight. So, if I would have lost even one ounce of weight, they would have to take me back to the hospital. The nurse would come in every morning dressed in her white nurse dress, with white stockings and weighed me. My mother kept nursing me and in the end, I gained four more pounds because, you know, I really wanted to know more about my mother and father. Like, I didn't want them to take me away for another week again. The first picture you see on the left is my mother, myself, and a friend of the family's named Brittany. And that's me at two months old. Then the picture on your right is my father holding me and we're watching TV together. But to be honest, I have no idea what we're watching. The four pounds is why my favorite and lucky number is four. And I was born in the fourth month. Four times seven equals 28. South Park has four main characters that started in my birth year and many other reasons. And I'm also the fourth of the Eddie generation. You know, I have to say, I was born at the right time. Because 1997, to me, things were changing. I came at the right time for my mom to be a mother on Mother's Day and for my dad to be a father on Father's Day. 
The funniest story about me and my mom was the first time I started walking because I walked towards my dad. The thing was is that my mom was waiting for me to walk for such a long time. Then one day in the summer of 1998, after me and my dad has finished played in the pool together, we went inside. I started walking towards him while my mother was taking a nap. And this is possibly this day. This is me and my father at the pool while I was one years old. And it has a tile from a Polaroid that says, Daddy in Blue, Sunday, July the 5th. 1998. My dad waited for my mom to wake up and say, Monica, come see. Okay, now walk towards me. I did. My mom was very mad at that, especially because, you know, once again, my mom was waiting for me for again for a very long time for me to take those first steps. I even had those lawnmower toys that Pops the plastic balls as soon as you just start walking. And it's a VHS cassette of me doing this on, and it was called Blue 98 with this toy. Falling. The first picture on the left is my mom holding me in the New Year's of 1998, January. The second picture on your right is my mom holding me in the toy cabin in my bedroom. My funniest moment with my dad was about a yellow and silver baby spoon that my parents would feed me with. It read Gerber on it. He still has it to this day. When I was still a baby and crawling, I would put the spoon inside my father's work bag. At first they were confused, but my dad has figured out eventually that I was trying to give it to him for memory. Speaking of which, the left bottom left of the picture is my dad and I in the cabin clubhouse. The bottom right picture is me eating grits or cream of wheat and I was seven months old. As a toddler, I love to read, have fun, learn new things, and watch television. You know, even as an adult, I still love to do these things today. It is amazing how many places I have been as a baby without crying, even on a plane. No one would know a baby was present. That's how quiet I was. The only time I would actually cry if I was just hungry or tired. This upper picture here was my very first birthday, believe it or not. I set my first word Sears on our way to the Greenbriars Mall. It's the same place where this birthday picture was taken. And you know what? I want to give thanks. Whoever edit this photo. Because it really looks like. I'm interacting with the cartoons. In that photo. As I was developing normally. I went to the doctor. And got that required. 18 months immunity shots. When I returned to the doctor's office. Something was different. I wasn't acting like my normal self, playing, having fun, and talking. Like, that's just, I wasn't doing that anymore. It was autism. Now, for those who are wondering how I got it, well, here is the real raw deal. I was not born with it. There is nobody on my father or mother's side that has traits to it either, especially since it's not hereditary. It was literally when I was taken to the hospital to get the shot for the shot records of schedule of all children in the United States are given. Because at that time, you really couldn't go to public schools unless your child had a shot. Now, I do believe that autism can come into your life in other ways. Or in other words, autism can come in many shapes sizes and puzzle however since i am the one that has it this is my personal story and how i contracted autism i went to the doctors to get a shot and did not come out the same way i came in it bothers me when people have said that's just not how you get autism but for me this is actually how it happened and 
I had to get through life this way of the world the best way I can. I am the only one that must live with it. And it all, you know, my life, it all changed drastically. It was like everything I knew before those 18 months was gone. I had to restart my whole life again. My family being upset is just an understatement. So these two pictures right here from the left and the right is me from my 12 and 14 months of autism in Atlanta and California. Falling. It was like someone cut off my baby knees and my developing brain. Thankfully, my family was there for me. Thanks to Judy Human, mother of disability rights movement, and others of the same fabric for their work and incorporation in disability areas for people like me. I would also like to thank the Black Panthers for standing up for the civil rights. Women, Infant, and Children, the WIC, a federal nutrient program to help family of all races across the country with low-cost food products. The WIC was created by the Black Panther Party in the late 1960s. According to Gabriel Scott, lecturer and historian, the Black Panther Party created the Free Breakfast Program for Hungry Children, Free Health Clinic, Free Employment Program, Free Ambulance Program, and GED classes. This picture is my grandmother Gladys Hughes holding during my first month of autism. She and my mom believed that I would make it high on the spectrum. I started low on the spectrum of autism, but they are the ones that really believed that I was going to make it high on it. And even the picture has been titled Mama Blue and Trey on Friday, December the 11th, 1998. Trey is my dad's nickname. Of course, the most popular free breakfast program started in 1969 under the leadership of the founders Bobby Seal and Huey Newton. The intentional purpose of the Black Panther Party establishment was to fight against police brutality and exercise their right of self-defense. Autism or the autism spectrum disorder is a condition related to the brain development that impacts on how a person receives and socializes with others, causing problems in social interactions and communication. This disorder also includes limited and repetitive pattern of behavior. The term spectrum and autism spectrum disorder refers to a wide range of symptoms and severity. I say having autism is when things that are super simple to the average person is not really, you know, simple. It's just very difficult. So, you know, for examples, like putting on clothes, buttoning them, putting on shoes and tying them, standing still, understanding jokes, Talking the conversations, understanding idioms, loud noises, too many colors or movement in a room, multiple instructions, starting the conversation of, of dating, driving, talking, attending regular classes, playing sports, and play of dietary carvings. It's just that's it's it's difficult. And not only that. It's just something that was very confusing to me at first. Here are these two pictures of my father feeding me for my second month of autism. And as you can see from these pictures, I'm, I'm crying. I guess I was probably tired that day, even though it's the morning. But I guess I was just tired in the morning. I don't know. Accommodation always matters to help someone live their best life and to make things easier. I do believe that everyone needs some type of accommodation or need to things of a certain way to function at their highest capacity. However, when you have 
special needs, it takes legalization, policies, and laws to be treated as a human being to have rights in the first place. For me, there are just specific times when I need to be told exactly what I got to do in those steps. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't get it. I am also happy to have my family, friends, fans, and others to treat me like I don't have autism. Meaning that until they see it as autism that is stopping something seemingly normal from flooring. Or, you know, like I said, in other words, they just treat me like a human being. There are levels to autism and everyone is different and different level is on the spectrum. Once you separate children from each other based on the race, gender, disability, class, you have destroyed a relationship, a friendship, and a partner. Children relate to kids more than adults because they don't really worry about those things. Since my friends just accept me the way I am and I was allowed to the IEP requirement sometimes to be with students my age with with or without autism, I was treated a lot like I didn't have autism. I learned from things and they learned things from me. This picture at the bottom is my mother and I visiting one of her friends, Dana Ross in Washington, D.C., the winter holiday of 1998, and this was my first month of autism. My mom began instantly researching as soon as she got the diagnosis that something was off about me, and there was some developed mental delays on me that she never seen on me before this time she was the first person to notice something was really different and strange about how I was expecting life and how I was acting she came upon the subject of autism and Asperger's and just knew that in her heart it is what I have also at that time in 1998, autism was a brand new thing, believe it or not. Falling. I will admit at first, it felt like a curse at school. Because, you know, even though I loved school in my elementary days, I just would get in trouble so many times. It is like until you put someone's behavioral plan in the IEP, which stands for the individualized educational plan, the staff, there are exceptions, are not nice and not understanding of why you may be behaving the way that you do. Even the students may not understand based on how the teacher reacts to you. Therefore, you are expelled and lots of your parents are called on the phone daily of how bad and wrong you are. You feel like you're just bad and there's just something wrong with you as a person, even though in this case, you, you can't control it. You know, it's just, this is just something you have and there's, there's nothing you can really do about that. Once they understood I needed assistance and that I have autism, some staff got on board to make my life better and some had to be forced to get on board or choose not to deal with it. My mother researched a lot and had proved to the staff and administration on how it was policy and I had rights to have accommodation and other educational assistance. I had to change schools a lot of times, like more than 10 times in Louisiana. If I had a good team or staff, teachers and supportive administration around me, then I would really have a good school year. When I had negative team or stressed out teachers, I would have a horrible school year. I say team because 
when you have an IEP that is at least five to 10 people, including therapists, speech, occupational, physical education, AKA PE, and the principal, teachers, aides, tutor, other administration, all meeting with your parents or guardian voting on what is gonna happen to you of what is not. They decide what they can or cannot assist you with when it comes to learning or even passing or excelling in math, reading, English, physical education, science, foreign languages, and all other requirements. Because I opted for a regular high school diploma like the other students without autism and not a certificate, I was at times punished for that because the school and teachers, some overworked, had to accommodate me legally, the IEP. But when they didn't, my mom would call a meeting and told them off about it. So I do have a high school diploma and that is why I was able to attend universities. It was not limited to only tech schools and community college. Also, along with just having a diploma, my grade point average GPA was high enough. I applied, got in, and went to a university, Full Sail University in Florida. Graduated with two bachelor's degree, and it shocked the hell out of everyone, except for my mom and a few other people. These are two pictures of my dad holding me before and after autism. I still liked my dad carrying me on his neck. And also that was the same thing my dad still did, even with or without autism, is that he would still carry me. I think what gets lost in translation is students with special needs are not going to grow up and are limited of what they can do. The bar is not set high for many of us and with the help needed to surpass that bar. It's just as we turn 17 or 18, I mean, that's it. We should just go to our house, our parents' house, pretty much uh, sit on the couch or in our rooms and watch TV or on the internet for the rest of our life and just, you know, be happy with that. But, you know, we have dreams, too. So the development and education in high school must be the same for everyone. Preparation to be out in the world after high school and thriving was a better version of ourselves. If you qualify for social security, disability, the SSI check, you may not get is enough to be an independent person with living on your own, even in your own apartment or house. Think about the living expenses for anyone, not even back in the 20th century. I'm talking about even today or even when it's the future of the 22nd century. See how much it is to pay for, you know, rent, mortgages, cable, internet, cell phone, the car payment, car insurance, the or Ubers, Lyft, public transportation, food, medical expenses, entertainment, the electricity, the water, the garbage, saving, accounting, hygiene, uh, haircuts, etc. Man. Based on your organizational and hygiene or cleaning skills, you may even need to include your budget in a week in cleaning or maid services and a chef, a, a cook. I am serious. Things others take for granted or just are not knowledgeable of. We are set up to be forever dependent on someone. In college, I penalized for having a work study job to gain a job skill and to help my tuition and had to pay back money for the social security admission. My income was an average of 20 to $70 a month through a federal work study job. The process of even getting a check was really not that easy. I had to wait four years 
before the social security psychiatrist even saw me in the first place. All the tests were run and millions of questions had to be answered to even to be approved to get an SSDI. I started to get a check when I was 18. When my parents first applied, I think I was seven or eight years old. And I was denied with a statement that my dad made like just too much money. Yeah, that's literally the reason. Like it was like 40K a year, which I don't even think that was true. Most people do not have any ideas of the sacrifices for guardians and the family of how expensive it truly is to have a child with special needs. A vacation for the family or a night out is just out of the question. What about the breaks for the parents? I mean, who will babysit? You're lucky if a family member can just say yes. And if so, maybe once or twice a year, maybe every other year. And just for one night, can we even afford a babysitter? A break? A night out? Not going to happen. The government does not automatically take care of everything. They don't care about the special diet like gluten free, no red dye, and casing free fruit. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I'm still, still. I know my red dye thing is getting better, but I still refuse to just eat red dye from here on out. If you are approved for therapy, you must get there by a bus or a car. Someone must take you. A parent or guardian can't hold down a regular job and take care of someone to therapy practically every day. They might not even have a car. What about the academic tours year-round? It's needed too, right? Who can pay for the sacrifices for that? (sighs) Initially, my mom thought she could be a stay-at-home mom for the first years of my life and my little sister's life and then go back to work once we started preschool. However, due to the demands, my mom quit pursuing her career and to stay home to take care of me and my sister. Yes, I have a little sister and she'll be mentioned later. But... My father still had to go to work every day and bring all the money home. Thank God he did. From understanding all of it, it was a struggle financially. They ate beans and rice for years so I can get to eat gluten-free and caseline free food. More expensive than food with those ingredients and drink with no dye, specifically red dye. I know from... The health food stores, I had treats of GF and CF donut bread. Toasting makes it taste better. Ice cream sandwiches, rice milk was used sometimes instead of regular milk. My cornbread to this day is made with applesauce instead of the regular ingredients that's used to make cornbread. To reiterate something I said previously, because, you know, that's just how my brain works. The government does not automatically take care of things. They don't even care if you're on a special diet or not, or even if you're approved for therapy. You got to get there by bus or car. Someone has to take you. A parent or guardian cannot be hold down a regular job to take someone to therapy practically every day. You know, and once again, you know, what about the tutors year round? It's needed too. Who is really going to sacrifice for that? Last I required from the social security office, no one gets more than a maximum SSSDI. Once again, stands for social security disability check. This is less than $950 a month and everyone must approve every year through social security that they still have autism. Yeah, yeah, let me let me say that again. You have to be there 
to prove that you have autism. I do understand most people can fake it somehow, which is messed up. But, you know, for our case, for, like, actual people with autism, like, you can't grow out of it by age, you know? You know, I'm still going to have it even once I'm dead. I'm I'm always going to have it. Even as a 27-year-old, like, narrating this to you, I still have it. It's still, it's not going to go away. You know, it's just, it's not like a walk in the park or a nice shiny day, you know what I'm saying? What really helped me set me free from the constant challenge of autism was music and cartoons. If you really want to learn more about a walk with autism, check out a YouTube video called that featured me and my mom that is titled Mother and Son Teaching a Class on Autism Class. July the 2nd, 2015. Don't don't type the date in the year in the search bar just just the title and this is once again that's my mom speaking on a graduate class and i'm in it too and also my sister was recording the event as well this picture is just my mom and me playing around the show that made me really feel free to grow is a cartoon network show that was made in canada called Ed, Ed, and Eddie, created by Danny Ananucci. I grew up in the suburbs, and although I relate to all the Eds, the kids aren't the main character, but they do remind me of my own friends. And I, you know, I can also relate to the Eds. The show was created when I was one to two years old, but I didn't get to see this show until I was seven years old in 2004. It was about the simplest things like how kids have to work for money, imagination of how to play, and just, you know, kids just being kids. In 2004, in that same year, that is when the show went to Japan, for, but for only two seasons. I relate to three characters, not only because my name is Eddie, Ed has a little sister like I do, my little sister is God of Ari, but... My sister is, is, is nicer. Ed Double D is my favorite character because he's just so smart and so nice like I am. Eddie and I both came up with ideas. Unlike myself, he is very mischievous. When the show came to an end, I was happy that I made movies on the computer that included Ed and Eddie, and that will be explained more in later chapters. This picture is my mom, my sister, and I eating cotton candy at the circus. Yeah, my sister and I weren't afraid of the circus. I don't even remember what we saw, but we just we weren't afraid. Like around that time when I found Ed and Eddie in 2004, Ananucci, the creator, has captured what childhood is like. For, for not just me, but for a lot of kids, and even for people who are already older, a childhood for them too. It was just like even how I found Stefan Hilberg, may his soul rest in peace. He is the creator of SpongeBob. It changed the lives for us too. The Eds taught me how to think creatively. Fun fact, this was Danny's first attempt of doing a kid's show. He created the show on a bet and succeeded amazingly. Cartoon Network aired the show but did not really own it. It was out it was out of Canada and created by AKA Cartoons. Unfortunately, I remember a time when I was living in Atlanta. I was trying to find Cartoon Network, but Ed and Eddie was not on it. And like I said, that will be a story that will be explained later too. I am so happy that Danny allowed this show to be on air. I believe the show ended in 2009 the best way it could honestly end. Called The Big Picture Show featuring Eddie's older brother. At the end of the episode, you end up liking all the ads. Thanks to Danny, all the actors, actresses, and staff which includes the cleaning team. For making the best kids show ever. For kids like me. 
And you know what? I even want to thank the people that were in the background. I want to thank you guys too. Pauline. There's three pictures that you see on the top corner. The first picture is my great grandpa, grandpa, and my father. Yes, my that young man that's holding that baby. That's my grandpa holding my dad. And the old man, that's my great grandpa. My great grandpa died when my father was in middle school. But my sister and I got to see his wife before she passed away. The second picture in the middle is my grandpa, which is Eddie the second, my dad, Eddie the third, and myself, Eddie the fourth. Also to reiterate that old man in the first picture, yep, that's that's Eddie the first. So you could really say we were the original Ed, Ed, and Eddie. The third picture is my father reading to me, and this was the month that Ed, Ed and Eddie and SpongeBob started, right in the New Year's of 1999. Godavari Hughes, my little sister, Emoto-chan. That, that is how you say little sister in Japanese, or just Emoto. She was born on January the 29th, 2000. Yep, the start of 2000. In California, the funniest thing on her birth certificate is that they said that her gender is male. She, she's not male, trust me. My father caught the mistake and changed it for it to be changed to the right gender, which is female. I gave her a lot of things and, she, you know, she gave a lot of things back to me. Even though sometimes we fight, we, we do work it out very fast. And she really did treat me like I was her big brother. She showed me things in the house when I was little since I couldn't really identify things or emotions. And she showed me as much as my mom and dad did of just life and love. So we got three pictures at the bottom. This first one is Godavari just being born in California and my mom holding her. The second picture in the middle is my dad holding my sister for the very first time. And in this last picture, it shows my father, I... And my little sister in Louisiana. My sister and I both grew up in Baton Rouge and Gonzales, Louisiana. I will talk about it later. But it's like we couldn't at the time. We just couldn't afford to go to California and Atlanta. We lived in an apartment in Baton Rouge from 2000 until the end of 2004. In, in Baton Rouge. That, that's the first part is Baton Rouge. The apartment had two bedrooms. One upstairs with my sister and one downstairs that had a PS2 controller and a large poster of Beyonce. Not to mention is that I have a cardboard cutout of her from her first album, Dangerously in Love, in the year of 2004. We have four televisions in the house, one in each bedroom and one in the living room. At the age of seven, I love Beyonce and his Swedish group called Play so much that every day when we had our very first computer, which is a Windows, I would always go to Google to go check out our website. The computer had AOL dial-up noise and that was pretty much what Wi-Fi is at the time. The PS2 was actually my Auntie Tabby. When I was little, I just took it from her house and... My sister was helping me too, and she saw it and just just laughed. She she one day, she just literally let us take it. Like just to go back to that, she let us take it. Like that's the insane part about that. But unfortunately, one day in two thousand seven to like two thousand eight, uh, her PS two broke. I wanted to try something because I had these two Goosebumps DVD. But the thing I did is like I wanted to see what would happen if I put two DVDs in there at once. And it never came out. That's how that broke. A neighbor came out and wanted to fix it during the hurricane in 2008. But the thing is, he never brought it back. 
to this day, I'm not sure why. And probably he maybe fixed it himself. And probably maybe even to this day of 2024, as like I say, I'm narrating this to you. He's probably selling it on eBay or something. I, I, I probably wouldn't even put money on it. I just have that feeling. These are the two pictures of us living in the apartment that we lived in that showed my parents, Godavari, and myself of two pictures being taken from my mom and my dad. My favorite thing about the apartment was the swimming pool. Another great memory about that place is that we would make homemade because of gluten and casein free diet. It's pizza at our house every Tuesday. And even to this day, it's a tradition that every Tuesdays, even for home and holiday vacation, is that we every Tuesday night, we would have pizza at our house. And fun fact, I was actually the one that came up with it. And I didn't even know about it until I got older. I remember during this time that my grandma said that the Catholic school I was attending was more fun than the actual school I would go to, which is called Central, which, you know, that will come later in time. But, you know, I hate I really hate to burst my burst this bubble on my grandma. But actually, I had horrible memories at that Catholic school, too. But. I would say one of my fun moments was I remember I was teaching a class during the fundraiser. I don't even know what I was teaching, but it's the fact that they let me do it. And God only knows what was going on. And then I remember even getting some free soda bottles. Uh, Santa came into our classroom to give us Casper and cookies. And me being brave enough at the time is to step on this big cockroach that was in the daycare. But as much as there is good memories, now we got to move into the worst memories I had at that Catholic school. So here we go. This picture is once again my father and Godavari and I just... At the apartment once again. We lived there for so long that there was a time that I actually thought it was an actual house. I didn't think it was an apartment. And apparently, you know, my sister thought the same thing as well. And we used to draw on that red wall too. At school, I would get in trouble for some reason. I can't even remember. The teachers would want me to stand against the wall. And this this was uh, at the daycare. The problem was that this specific wall is a brick wall and my hair, it just got stuck onto it. So it wasn't like I was refusing to stand against the wall. I just couldn't really, I just was trying to tell them that I can't because my hair, you know, my hair was uncomfortable standing on it. But unfortunately, you know, I couldn't, it's either I couldn't get them in time to tell him what's the reason, or maybe even at the same time, I couldn't explain it. But basically, they, they lied. They lied to my dad, to my father, and said, I refuse to, to stand against the wall. And that's what made me get in trouble. There was another time, and for some reason, at the same place, the... I don't I don't know what happened that specific day, but I remember that I was crying. I don't know why I was crying, but I just I was sad about something. I don't even know what it was, but like I said, I was sad, I was crying, and those same people recorded me crying and showed it to all of not only my classmates but everybody that was there at the time. Louis, for that alone, I just wanted to just for that alone, I would just rather have this place just literally be burned in hell after that. This is another picture of the apartment of my mom, my sister and myself. It's moments like this that keeps my drive going, especially for my life to keep going to this very day. Speaking of sadness, the first time I actually remember being sad, 
is because of the singer that is named Aaliyah when she passed away. She was the first celebrity that I not only love, but I could actually remember. And she, and it wouldn't be the last time I would get upset that not only someone I really cared about died, but, you know, a celebrity in that mind or even friends and stuff. Mind you, four years after she died in 2001, I found out later in 2004 that she passed. The first song I can remember was from a music video channel that's defunct that's called The Box. And it was her song that was called Are You That Somebody that featured Timbaland and became the soundtrack of Eddie Murphy's version of Dr. Doolittle. At that time of the release, I was one years old. Before I move any further, The Box was a public access program from 1985 to 2002. You could call in to request your favorite music video to play or you know, if you have your own film or something like that, like bring the reels in, you could bring and request your own music video too. Even throughout the time when internet was a brand new thing, you can even email them to play the song that you want or your own song. I believe that also at that same time, I would also believe foreign music videos could be played at the same time as well. I believe it included also underground artists and groups that weren't really being played on public radio and television, but that was the way that they would get their shine. And, you know, the box, even from the time, it was really, it was a big deal. It was just like MTV, but, you know, for everyone, pretty much. The show was more likely like that channel, best believe, it was like an inspiration for TRL for them to just do what they got to do. Now back to Aaliyah. So this is another picture of my dad, my sister, and I. It looks like we're in another place that's outside the United States. But we're just in New Orleans. The second and last time I remember Aaliyah was two years later in 2000s in Back in One Priest that featured DMX. And it was a soundtrack for a movie that's called Romeo Must Die. I was three years old and was surprised to see how much she has changed. Unfortunately with me, it was the last time I saw her. And also on that note, I want to give, you know, a big shout out to the big dog, Darkman X, because he is now gone too. So now back into the story. Thanks, thank, thanks for thanks for doing your thing for the Rough Riders, man. I miss you as well. Back in 2004, there was a website that's called Beat Greeks. It was a website where it played cards like a musical note, like um, Hallmark cards, but it was like digital. I saw Aaliyah for that song that's called Miss You. So I was trying to figure out that moment. And also, I was given an Aaliyah DVD. I lost it at the time, but I got myself another one in 2009. And that was the time I started to realize what the word deaf really meant. I remember this book of Mr. Rogers that was actually talking about deaf. And speaking of which, rest in peace to the neighborhood of Mr. Rogers, my neighbor. Once... I gathered the information. I went back into my room, uh, the downstairs room of the apartment to watch Are You That Somebody? And then I just started to bawl and cry my eyes out. And the reason why I started crying is because I realized that was the very first song I remember from her. And that realization that she was never going to come back ever. And I missed her so much. And also even realizing of like how nice of a person she was. She was funny, charismatic, and just so beautiful at not even just her singing, but her choreography and just everything. 
And for her to not come back, it meant a lot to me. Another sad moment of mine is when I was watching the special features of the Beyonce Live and I saw the Kellen Rowland music video that is called Stall. It was sad because it was about a boy who killed himself and a basketball player that got killed too. When we went to someone's birthday party, I was still sad from watching that music video and I was uh I was being recorded being sad at the Balancy House. However, one of the best things that cheered me up at that time was Missy Elliott and Eminem. Their music videos were so much fun to watch and their chemistry was so intriguing to watch too. This picture really captured my sadness during this time, but I did like balloons and the outfit I'm rocking. Yeah, that that symbolizes it too. Although for balloons, I like them as much as long as they don't pop unless they're too small. If you know what I'm saying, those are like one of my fears. So we moved into Gonzalez in December of 2004. It was a newly developed neighborhood. We were the first family to move into it. Homes were being built around us. So we met every neighbor that moved into the new homes. I did not know anyone. My Catholic schoolmates from Baton Rouge didn't live there either. But I did make a lot of friends and memories at the new school. This picture is... My dad, mom, my sister, and I visiting one of my mom's friends named C. Alyssa Green in Grambling, Louisiana. And I believe the year was 2001. My very first best friend was named Mackenzie. I don't know what made us became friends, but we talked to each other and had fun a lot. And she was the only one that has followed me to Gonzalez because my family moved there too. My family's house had a closed garage, a large backyard fenced in, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a living room, and a kitchen. My room now was actually my sister's room when we first moved into the house and vice versa for my sister's room that that was actually used to just be my room my favorite television provider was etel since it was the first time i could record something without having to miss any tv programs or even wanting to check any program to just watch it over and over and over again so this is a picture of my second halloween and i'm dressed up as spider-man the halloween picture Shows in our first year in 2005 living in our new house. Galavari is a bunny and I believe my mom is an angel. It's fitting. My new school was Central Elementary School. At first the grades in that school was kindergarten through 8th grade. But by the time I got to middle school aka junior high it was 6th to 8th grade. The elementary school it was just across the street. My second grade teacher that I love and respect to this day is Miss Ray. She taught every subject in that classroom. That's not only how I found McKinsey again, but more new friends that I have now. My classmates in the second grade, and I could actually remember Chad, Chad's cousin that I actually used to have a crush on her. Cody, Cameron's, there were two Cameron's, George, his name in Spanish was Jesus. He was in the third grade and born two years before me. Then also there was Summer, Jason, as and they were also my friends as well. Originally, I thought they were a couple since they were always together. But it turns out later in time when I was in high school, they were fraternal twins. And I even asked Summer, like, how did she got her name? And she told me it was because she was born in June. This is a picture of me and Galvari in the summer of 2005. And this is before we began the, our first moments at Central School. 
These were the moments in my life, although it felt bleak every day until I got to third grade. I was in always lots of trouble because there was just something I couldn't control, you know, the autism. The schoolwork at that time, it felt a whole lot harder than it had to be. And also at the same time, it felt like I was being discriminated against. And, you know, I'm, I'm black as well. So that was also a factor played into this as well. But even people without a learning disability and not a person of color can go through the same thing. That's why we often want to escape into our own imaginary world to understand of what we can change before we can go back to the real world. So that was why I had to the courage to keep coming back to class, to learn, to see my friends, and to know that I had special help along the way and that better days were coming out for me. This is especially since my parents came up with a game plan to keep my sister and I in school. I am positive and believe in the best of outcomes when it comes to the worst situation. Another thing I remember that cheered me up a lot was my father's tickles. Around that same time in that same year, I got a black Samsung camera and it was also the same color I got on my eighth birthday was the PSP. Yes, they were both black. I love playing with them since I always felt like recording and taking pictures of stuff. And I got to play with the colors on the computer as well. This picture is my sister and I with Elijah from the village. He is a spiritual man and one of my father's best friend. This picture was taken in Gramlin, Louisiana with my Samsung camera that was also made from Korea. I remember one of my very first curse words at that time was damn. And the reason why I said it, it was because... There was a moment I just didn't want to play with my sister. So I had this magazine. I believe it was called Word Up. And my sister like dumped it into this pool of the Polly Pocket Toys thing. And, you know, I was recording it as well. Speaking of toys and magazines, another favorite toy I love playing was Video Now. It was a pretty good replacement from my other video toy I really love so much that's called Juice Box. I thought at first it stopped working when we first moved into Gonzales since I was crying. So I threw it away and it turns out it needed batteries. So now we had to find a new toy. But once we tried to go into the store to go get a new Juice Box, they were out of business. And also at the same time, you know... I know you're all thinking, why couldn't I get it back from the trash? What was already at the dump, you know? Just left and forgotten. I know somebody to this day probably found it and stuff, you know? But for video now, it was a bit more fun. I always liked shaking it because it made weird noises, but I couldn't really do that so much because that's how it would, like, lose batteries because I was shaking it. My last favorite toy I really liked when we moved in uh, into Gonzales was this toy called the iDog that I got from the third grade. This toy was basically a perfect toy for me because not only because I love dogs, but also because it played music like when you plug it out to the TV and stuff. And now let's move into the third grade. By this time, this is when stuff was starting to get a bit lighter for me. This picture is me sitting on my favorite couch with my mom and Galavari, and possibly my dad took the picture too. My neighborhood now had more families living there, where I met my first friend in that neighborhood named Hunter Allman. We always lived on the same street. Our age was two years apart. Well, actually, he was born in 1998, but I always thought he was born in 1999. But we were in the same grade, and we always became instant best friends. Technically, Sean and Taylor would have been my first friends, but Sean was more of my sister's age, and Taylor was a whole lot older than me. So 
Hunter became my very first friend. This was around the time I started to get haircuts. I got haircuts in the past, but this barber was different. His name is Vince. He is my barber now in Gonzales, Louisiana, and always been there since that time. Believe it or not, I actually had dreadlocks in my head when I was one to five years old. They were cut off because my mom was told by a random woman from Africa with boys with locks would become lazy and not useful. But you know, I still like the hair that I got today, which is pretty much just like, I guess you could say like an afro per se. In the beginning, getting haircuts was a problem for me. Originally, that is what made my mom came up with dreadlocks for me in the first place. She also said that locks were cute on me too. For some of us on the spectrum of autism, we did not like the vibrations of the clippers when we are getting our own haircut. Although, when Vince and his partner would cut my hair, I liked the way that it felt. And at the same time, he was telling stories while interacting with me that also made my experience so much fun at the barber shop. By the 4th to 3rd grade, that is when I discovered YouTube, filmmaking, conscious, sickness, new activity, and Asian culture. This picture is me at a Blue Bayou ride. I'm just sitting up. When it came to birthdays, I invited my friends to the skating ring and bowling alley and pool parties. And they came. I also remember going to my birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese when I was turning five years old. On my 10th birthday, my father asked me what I wanted to do during that year. And I said I wanted to watch TV, listen to music, schoolwork, and creating stuff of on while working on the computer. And that's pretty much what I do currently to this day of uh, 2023 and 2024. I had some good news and some bad news on my 10th birthday. The bad news was that Big Bear and the Big Boo house was canceled. But the good news was that Ed and Eddie was still on air. And not only that, they had a marathon of all the episodes until for their brand new episode, which that episode was about Double D accidentally being a bully. This picture reminds me of Chuck E. Cheese, but it's a dinner celebration. This was also the same year I had an injury. I was jumping on the neighbor's trampoline with Sean, and we like live right like across from each other, like if I just cross the street. My little sister was there too. I must have jumped too high, and I landed wrong on my feet, and then my ankles started to hurt. It turns out I twisted my left ankle, so I just limped home. I surprisingly watched for cars and made it home safely. One of my parents quickly took me to the hospital, and the doctor examined my foot while putting a cast on it. When I woke up, I was watching Robin Big on the TV for the first time, and yeah, it was also their first episode too. Rest in peace to Christopher Brooklyn. He was one of my biggest influence that made us proud of being big and loud. After I got the cast put on my foot and I was left in the wheelchair, I had to learn how to use crunches for the first time. And that also meant that I missed school those days as well. Using crutches was not easy at first since you got to move and then like have your foot like move and jump at the same time we move on to the other foot but soon I did get used to it it felt weird initially like the time when I went to the bank with my mom well I was on the crutches and I just threw up because of the impact of walking and hopping not that day but the day before this is one of my favorite areas of blue bayou was the wave pool I'm in the back, Gavari and mom are in the front of the picture. One day, I got extremely sick. It was like a Wednesday morning at 1 a.m. This was 
after a regular usual Tuesday pizza night, I ended up vomiting on the bedroom floor. I went in the living room to tell my parents I threw up. I was thinking from that time that I could just stay home and not go to school. But then I realized these were the moments I kind of really wish I wanted to go to school and not really be this sick. When my mom was treating me with soda while I was watching the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air at Nick at Night, it turns out I had a stomach virus. And how that happened is I just kept vomiting because maybe I might have just ate too much pizza or dessert the night before and I ended up throwing up in the trash can. But the thing about that, it wasn't just regular vomit. I just couldn't stop. So my father drove me to the hospital while my mom was giving me a plastic brown bag to throw up in. It felt so confusing that I kept throwing up even though there was nothing else that was coming out. Dry heaves. Once we got to the hospital, they replaced my plastic bag with a medical barf bag. They put a needle in my arm, an IV, so I could have a rehydration and stop me from vomiting. At first, I did not want to get stuck with a needle because, yes, I was afraid, of course. Needles do hurt. I also joked with my family that if I was afraid of needles this much, they never have to worry about me ever doing drugs this way. And, you know, also other medical reasons of why I'm scared of needles. This is me and mom again at Blue Bayou again. I still couldn't stop vomiting even after we left the hospital. So my mom gave me an anti nourisher medicine. That means that I could only eat bread, rice, applesauce, and toast. The brat diet. My little sister was sick too, but I couldn't remember that. Even though I couldn't stop vomiting, that didn't stop me from enjoying my favorite shows that I really liked watching at the time, which was Wow Wow Wubsy from Nick Jr., Todd's World, and The Paz Show from TLC, the American Learning Channel, that was discovered and established in 1980 as The Learning Channel. It initially had High Five too back in the early 2000s. And yes, this actually was a learning educational channel back in the day than, you know, what they show now. And also, it's not to be confused with uh, the musical group that's called TLC2, which I believe we'll talk back about that later. In a few days, I got better, but I had... That was the first time I had back pain, but that easily healed on its own. And guess what? I made it to the dance competition at my school. I don't really remember if we won or not. What I do remember is that we were practice and dance to who let the dogs out and do your chain hang low. We all had mini dog outs set up for us to practice and stuff. So I remember I was behind my best friend Marco and it was really like a fun night for us to get turned up and just have a great time. This picture is us waiting at Blue Bayou with Galvari and mom. Everybody looks so upset except for me. The summer of 2007 with Galvari, dad and I went to Blue Bayou Water Park. When we were in the wave pool, I thought... At this specific day, I thought it would be fun to just swim up to, like, people's floaties and just, you know, just scare them a little bit. Just, like, just a little pranky prank. But, unfortunately, not not everybody really took that prank very well. There was an older sister that fought me because I I scared her little sister. Let me tell you, I'm honestly happy I lost that fight. To this day, I am very sorry of the trouble I caused that day. Just because you think something is fun or funny, sometimes other people just really don't feel all, always feel that way. Maybe one day, if we can see each other again, we'll just hang out and finally have fun. Also, a friend of mine from the Catholic school was there. 
My best moments with him was when he invited some friends of us to go to a birthday party at the hotel. This was before or right around the moment we moved into Gonzales in 2004. We felt like superstars since we got to watch Monster Truck and play video games almost all night. <laughs> the biggest fun moment with him is when I went to his house, I think. We had a campfire with s'mores. I never ate the chocolate. I just ate the graham crackers with the marshmallow. The biggest highlight is that I like that we were watching the movie called Are We There Yet? And I was playing with his marble basketball shooter alone in his room. I did ask for permission to play with it. I hope you remember me, my friend. And I hope for you, the person I'm talking about, I hope you remember, not only remember me, but you're safe today too. Lastly, we lost our dad on that same day, uh, me and Galvari, but eventually we found him. He, I think if I remember correctly, my father was looking for the parents that fought me. But luckily, it was like a happy ending at the end. Here's the picture of us. Probably on that same day, a blue bayou, 2007. And then from that, we had ice cream. And then we just went home on that day. Falling. Chapter 2. How I Made Movies from 2007 to Present. This is a picture of me playing on a computer at 8 years old. This was two years before we got another computer in 2007. How I made films on VHS was I was just mixed moments of what I saw on TV. Wouldn't you know that I used a VHS when I was 3 years old, but I didn't really use it for filmmaking until I was 10 years old. At Christmas of 2007, we got ourselves a new computer. Beforehand, our last computer wasn't really working well. We would go to the local library to play on the computer. That was when I decided that I wanted to make movies on a computer. Also finding YouTube from that time influenced me to do that as well. The computer that we got was a Windows 7 2007 computer. On the record I would like to say I am not judgmental especially in technology especially since I had the type of story on an Apple 2017 laptop, meaning I made this like on Apple and Windows at the same time. What is funny is that we had Windows computer for a long time, but like I said, we're not really judgmental in it. It's just like whatever computer works, we're using it. The way I would make movies on a VCR is I would hit record button at the right time and then would mix it at the perfect time. The way I started making movies on a computer is where I would use the Windows Movie Maker. The picture on the left was around the time I was starting to use the VCR at 3 years old in the year 2000. And the picture on the right is that time at Christmas where we got the new computer. Our third year of Christmas. Now in the year of 2007, YouTube didn't really have any downloadable videos until 2007. So it was really pretty hard to download a video even if you want to just keep it like not really do anything with it. The videos that I used that I needed from the computer, I used it along with Ed and Nettie episodes was from a website called three lost ed i would put in a password to get any episodes i wanted within a file folder while using a, another website called foreshare i use random simpsons clips and old commercials along with youtube and also just found in japan just like conveniently and randomly for share is still available as of 2021, but please don't get angry if it's gone with either in 2024 or later on. So pretty much I would just mix along with just random videos and music that was 
I just found on the computer at the time. This was the first time I saw Japanese music and also Korean music, but this will be talked about in like the next chapter. And now we're going to go into the 2007 to 2008 territory. In the 4th to 5th grade, I was noticing everything had changed around me. The next friend that I met is named PJ. He was a cool guy and he was into gaming and movies too. This picture is us in front of the line at Blue Bayou waiting to open and this is my cousin Drico, Auntie Lydia's son, myself, mom, Gavari, and of course dad took the picture. During the winter break of 2007, there was a kid that had the same backpack as me. We accidentally switched our backpacks, but once the new year of 2008 came around, we both laughed and gave each other our backpack back. But unfortunately, we couldn't eat any of the Christmas treats and stuff that was inside. Halloween. I have to say, in the beginning of making these movies, was just an average. Like, it wasn't a goal. I was just doing it just to have fun. Although, my favorite one at the time was just, like, this random war movie. Unfortunately, I don't know where that movie was or pretty much where it is. But I just had so much fun mixing it with Ed and Eddie inside. Right around this time, I learned about burning a DVD. I bought one from a store that was called FYE. Burning the DVD works by driving it into the video within the window DVD maker and then saving it onto a new disc. And that's how I made movies. Great times. My also other favorite thing about this process was the menus that it had when you put your own videos inside the DVD windows burner. And there was so many like different options of colors, songs, whatever you wanted to add into it, you know? It was awesome. This is a picture of me and my sister standing in front of Central. And this was during her band practice is either in 2008 or 2011. The summer of 2008 impacted my life once I found Angry Video Game Nerd, aka AVGN, and also happy 20th anniversary to him too. The first episode I found on Google was on a website called Game Trailers, and it was AVGN reviewing The Simpsons of Bart vs. the Mutant and Bart vs. the World. That's where I got hooked on AVGN. Also around this time, this is when I got into the irate gamer and the nostalgic critic too. During that time, I met another friend that lived in our neighborhood named Matthew. We lived in the same neighborhood and just would play with his older brother Darren. Darren introduced me to Domo, which is this beautiful brown monster. And I would like just visit their house every now and then when I just felt bored. Not uncommonly during the summers in Louisiana, there is typically a hurricane somewhere. And I always found it funny is when I would return to school and our assignment was, what would you do, were you doing during that time? I couldn't really imagine this assignment being done in schools, like somewhere like in California or in Japan of a tsunami or an earthquake. When I wrote my assignments of how it felt, it was just like the power stayed off for days. We would play board games. When it was dark, we would get eaten by mosquitoes as well. Even when we sprayed ourselves with off spray, we would still get bit. Except for my dad. My dad just, and, uh, and also on that note, he made delicious homemade burgers as well. And, you know, on that note, you know, the bugs never bit him. This picture is usually what happens when a hurricane would hit us, where... The only thing that would get damaged is just our fence. And then Drico would come down to help fix it with my dad. And this is just me throwing out peace signs. The best times of 2008 was not just the presidential election, but it was also the year that it snowed in Louisiana. It was the second time I seen snow, but the first time I remember it. During that time, I also had this dream that I can remember. Within this dream, I was 
waking up of the world breaking into pieces like the Ed and Eddie episode where Jimmy, the character Jimmy, dreamt about aliens taking over. And then what happened from that part is that what made it stop was it was the Jackson 5 just singing the song Shake Your Body Down that made the world get back together. And then the spaceships just disappeared and the world was just back together again. Another dream I couldn't shake because I guess it relates to something that happened earlier that year. In real life, there was a history lesson where I learned that kids were walking down bridges to get to school before cars were invented. In my dream, on that note, it's like I dreamt that we were crossing the bridge on the other side of the river to get to school. And the girl that was helping me... She looked like she was in a cartoon. Like, didn't really look like me or you. Just looked animated. And then once I got across the bridge, she just got shot while falling in the river. And I had a shock look on my face. And that was the moment I just woke up. I don't think I was screaming. I was just in shock, you know. But thankfully, you know, it was just a dream. Falling. This is a picture of me and Draco in our backyard. He's helped bailing our fence once again. And then there's Godavari's rabbit named Lavender inside the cage. On this specific day in December, in real life, when we were about to go to school, the next thing you know, it snowed. Our parents did not feel safe about us going to school, so they drove to our school and said that we can go home. School's out! Yeah, we were, me and my sister, we were, like, taking the bus and then just realizing it was snowing. It's like, you know what? Let's just stay home. Once we got home, we built the snowman, played in the snow, threw snowballs at each other, and made snowballs angels, too. Since it was really rare for snow to be in this area of Louisiana, it was just so surprising just to see how many other people were outside in their neighborhood playing too and that's what made it the best days of my life the next day all the snow melted so i had to go back to school while i was getting ready i was watching this show with my mom called malcolm in the middle it was the episode where reese wanted to be a cheerleader because there was a girl that he really liked his character is has a hard time expressing his feelings. Then his little brother Dewey wanted this blue elephant called Herbie, which was kind of like a version of Barney. And in his mind, he just hears things that's completely different from what reality is. And then at the end, the stuffed animal just told him to break him as soon as he got what he needed. At the end of the episode of Malcolm in the Middle, the character, their father, Hal, had the same thing happen to him from a cookie commercial. <laughs> this picture was our first snow in 2008 with Gavari, the snow person, and dad. And this is my mom taking that picture. At the end of the year, Everything was definitely changing after the presidential election was over. My mom woke me up and told me the news. The United States has a black president named Barack Obama. I felt so excited because I felt everything I was learning about Black History Month up until this time was not a waste. It was like, man, it felt worse to know it. And I was only two years in. Even when I got on the bus of the school... My bus driver told me to just sit in the front because this is my day now. And this picture is the same snow day of us standing behind a snow person with this time my mom, Gadavari, me, and my dad took the picture. Falling. Chapter 3. 40 Favorite J Music Groups and Artists from 2004 to 2009. This picture right here was the time I officially learned about Asian culture. I am 12 years old. This ironically looks like a picture for a tombstone for a funeral. 
J-pop, or as Japanese pop. And my second year of making movies was so much fun. So here are my 41 favorite J music groups and artists from 2004 when I was 7 years old to 2018 when I was 21 years old. So you will see the year that they have begun whether they have disbanded or still together. This will also be in the following of my rankings of my favorite within that timeline uh, as I found them too. So my very first Japanese group I have found was in the year of 2004. In 2003 to 2005, this was around the time that these certain cereal brands, they came with a DVD and it was called Cartoon Network's Mysteries. The DVD had episodes from Cartoon Network where the characters would have to solve riddles and mysteries. The shows that came from it was Courage, Ed and Nettie, Codename Kids Next Doors, and other shows, and also being hosted by Scooby-Doo as well. One of the songs that was in the soundtrack of Powerpuff Girls, the original one, it was a bonus feature. And it was from a Japanese rock band called Shonen Knife. The song was called Buttercup I'm a Supergirl. Shonen Knife, that means boy's knife, from 1981 to present. And I ranked them at number 15. This picture right here was this exact moment when I found that Japanese musical group at 7 years old. But I did not know who they were until I was around 10 to 12 years old. My favorite song is called Wonder Wine. It's a great blend of rock and roll. It was made in my birth year of 1997. And I found that song with more information about that band in 2010. My favorite moment with them is when they hung out with the rock band called Nirvana. In my opinion, I often thought that Kurt Cobain would be so much happier if he would have married any of the members of Shonen Knife because he just felt like he wouldn't really be alone at that point. I miss you, Kurt. My favorite songs will always be Come As You Are. I also feel bad about the ramifications that that album that came with this song, Nevermind, has received for all parties. Pauline. This picture is me and Godavari at Disney. It was our vacation in 2004 and our first time in Florida, but it wouldn't be the last. There was another group I found at the same time as Shonen Knife, and a second group I found is called Puffy, or in English, Puffy Yumi from 1996 to present, and I've ranked them at 13th place. I do remember their show called Hi Hi Puffy Yami Yumi Show, but what never occurred to me until four years later after I saw their show was that they are a real band. I never really saw their work outside of Cartoon Network. Then I even realized they're the same people who sung the theme song to the original Teen Titans in English and Japanese. And they even played all their songs on their show of Hi Hi Puffy Yami Yumi Show on Cartoon Network. But since I haven't really seen their work outside of any musical network in the United States, I just thought they were comedians. But in 2009, that's where that all changed. My favorite song from them is Circuit No Musume, that means Wall Circuit Girls or Circuit Daughters. V-A-C-A-T-I-O-N and Hi Hi, their theme song of Puffy Yami Yumi. They already had their own shows in Japan, including of Pa 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 Puffy and Saku Saku Morning Call. Originally, before, they are just called Puffy. Once they came into America in 2000, P. Diddy, known as Sean Combs, wanted them to change their name because he already has the name Puffy. Ami and Yumi had, were also sent a cease and desist letter at that same time. Ami, Yumi, and their record label really didn't mind it 
and just added their Ami and Yumi to Puffy. And, you know, fun fact, Ami and Yumi, that's actually their real name. So that's what they just did with that. This picture is the school photo. I really tried my best with these smiles, but because of the effect of autism, this is just how it just looks. It doesn't look right, but just keep in mind, I am trying my best of these smiles. I really did appreciate what my father said to me at the time in 2009 about their name change. And he said, you know, if P. Diddy had the right to be mad at anyone, he should be mad at Sony and Epic Records in Japan and even their managers, not the Annie, Tamio, and not even Puffy. And he doesn't even own that name at all. John Ruskin, better known as Narwar the Human Serviette, is a Canadian celebrity journalist and musician. He is the lead keyboardist of the Evaporators. Narwar was the only person besides my father that mentioned that to them. I wonder if anyone else felt that same way when it came to Puffy, aka Puffy Amiyumi. My favorite moment was a commercial of Cartoon Network where Eddie from Ed and Eddie was trying to sell Puffy Amiyumi tickets and ran into the real versions of Puffy Amiyumi, their animation version of course. This picture I am wearing a picture of myself and my little sister and this picture is just myself standing next to my father. Falling. The third group I discovered was called Barry's Kobo, which means Barry's Workshop or Barry's Factory from 2004 to 2008 and I put them on the sixth place. The first video I saw was in the winter of 2008 and it was their fifth single called Koi no Jubaku. This is translated as the curse of love or love spell. My reaction to it was speechless because they were wearing kimonos and school clothes, yet I didn't see any teachers around. They were using magical powers. They were just staring off into the distance in that music video. However, the dancing, the lyrics, and the outfit was super cool and unique. And this was around the time I was catching an anime called Azumanga Dayo. And the way they look was similar to the characters from that anime. But that we will be getting into in later chapters. When I made a movie about this music video, I put Ed and Eddie and Azumanga Dial in the school setting. I have recently tried to remake that magic. And it worked out pretty much how I similarly made it back in 2008. Fun fact about this picture. This was the age I not only found Etta and Eddie, but this was in the same year of 2004 that Barry's Kobo and Etta and Eddie made a debut in Japan of 2004. This picture is me and Godavari's eating Cheerios together, and I think one of us put that yes sticker in this picture. One of us did it. My next favorite song from them is from their second single called Fighting Pose Wat Date Janai, which translated as Fighting Pose Isn't For Show, and it was released on my 7th birthday of April the 28th. The music video is super funny too, and it was basically for them to go to the beach, and they had to dress up in a way where they have to, they have the English words of clear and not clear in that music video as well. My other favorite song from them was from their 11th single called A Wild Chato Your Boyfriend. It translates as Let's Laugh Boyfriend. It was my third favorite song from them because the track really remind me of 50s pop and Motown has been mixed together. And the video was very imaginative of what music videos could possibly look like in the 50s. The lyrics of what I thought of what they were saying was really different from what they actually said. So my 11 year old brain thought they were saying something completely different. 
And I'm going to be singing it while explaining it a little bit. So this is what I thought they were actually saying on this specific part of the song, which is like the verses that went like this. I saw a balloon, yes, I love balloon. Which I wasn't wrong, but the actual translation, it said this. I do balloon, call in a balloon. That means advertisement balloon. A love balloon. Another lyric that actually was different than what they actually said. It was in the chorus and it went like this. This is what I thought. You better look out for your boyfriend. I'm on every local channel. The actual translation said this. Let's laugh boyfriend. We'll get something good out of it. Ooh, this picture is just me and my dad chilling. I believe I'm trying to do a move from Jack and Pyong here. I guess from Mini Moni, which we'll be getting into later. Funny enough, this reminds me of a show from Japan that's called the uh, Sora Mimi Hour. That means Miss Hearing Hour. Sky Ear Hour, or even What Did You Hear Hour. The show is about lyrics that sound like they were in English, but they were in Japanese. It's like the same thing. It's like you hear something different than what the actual song is saying from a different language. The show began in 1992, and I believe it's still on today. Another favorite song I really liked was called Genghis Kong. That was originally, it's a cover from a German group called Sahara in 1979. And then just 29 years later, a Japanese group would put their own spin on it. It was a sweet song and music video as well. One of my last favorite singles was their 18th single that is called Made. That stands for Not Yet. Or not now. Because in this music video they're all growing up and working at an office. They are making mistakes and fooling around in the workplace. Yet their actions are forgiven. While the European office workers in this video were just taking their job way too seriously. This picture is a boat ride in New Orleans with me, my sis, and my mom in 2010. The group that started it all to make Hello Project is called Morning Musume that is also translated as Morning Daughters from 1997 to present and I ranked them at number 4. Their very first song I heard from them was called Love Revolution 21. It was extremely different than all the other songs I was listening to at this point. This song was released when I was 3 years old. And my little sister was 11 months old. The costumes was a mixture of 1970s and early 2000s fashion. This was really neat and original too. The members, even all of them, had a line in the song. At this time, there was 10 members. And all of them, to me, they were so cute, powerful, and funny. And this is how... I not only became a Hello Project fan, but this is even how I became a fan of J-pop music along with Asian music. This picture was the year that Love Revolution was made. And this was the same year that my little sister was born. The start of the 21st century, 2000. Barry's Koba was the first Hello Project group I discovered. While Morning Musume and Heike Michio, they were the beginning of Hello Project. Interestingly enough, Morning Musume introduced me to a, their own snack from Japan called Pocky, made from Glico, the food company. One day, my parents brought home some groceries from Walmart. And I was just on the computer. And they said they had a surprise for me. Once I saw the red box of Pocky. I straight up thought I was dreaming. So I was pinching myself to make sure I wasn't dreaming. 
But it was real. I saw and I ate Pocky for the very first time. And I love Pockies ever since February of 2009. My parents were really paying attention to what I was watching because if they weren't, I thought I had to go to Japan to go get some Pocky. This picture is me and my mom inside the clubhouse cabin in 1998. Speaking of which, this is the second year that Moi Musume has debuted it. The group Moi Musume started the year I was born, 1997, and to this day, they still perform, but it always seems like they're adding new members every single day. This is a really big group that had everything because they were had everything from live shows, concerts, movie, music, and merchandising. This even includes their sub and solo groups as well. The big question that was on my mind while they had the cover for the demo single I Know Tan that translated as Seeds of Love or Love of Seed is that the picture on the cover made me think, were they really naked? But don't worry, they were just wearing bras. They, they actually weren't naked at all. But honestly, if you were to have seen the demo single cover for I Know Tan, would you honestly believe that they would be singers? But the song I Know Tan in music video was so good because this song was about being free from life and independent and that's pretty much you know why the cover for it it looks the way it does and for it is that it just shows all the original five members just walking around like it's a normal day and having fun while even having people walk past them in the foreground it's a concept I really miss a lot about music videos these days. It's pretty hard nowadays to just legally film in a public place without being recognized or just having a permit. But props to them. But like I said before, I really miss music videos like this. And also concert music videos on top of that as well. I just recently remembered a conversation I had with my dad on Father's Day of 2021. And I was just thinking, it's like, wouldn't it be something if when every team member quits or leaves a group within music and sports, they would just have a graduation ceremony? It's just something to think about. Speaking of 97, this picture is the year that Morning Musume has started, along with many other things in 1997. And yep, once again, that is a picture of my father holding me. Falling. My family was really supportive of me liking Asian culture and inspired me to go more in depth with it too. That's why I was open and able to really get into it, including the music and also every Morning Musume song is my favorite, including most of the songs that are released today of 2019. The groups that really changed my whole life view and perspective because this was my favorite favorite number one group of all time is Mini Money. I mean their cuteness just overflows the group. All five members were so different from each other and that's what made me love them all especially Mika Teresa Todd which is my favorite member of Mini Money. Not just because she is super bilingual in English and Japanese but she's funny too. She is my absolute favorite member so much that I even named my dog Mika, you know? This is a picture of me holding my little sister in 2001 where this is where Mini Moni debuted their first single. So at this point, this was around the time that I saw Mini Moni. It was January of 2009. I was 11 years old, and they're the fifth Japanese artist I've ever heard. They were from 2000 to 2004, and I put them on a number one spot. I found Mini Money on YouTube, Megalopload, and another website called DJ Waffles. DJ Waffles had English subtitle videos of Hello Project for English speakers to understand. 
Unfortunately, Mecca Upload doesn't exist anymore. And also, DJ Waffles don't exist either. The very first song I heard from them was their second single. And another way that they say music video is a PV, which is a promotional video called Mini Money Telephone Goes Ring, Ring, Ring. It blew my mind. The claymation in the background, the unique color outfits, and with the cell phones and cameras that's part of the song too. I mean, what more could you ask for? When you look at the outfit, it's like every color in your crayon and marker box just came to life and form in human being form. While being colorful, then a rainbow. This picture is at my sister's friend's house. They had Japanese items. And this is me at 12 years old taking a picture of them. I really needed this type of entertainment in my life. Because it seems like it was so relative to me and my autism at the same time. And I've also felt I had this specifically the same energy that they had. Like I said before... All five of the members of Mini Money is completely different from each other. And that's what made me love all of them. Especially just Mika. Not just because that she spoke English and Japanese. Also for her being funny. But she's just really my inspiration for me to name my dog the same name. And especially since they're both mixed as well. Let me explain that. Mika Teresa Todd was born in Honolulu, Hawaii, and her parents are Australian and Japanese. And Mika, my female dog, is Japanese and German, born in America, but that will be explained later. Since Mika, the singer, speaks English, I can actually understand all the situations that's happening within their songs, skits, and movies that Mika was part in in Mini Money. This is a picture of us eating at the Rainforest Cafe. A picture of myself, Godavari, and my dad, and definitely mom has took the picture too. One of the biggest shout outs I want to give is not only Yaguchi Mari, the leader that came up with the idea and concept of Minimoni, but also the guy that produced them. His name Tunku Miso Tirada. Every group or soul artist that he produced from Hello Project and even just other artists on the sign had became in the number one hit or at least the top 10 on the Ocon chart, which is like the Japanese billboard. And yes, they not only have that, but it's also they have a billboard in Japan as well. Tunkun was in a group beforehand called Shuram Q. From 1992 to present. In 1997 he started to produce his own group. And he decided to have an auditioning for it on a show called Asian. And the first generation of Morning Musume slash Morning Daughters was Yuko Nakazawa, Idakori, Abe Natsumi, Asuka Fukuda, and Aya Ishiguro. Falling. Moi Musume's producer first solo single was released on my second birthday on the same day that another group from Avix Tracks called D&D &D released their last single called Rise in My Heart that became a soundtrack to the anime show anime Power Stone. Tunkun's first single is called Love Dakete, that means love hugging each other. It's a really good song. And also other songs that was released around that time was The Boom's 20th single, Rain Falling from the Moon, Tsukino Furu Ame, and Mikumi Shumura. She was in a group that was similar to Mori Musume as Cheki Musume with her debut song called Believer Departure Song in Japanese Believer Tabachi no Uta They were all released on my second birthday. 
I've never heard of Tunkun's solo song before, but I believe they're probably as good as how he produced all his other groups and other songs as well. This picture is after my second birthday in 1999. One of the Japanese artists I was listening to around this time in the 6th and 7th of the timeline, they're both from Hello Project of Coconuts Musume and Country Musume. Coconuts Musume from 1999 to 2001 and they are on the 30th place. All these members are from Hawaii and Country Musume is from Hokkaido, Japan. Coconuts Musume the seven members are Ayaka Kimura, Mika Teresa Todd, Daniel Delonre, Lehua Sambo, April Barbarian, and Chelsea Ching are all from Hawaii. My favorite song from them is Dance Chance, both the Japanese and English version, and Watashi Mo, I Love You. Watashi mo means me too. So this song would basically mean me too. I love you. The reason why I love these songs is because they were super diverse and they put you in a dancing mood. There is also them singing an English version of a cover of Moi Musume's second single, Summer Night Town, and Shuram Q's Shy or Ungrateful Woman, Zuri Ona. My favorite moments from them was the makings of the video of Dance Chance of the interview when they were eating food from random numbers from a box along with them being on the same show called Idol on Stage. Another moment is when they were interviewed from Ida Kari from Moi Musume with Rene from Country Musume they were trying their best to interview them in English. They also did a challenge where they were eating fish candy and rubbing like stinky, nasty brown spray on their hands too. And it was just too hot and spicy. While sharing their stories in English and Japanese about stuff that they do in the winter and other activities in the millennium of 2000. Speaking of English, Ayaka from Coconuts Musume in 2001 and 2002, she had a segment that is called Ayaka Surprise English Lesson. She would surprise every member of Morning Musume to teach or repeat an English phrase while also having tests for treats and stuff as well. And everyone did pretty good. The ones I really thought that did very good of learning English was Yaguchi Mari, Yastakel, Gotomaki, Yoshihitomi, Takashi Ai, Yuko Nakazawa, Tsuji Nozomi, and Kago Ai. And you can also find Mika in one of these episodes as well. This picture is me and my sis at the aquarium. Country Musume from 1999 to present, ranked at number 18. The original members were Rene Tonda, Kobayashi Azuma, and the late and great Hiromi Yanguhara. Yanguhara unfortunately died in a car crash. The crash happened two days before their first single and music video was released that is called Futari no Hokkaido, which means Hokkaido for two or two Hokkaido. It was released on the 23rd of July in 1999. That was also the same time that Coconuts Musume released their first single. Rene stayed in the group until 2002 along with Kimura Asami who joined the group in 2000. My favorite song that became the first song I listened to is called Hajimete Happy Birthday. That means our first happy birthday or happy birthday for the first time. Also meaning celebrating our first birthday together. It was released on April the 18th, 2001, which was very close to my fourth birthday. And fun fact, this song reached number four 
on the charts. Another favorite song I like from them, it featured Fujimoto Miki that is called Shining Itoshi Anata that means Shining Lovely You. The music video and song is like the music videos of the 1950s that once again they just put their own spin on it. And also when you look at the clothes, it seems like it fits well too. Parts in the video also they did was reviewing a blue screen that just really became funny to me and just it wasn't an accident either. The members have all changed since 2012 and they are now called Country Gals. On that note, my favorite Fujimoto Miki song is Arianai Naigai Nichiyoboni that is translated as the long Sunday that we couldn't meet or I couldn't meet on this Sunday. And here's a picture at me at the aquarium. Falling. The eighth artist I found is Amuro Namie from 1995 to 2018. And she is ranked on the third place. My first song I found that also became my favorite song is called How to Be a Girl. The year that it was released is the same year that her son was born, and I was also born in that same year of 1997. My favorite thing I like about the song is the hook, or like the chorus, in, is in English. It asks about a girl of self through the public eyes. In the music video, Amuro goes to different trains to change clothes and sees different people. The video asks where she could fit in and it ends with her running in a red business clothes that she had on the beginning of the video. The video was shot at the Shimoko station. The song won gold number one and surpassed the copy of another Japanese legendary duo group called Pink Lady. My other favorite songs from her are Body Feels Exit, Chase the Chance, don't Wanna Cry, Please Smile Again, and Golden Touch, along with Super Monkey's Mr. USA. This picture is my mom, my sister, and me once again at the aquarium. I believe that Amuro was the first artist of the 1990s that came out from Okinawa. And not only that, but she put Okinawa on the map and made them popular. Not only just that, but the movie Karate Kid 2, where the main character goes to Okinawa to visit with his instructor, Mr. Miyagi. The movie is actually filmed in Hawaii, but often they look exactly the same. The interesting part in the movie is where Tamalin Tomita played as Kumiko and Ralph Machino played as Daniel looked at the television because Kumiko wanted to be a dancer. Three years ago before this movie, that is when Okinawa's actor school was made. And then 10 years later after this movie, this is when this school has became popular for the biggest actors and dancers everywhere. And not only that, but they also became popular outside of Okinawa as well. So in a way, Kimiko got her wish. It is also funny that this is the first Okinawan artist since this was possibly everyone's first from inside and outside of Japan to know about Amuro. The reason why I love these songs so much is because it's the mixture of soul, rock, and pop mixed at once. Probably hence the term of J-pop. Especially when it comes to music video and the performance. Like for Don't Wanna Cry, the background dancers look like people like me. It was the first time I saw black people in a Japanese music and media, but thankfully it wouldn't be the last. She is a remarkable legend of Okinawa and Japanese music in the 1990s. She had such a beautiful voice when she talks and sings in any languages. She remind me of a beautiful tomboy with her own style. Thanks, Ami-chan. 
This picture is my whole family in the aquarium. Ninth on this list is Globe from 1995 to 2018, and I've ranked them at seventh place. My favorite song, which is possibly my first favorite song too, is Faces Places, not only because they're going to Taiwan for an international tour, but the lyrics I'm still looking for the faces, looking for the places. It's cool, especially because it's like actual English lyrics. It's not even translated. It just fell deep into my soul and just made me really want to connect with Japanese culture. My other favorite songs I like is Still Growing Up from 1999, Music Takes Me Higher in 1996, Feel Like Dance in 1995, and four singles from the fourth album, Revelations, which are Wanna Be a Dream Maker, Sayonara, Sweetheart, and Perfume of Love. Both of these were recorded and released from 1997 and 1998. And also, if you notice, these titles are in English. Their songs and music videos are always different in sound, genre, and mood. The only thing that was scary to me at that time was the late 1990s commercial of Avix where the Globe single or album commercial would end and then a deep voice would yell out, Avex Globe. And it's like what you see from that is like a fast close-up of an oxygen tank spinning out water and smoke in an unknown lab with a letter A along with this eerie music that's playing. When it came to AVEX tracks, it's not as scary when they do it there. And even when it came to AVEX tune, it sounds more relaxing. I'll even give you some examples like AVEX tracks, AVEX tune. There was even more AVIX records along with this, but I guess that'll either go for later. But, you know, AVIX had a lot of stuff in mind when it came to their records. By the way, if you guys have ever seen those late 90s AVIX commercials, did you guys really feel the same way as me? Let me know. The mid-1990s and 2000s commercials from the beginning and possibly even today's commercial are super mellowed out. Globe commercials outside of AVIX are awesome too. And like I said, there's just so much AVIX everywhere. My favorite moments from them is the TDK cassette tape commercial. It showed a girl running outside while holding Globe in her hand while they were singing the song Music Takes Me Higher. There were like little people that this girl that hid them, which is uh, Globe have three members. And that was one of the most epic commercials I ever saw. Falling. This picture looks like I'm trying to do a Star Trek symbol. Rest in space, Leonard Nimoy. So there's two artists in this same category of the list, but they have different rank, which is Zone and Whiteberry. So we're going to move on to Zone which they are from 1999 to 2013, and they're ranked at number 35. My first and favorite song from them is Big Explosion number one, which is Daibatsu Hatsu number one. The reason why I liked it is because they were recreating the 60s style of them, being from the Beatles of that era. Everyone was chasing them. That reminded me from the... Beatles movie A Hard Day's Night and Michael Jackson's Speed Demon from the movie Moonwalker. They were very revolutionary in dancing and playing instruments. And when I was doing the makings of the Zone Report back in 2021, it was a whole lot of fun to do. And that will be later explained in the sequel of a book. My other favorite songs from Zone are Good Days, Believe in Love, and Boku wa Magama, which is I Am Magama, and I discovered this group in the summer of 2009. This band, Whiteberry, from 1994 to 2004, and I put them in the 20th place of this list. They are from Hokkaido, just like Zone. 
My favorite song, which is also my first, is Yuki, which means snow. And also, the leader of Whiteberry is also named Yuki, too. I love the creative snow figures and bunnies shown in the video. It was amazing and adorable at the same time. But I wonder if in that music video, was it actually snowing in that music video of Yuki or was it just special effects? This picture is my first winter experience in 1997. I look so serious though. 11th on this list is SMAP from 1988 to 2016, ranked at number 8, which is the first but not last generations of Johnny's Jr. or Jr. group or solo artist in that in mine. My first and favorite song from them is Dynamite from 1997. In this music video, they were in a car singing while people were following them too. My other favorite songs are $10, from 1993, Shake, 1996, Lionheart, 2000, and Password, SMAP, which also in Japanese, Aikotobawa, SMAP, from 1989. This song was used for a sports milk drink, and they were just really the most popular boy group ever in Japan. Before them, it was Jinji, and Shonen Tai, and also the very first Johnny's in their label as well. The 12th on this list is Speed from 1992 to 2012 and ranked at number 5. Favorite music video, of course, is their first one, Body and Soul. The music video was filmed in Los Angeles, California. I believe at that point, that was the first time I seen a Japanese music video being filmed in America, but it wouldn't be the last time I would see those music videos. My other favorite is Go Go Heaven, which that video was filmed in New York City and Miami, Florida. Love Vibration, White Love, Sophisticated Girl, and Breaking Out in the Morning were also my favorite song from Speed as well. They were all so different from each other, especially not in just their voice, but the way they dance as well. It was surprising that from one of the members, Hitoi Akira got an autograph album of My Way signed from Usher in 1998. My favorite members are Hiroku Shambukuro and Hitoi. They have an interesting singing voice, but I do love Taco Yohira and Eriko Ima all the same as well, especially when they did an English announcement for the show Hey Hey Music Champ for their intro. Yep, they were speaking English. This picture is Elijah and my dad. And could you believe I'm the one that took that photo? 13th on this list, it's Tomoe Kahara, ranked at number 31. My favorite song from her is Save Your Dream because I really like the way she hits the high note like Mariah Carey. Speaking of Carey, on Hey 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 Music Champ, she made a digital appearance to talk to Tomoe and the other hosts. But a few years later, Carey forgave the hosts for their comedic behavior. Falling. To me, for that episode of Hey Hey Music Champ, I believe it was funny. But some people really thought they were, they were insulting Carrie. But I didn't see any insulting from it. Like I said, this is the same episode that Speed had their own English introduction on the show. Which usually happens on Hey Hey Music Champ for people to start to do an introduction to introduce the two comedians of downtown. My other favorite song I like from Kahara is Just A Real Love Night just because it's catchy and it puts you in a good mood. Two more people I'm putting in this list and rank is Yutada Hikaru and Mai Kurai. My favorite songs from Mai is Stand Up, Never Gonna Give Up, and It's Alright. My favorite Yutada songs are Ticket For Two, First Love in English and Japanese, 
Come Back to Me, and Easy Breezy. Easy Breezy was the first song I heard from the Japanese Nintendo DS commercial in 2009. At the time in 2004, I remember being in the music store and they had Utada's second American album, Exodus. And I asked my mom, what did that word mean? She told me it meant to escape. She even asked if I wanted that album. And I replied with no, because I didn't know anything about her and I wasn't ready to hear it yet. But I'll definitely buy it in the 20th anniversary coming soon. And speaking of which, I got the album for my 27th birthday 20 years later. And Coco Lee's second American album was in that store too. It's still a shock to me that a bit that I was really into music before I was 7 years old. And speaking of which, here's a picture of me and my mom once again. The 13th on this list is Dream from 2000 to Present. And I put them on number 17. My favorite songs from them are Moving On and Private War. Another group I am putting on this same list and rank is Cheese. And my favorite song from them is called Snapshot. Fun fact, Cheese was part of a group called Checky Musume before they debuted as a band. What I thought was the inspiration of Tunkun, the person who produced Hello Project and Zetima, to make AKB48. And yep, their name had the same match of members as well. Even though Checky Musume was just a copy and paste of Moi Musume that lasted from 1998 to 2002, that just had as more members than Checky Musume of AKB48. Like I said before, at the time before 2023, I thought this whole time that AKB48 was produced by Tunkun, but turns out, as I'm editing this, this book and even narrating it to you right now, it's literally the same person who produced Cheese and Checky Musume, which his name is. Yasushi Akimoto. I believe that his actions for the belief system for an idol is just way more disgusting than Tunku, and it just gotta change. Nonetheless, Cheese is here sharing the list with Dream because I believe they both have a good style of music, and even though Dream is still performing, if I was copying everything from Morning Musume like Yasushi was, I would at least add more people outside of Japan just like Tunkun when it came to TNC Bombar and Coconuts Musume. TNC Bombar is coming in later. And I guess since AKB48 came around that time when Barry's Kobo and Cute was coming in at the time, that was just a perfect time for them to come back and just you know kick back but honestly hello project will still be the best thing but for everyone for akb48 i still wish you guys the best of luck for the oncoming future and stay safe too much love from edo from america Falling. this is a picture of us at the congo square of myself Galavari, and my dad and my mom also took the picture too. Fourteenth group on this list is Judy and Mary from 1991 to 2001. And they're placed at rank 16. When they perform, they always look like they're having so much fun. I like their clothes and bright lyrics too. I was introduced to them in the summer of 2009. My favorite songs are Cheese Pizza, Doki Doki, and Hello Orange Sunshine. These songs really remind me of the summer and spirit of life. And I love pizza. As much as I appreciate everyone in the band, Yuki and Takuya stands out for doing all the vocal. That's how I picked my favorite members from the band. 15th on this list is D&D &D from 1996 to 1999 ranked on number 24. I listened to them in the mid-summers of 2009 and D&D &D stands for Dance and Dream. The first song I came across was 
In Your Eyes, which is their first single in a 1996, is a Eurobeat cover from an artist named Karen called Nothing's Gonna Take My Love From You. I just want to say the D&D version is better, the In Your Eyes version. The one song they have that is not a cover is Sunshine Hero. I really love that song because it's not only just like they're sung it halfway in English, but also it has a jazzy sound and disco sound to it too. In 2010, my mother and I did a poetry limerick of the lyrics from the song of In Your Eye for a school assignment I did from middle school. I believe I got a B plus for that assignment. I want to add two more artists to this list, which is Melody and Panache. My favorite song from Melody is Boom Boom My Heart and Ume Kyujo Go, which means Destiny 95. My favorite song by Panache is Looking for the Promised Land. Another thing I like about their songs is that even though their Eurobeat song covers, I just like D&D's version better because they just put their own spin on it. Panache had just like that only one song of Looking for the Promised Land and the song really sounds very impactful for tomorrow and all the lyrics are in English. This is a picture of me and my mom at a Japanese restaurant. The 16th, 17th, and 18th on this list is Matsuya Aya, TNC Bombar, and Melon Kelembi. Matsuya Aya from 2001 to 2013, placed at number 21. They are all from Hello Project. For Matsuya Aya, my favorite song from her is Love Doki Doki Mel, Mamoru Katamoi, which is a peach love crush, and Nah, which is means hey. I love those songs because in all her videos, she just plays as herself and just becomes different characters too. It's entertaining. 17th is TNC Bombar from 1999 to 2000, ranked number 19. For TNC Bombar, the T and C stands for Tayo and Cisco Moon, which means Tall Sun and Cisco Moon. My favorite song is Every Day Everywhere. This song really made me think about the group Bone Thugs and Harmony because they are really harmonizing with each other. You can also hear this on their second single, Gata Meki Kara, which means rattling or got to make it love. My favorite moment is when they were on a show called Asian, where all four members had to go back to America to train to dance and sing in 1999. Originally, they auditioned in San Francisco to be in the group, and that is even how they got their name, Cisco Moon, in the first place. This is a picture of my dad and I watching TV again. Falling. To continue on the episode of Asian of TNC Bombar, Ruru went to Chicago, Miwa went to Detroit, Miho went to Memphis, Tennessee, and Oska went to Atlanta, Georgia, where me and my family were still living at at the time. My favorite moment of that episode is when Ruru told her instructor that she didn't sleep, and that is why she was losing her voice. Her instructor was so worried about her is that she gave her list to help her improve her vocals. One of them is sleep. All three of the members of the group is from Japan except for Ruru Honda. She is from Leone Shenyang, China. Miho was a gymnast. She was on a show called Sasuke. In America we called it Ninja Warrior which me and my family watched a lot. Asuka was in a group called Osaka Performance Doll. In 1995 to 1996, she reviewed games on a television show called Game Catalog 2. And Miho made folk songs very popular. Next is Melon Kelembi. 
from 2000 to 2013, ranked at 22. What I liked about Melon Kalembi, which Kalembi, it stands for Melon Holiday, was it was a combination of a four-member group, which, you know, I really like the number four. And I like their segment on Hello Morning, where they become Sentai Melon, which is the Melon Squad, where they become superheroes. My favorite song from them is Amai Anata On Aji, which means Your Sweet Taste. Kohaku Kelembi, which means Confession Holiday Anniversary. And This Is Ume, which means This Is Destiny. Charisma Kie, which is Charisma Beauty. And Romantic Wo Daskun Tero, which means Romantic Breakthrough. This picture is my sister, my mom, and I at a festival with my father taking the picture. Number 19 on this list is Max from 1995 to present, ranked at 25. My favorite songs from them are Get My Love, Love Is Dreaming, Grace Of My Heart, Right On Time, Perfect Love, Hikari No Vel, that stands for Delight Of Vel, and Moonlight. I love these songs because not only they are all different from one another, but all the members, they put their voice into these songs as well. Max and Amuro Namie were in Super Monkeys from 1992 to 1996. Once they disbanded, they still continued to be friends. Their solo careers in the music were highly successful. As you can see, this is how I got deeper and deeper in Japanese and Asian culture. Whenever I tell my friends about this, they don't understand. Lived and let live. But they never stop me from liking the music outside of the United States either. This is a picture of me graduating middle school in 2012. 20th on this list is Folder and Folder 5 from 1997 to 2002 ranked at number 2. When I first heard this group I slowed down their music to this song called Jaka Jaka Jankin Pong that means rock, paper, scissors, pop. This is not only my favorite song from Japan, but they became my second favorite Japanese group of all time. It all started when I was on DJ Waffle's website again in summer of 2010. I saw a link that shows old school J-pop music. The first one that caught my eye was Jaka Jaka Jankin Pong, released in 1998. It wasn't just the fact that I never heard of a group called Folder before, but this was a song released three years before Mini Money's first single, Jankin Pong, that stands for Rock, Paper, Scissors, Boing, released in 2001. That's when it came out. Falling. When I first heard the song Jaka Jaka Jankin Pa, I didn't like it at first because I thought the song was just too fast. And at this point, this was the very first time I ever thought, hey, this song is just too fast from Japan. But I really wanted to enjoy this song. So what did I do? The second movie program I used at the time was called AVS Video Editor. I found the button on the program that slowed a video or song down. So when I played the song at 80% slower, it changed my life of music. It also made me appreciate that song a whole lot more. And at this point, I called it reggae because the way it sounded slowed down, it just sounded like reggae music. Even though I learned over time that reggae could also have a fast tempo beat as well. This picture is exactly the time I got into Folder at age 13. And that's my Domo shirt. The music video for the song Jaka Jaka Jakin Pa was really good too. To me it just looked like regular kids playing rock paper scissor game. I also realized from that point is that... There were only two boys in the group, not six of them. I thought because in the music video, the five 
girls just look like boys because of their hairstyle. But the more performance videos and interview I saw of Folder, I realized there are four girls, not boys. Like I, like I said, there are two boys in this group and five girls. My favorite part of the music video is where when Folder walked in front of the two army guys, the main leader, Daichi Mura, did a soul shake with one of them. My father pointed out that Daichi and the army guy did a soul shake, aka a black handshake, to greet others. Then the same army guy started to tickle him and have fun with the rest of the members of Folder. To this day from 2010, to 2023 I wonder if they filmed their fourth music video Jacka Jacka Jankin Pong in America just because in that music video they had a lot of English signs in that music video I really like their choreography of their songs because it just seems so simple along with the lyrics of that Jacka Jacka Jankin Pong just being a fun kid song the fact that all their songs except for Now and Forever and Everlasting Love is for a soundtrack for a kids show called Peacocks or Punky Kids 21st Century. Their choreography for every song, it just surprises me. I never knew what they were going to do, including how they dress as well. So I'm here to explain their costumes for all their songs. This is me driving a bug car. Parashuta, their first single, is Business Casual, Now and Forever, Kids in the Future in Winter Clothing, Fire Fire, Kids Birthday and Party Costume, Jacka Jacka Junk and Pa, Casual Kids the Clothes That Just Want to Play Outside with Your Friends, Glory Glory is they dressed up as they're going to a school field trip, I Want You Back look exactly like the Jackson 5, and also just wearing urban 90s hip hop clothes too. The group started in 1997. Even though I love all the members, my favorite member of all time is Joe Nakama. Joe to me was the mysterious one, especially since he didn't really talk a lot. He probably wasn't the popular member of the group, but he was very popular to me. But when he does talk, I cheer with glee. My favorite moments is when they were on a show called Music Park. They played the rock, paper, scissors game or Jacka Jacka Junkin Pong or, you know, just Jackin for the Baby G Watch and the Sega Saturn console with a few games. Daichi won the Baby G Watch and Joe won the Sega Saturn. Hikari from Folder wasn't present at the time, but I believe during that time of the filming, she was in the studio, movie studio, filming for Mothra 2. I believe the group folder was made because Minori Kimoruta, musical producer, said when he walked into the Okinawa's actor's school, thanks to Makino Masayuki, the principal or sensei, known as teacher of that school, that Daichi, that stands for Earth, he said that he sounded like a little Michael Jackson. May he rest in heaven. That's why Daichi was chosen. I definitely believe that the girls and Joe were chosen because not only because they were the main stars of BB Wave on a television show Boom Boom, but they were all personal friends of Daichi as well. To just, you know, fit with the group and just be best friends and have the friends dynamic a folder. And this picture is us in the summer of 2010. Falling. My other favorite choreography moment of Folder is the song of Now and Forever. Because at the end, Daichi was giving Joe a high five as part of the choreography. Like I said, Joe is my favorite member. I thought it was cool for him to feel like to dance step at it in Now and Forever. And it just feels like it's an important thing just to add, to just be part of the group, to really feel important of Folder. And this song became a soundtrack for a movie of Mothra 2 because the member Hikari from Folder and Folder 5 was part of that movie. And also it was dubbed in English, but they couldn't 
really use their voice in it, though. This picture is me and my dad on a frog. There's six single in Japanese and English. I Want You Back is a cover of Jackson 5 song. It was a release a few days before Michael Jackson's 40th birthday. Their sixth single was released on August 25th and Michael's birthday is on August the 29th. This song was used for the anime called The Little Giant Microman in Japanese Chisana Kyojin Microman. So like my father said, they at least used Daichi's voice before his voice went into puberty because at this point, since Daichi's voice was going into puberty, they had to disband because of puberty, his voice changed. He didn't have the Michael Jackson voice anymore. And by April of 2000, while they released their second and last album, that's when Folder had disbanded and took a break. But on that note, my favorite Daichi songs is that he had was Keep It Going On, No Limit, featuring Rhyme Master, Blizzard, and Backwards. He came with a Neo-sounding song at first, but by 2008, he developed his own voice, and he is still killing it to this day. Way to go, Daichi. Finally, my favorite Folder 5 songs are Supergirl and Final Fun Boy. By the way, these were just the five girls that were left from the original folder. As of writing this diary, I am happy to know that Joe is still around. On that note, that is when I found also BB Waves. And my favorite song from them is Love and Smile, So Freedom, and September Rain. Translated as Kogatsu no Ame. I usually call this song the Tell Me Why song from BB Ways Red. And on, for that note, this is how we got Folder and many others. Thank you so much, BB Waves. The 21st on this list is Black Biscuits from 1997 to 2001, ranked at number 11. I love their debut song, Stamina, because their music video had a mixture of claymation and real people. I also love their dance step too. This is a video where my friend Hunter, my little sister, and I became part of the video. We are dancing to the song, and I'm editing us to be part of the music video too. I remember my mom was recording us, and I was yelling cut a lot too. It was funny to me because not only Hunter, my little sister, and my mom, we just all did a great participation job of just directing a music video I guess and this is a picture of us at the family hotel however the only thing I really didn't like about it was just the editing because when I was putting the video of us dancing on screen I didn't make the screen big enough and even there's a part of us dancing where you could see the music video being played in the background of the living room although I really did have a lot of fun putting it together you know especially since the three other singles that they put out by the time of Black Biscuits I really like their videos because it's the mixture of claymation once again and real people and they were in America too for their second single timing in New York Fun fact, biscuits in Britain are cookies, and the biscuits we have in the Western world, they call it scones. Another person I am putting on this list in rank is Mari Ijima, and my favorite song from her is Over and Over. I love that she played both the original and English version of a character named Lin Mime from an anime series called Macross. The 22nd on this list is Tomi Shinohara from 1996 to present, ranked at number 10. I really loved her a lot because she just had this such silly, energetic, hype-pitched voice that just reminds me, yeah, this is, this is Japan. And her fashion sense of how she dressed was super unique too. My favorite moments 
from her was a show called Love, Love, Aishiteru, which means I love you, where she would interview not only the guests from Japan, but also international guests such as TLC in 1999, James Brown in 1997, and Robin Williams. And may their souls rest in heaven. This is a picture of us trying to do the Black Biscuit Stamina cover of Hunter on the left being Nachon, I'm Amino, and my sister is Vivian. This was so much fun that day. So back to Tomi Shinohara, how I first found her, it was a New Year's special from the show Love X3, and they were celebrating the start of 2001. And this was like a short clip on YouTube. Meanie Moni was there, and Kago from Meanie Moni was just making fun of her voice while Tommy just kept saying that she was just a brat in Japanese. I saw another moment in her acting career that felt really pure to me because she felt like she was being kind of like herself on a television show called Five. She played a criminal that escaped from jail with four other convicts, and they have to figure out how to get themselves out while just trying to be a free citizen and crack the code at the same time. Around this time, I also found out that she is a singer too. So my favorite songs from her are Kuru Kuru Miracle, Ultra Relax, and Happy Point. Because those songs really express of who I am. And the happiness and spontaneous of it too just made it so cool for me to listen to as well. The two people I'm sharing on this list and rank is Chisato Morita and Yoko Ogonome. My favorite song from Chisato is The Stress. This was the first song I listened to in the fall of 2009. Watashi no Dajima Hito, that means my dearest person, and Rockin' Omelette. My favorite songs from Yoko is this could be the night and non-stop dancer this is a picture of me my sis and my dad and we're at the general grand Guler. 24th on this list is east and from 1993 to 1996 placed on the 23rd place my favorite songs is maika which means it's fine Oh well, alright, or it's okay. I believe this group introduced me to hip hop to Japan along with Boze. Boze is from Sacha Dapar. Another group I can put on the same list and rank is Inflow from 1997 to present. My favorite songs since 2013 when I first found them was LOT, Love or Truth, Tomorrow Won't Come So Soon. Prism and Love Bug featuring Boa. 25th is Halle Cali from 2004 to 2010, ranked at number 38. My favorite songs from them are Tandem and Continue because they give off a relaxed vibe, and to me, they were like the new generation of Puffy, aka Puffy Yamiyumi. This picture is us at the lobby in a Japanese restaurant. The number 26 on this list is Flame from 2001 to 2014, ranked at number 12. My favorite songs from them are By My Love, What Can I Do, and Venus. I like that most of the lyrics in their songs have English lyrics to them. My favorite one of all time is Venus because that song really reminds me so much of an action movie. And they literally put in the lyrics of the song in English, Oh my Jesus, you turn me on. That still has me laughing to this very day, ever since I first found it in the summer of 2010. But, however, I am a bit disappointed in the video and by my love. Because there wasn't much happening in that song. Let me explain. For instance, in the music video of Venus, I thought that they were either going to be a team of investigators or a mafia in America solving or causing crime, just like they were in the music video Mune no Kondo, which is Sparrowing Spotted Woodpecker. 
Imune no Kondo, they were in New York, not solving crimes, but just hanging out. For their second single, By My Love, it looked like they were sitting in a jail just singing, but I thought in that music video they could have had girls as police uniforms and stuff like that because it looked like they were just sitting in a brown screen of a jail cell. Whether they would leave or stay in the jail, I could not really make heads or tails in that music video of By My Love. Falling. Maybe it's a little bit similar to Speed's Breaking Out in the Morning music video. Even though there might be some bad critiques from it, I still love those songs. Their other music videos don't really have to really change at all. My favorite email song is Thanks For You. Another group I am adding onto this list is Lead. Since my favorite song from them is called Show Me The Way. Got me through really tough times and helped me saw the brighter side of life. Also two other groups I'm adding to this list in ranks is Wins from 2001 to present and Run and Gun from 2001 to present. Also for lead, it's 2002 and they're still presently performing to this day too, as well. This is a picture of me in the pool with my dad with my locks and a Dalmatian floaty. 27th on this list is the Vocaloids from 2007 to present and their list at number 26. I really like them because they are anime characters digitally making music and they have funny stories along with memes and dance covers as well. For 2011 this is where we're at now. We have three on this which is 28, 29, and 30 and it is from Ya yeah, yeah, yeah of 2001 and 2008 ranked at number 9. Kidney Kids from 1993 to present ranked at number 27. And Arashi which means Storm from 1999 to present ranked at number 14. I put them all in the same category because they are all in Johnny's Jr. group and label. They are all younger than teenagers. Boys are background dancers, hosts, and even have their own groups and become solo artists. They have really diverse artists as well. It's possibly been that way since 1962, the year before my mom was born. Yeah, and they still continue this up to this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah is a cool group to me. They were like the new generation of Arashi, five member group from Johnny's Jr. Another group on this list, they are similar to because they have five members. They were in Johnny's Jr. group as well. When they debuted Ya yeah, Ya yeah, Ya, yeah, the Ya yeah, Ya yeah, Ya, they debuted it on a show called The Shonen Club or Boys Club. It began from 2000 and that specific show is still running to this very day. This picture is me at the Mardi Gras parade with Godavari and Auntie Tabby and my parents took these photos. My favorite Johnny Jr. members were these two brothers of Sean Eddy and Rafi Eddy from 2000 to 2002. They are from Trinidad, but they have lived in Japan since the mid 90s. One of my favorite memories of the Shonen Club is Rafi and Sh Sean talking to one of the hosts. They were saying that the song at the end of Shonen Club should be, it's too short and it needs to be longer. Plus they were talking about that they have homework to do as well. They were speaking in English while they were doing this. In 2019, they opened an international school for kids. The reason I am mentioning them is because they were the original people that not only just made Love Together and Tell Me Your Dream, the English version, and that group was called ING Shinkokan, which is ING Progressive Form. And this was actually a group that was the start of Ya Ya Ya, but I do love both versions. I do believe they're still working on diversity because currently they have a man named Kita Richard Kusama. He was born in January 11th, 1996. I do believe there'll be more black brothers and sisters in the near future as well. 
This is a picture of me being in a pool with my mom. Pauline. On a more serious and important note, I would say probably in about five to ten years, also from watching the BBC documentary about Johnny's Entertainment, I really hope that they'll find new management that won't let these groups or any artists from Johnny's Jr. be harassed anymore. Mr. Johnny, after your passing, I am happy that you made a legacy and your dreams did come true, but still not an excuse to force your powers on anyone. End of story. My favorite songs of Ya 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 after that serious message is their own theme song, Love Password, Ya Ya Ya, Ai Kotobawa, Ya Ya Ya. This is a similar name to Smap's Password song, but totally different. This was also the song that was used for a commercial for them to be in a chocolate candy bar commercial called Five Star. In 2002, it was filmed in New York with Ya 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 in the commercial Running and Dancing. This picture is me and Santa in Washington, D.C. in the winter of 1998. I mentioned earlier that they have their own television show called Ya 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 from 2003 to 2007. So on that note, they have lots of episodes, but here were my favorite seven episodes. Number one, their very first episode of the first season. Number two, the summer hot spring special episodes of part one and part two. Number three, is them being in Universal Japan. Number four, the drawing game. Number five, the lottery musical special. Number six is the thank you special of the second season where they have the challenge on how many thank yous they can get before the day was over. Yabu's team win. Yabu is the leader of Ya Ya Ya, by the way. Number seven is the four-year-old girl that didn't believe in Santa Claus. And number eight, which is their third season of them having their very own concert tour in 2005. And it also featured the Thailand duo Golf and Mike. This was the start of the third season. The sad thing for me, for Ya Ya Ya, is that they only made this one single. If, uh, technically kind of like an album that was called Yakuba Sento Yuki. And Sekai ga Hitosu na Numade, which stands for 100% Courage or Snow, and Until the World Becomes One. Only one have the music video, which is Until the World Becomes One, yet they had so many songs of 2002 to 2007. I thought about this song love password ya 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 it was used in the commercial for five star and i often thought that that song could have been the best opportunity for them to make that into the music video and often when they perform those songs i thought those could be music videos as well you know Pauline. not only that but they also don't have their own official songs for it either Meaning that Ya 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 don't have an album that is featured of their songs of their own shows. It's been around 20 years since Ya 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 first started. I'm happy that since 2007, Heisei Jump that has Yabukota and Hikaru Yatome from Ya 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 are still in this group. And my favorite song from them is Heisei 7. The song Heisei 7 and Heisei Jump was called that because all seven members of Heisei were born in the Heisei era of Japan, which was from being born of 1989 to 2019 in Japan. This is known as the Peace Era. One of my other favorite songs from them is Break the Wall of 2021. This picture must mean that me and my sister were both born in the Heisei era. Now on to Kidney Kids. My favorite song is Glass no Shonen, which means Glass Boy. 
in 2011, I saw them on a show that's called Utaban. It's a Japanese musical show that will be explained later. In 1994, they were in a TV drama called Non-Human, Ningen Shikako. Even though Non-Human was a sad show, it was an interesting introduction for me to understand Kidney Kids and their acting too. They have the same popularity as SMAP and Moi Musume in Japan, especially since all Non-Human songs are number one on the charts. My favorite songs from Marashi, aka Storm, is their very first song, which is their name spelled out, and Sunrise Nippon, that means Sunrise Japan. These are two songs I slow down when I listen to them, and their recent songs, In the Summer and Whenever You Call in 2020, it's like they were finally getting the international attention in the US of what they deserve. And speaking of those songs, they are being sung in English. And man, they really did a pretty good job with that. This picture is me standing next to a mural. And this will be a post for me thanking 500 people for following me on Twitter. Which, like I said, will be explained in later chapters. Number 31 on this list is Suzuki Ami from 1998 to 2008. Ranked at number 37. My favorite songs from them is Alone in My Room, where I mix the video with the scene from Ed, Ed, and Eddie, and also Be Together. That's also my favorite song, too. 32nd on this list is The Pump from 1997 to present and ranked at number 28. My favorite songs are Feeling Good is Paradise, which is a cover from the rapper MCAT. Love is a Final Liberty, Around the World, which is my very first song I listened to in 2011. Joyful, Crazy Beat Goes On, Circle of Life, and USA. Also, their recent song, Tessa Mugi, that stands for Spinning Cloth. And I'm very happy they're still around, even though originally it had four members. The only one that's left behind that's still there is Isa Hinota, but like I said, I'm very happy that this group is still here. This picture is me in my room in 2013. What sound does a telephone make? Number 33rd on this list is Color from 1999 to 2006, ranked at number 36th place. Their discography of Color only had like four songs, but... I had two of those favorite songs, which is why that became the theme song for the anime, The Kendachi Case, and All or Nothing. And both of those music videos was directed from a Korean director from the company, Hong's Picture, and they also became busy from 2002 to 2007. The 34th group on this list is Sweets from 2002 to 2006. Ranked at number 29. My favorite songs from them is Lolita, Strawberry in Summer, Growing into Shining Stars, and Countdown. This was a song I like to listen to more sped up. And I believe this was the first Japanese song I sped up to. Also on that note, I would say my other favorite songs from Sweet is Bittersweets as well. 35th on this list is is Yayan that stands for Bald Monkey. Then they were from 1998 to 2002, ranked number 32nd. My favorite song from them is Snow Blind. And my favorite lyrics of that song was, I got it dance, dance, dance in the snow. It's all right. The group of Yayan features Tataki Ichibashi. He and... Mashashiro Naka from SMAP, they are the hosts of a show called Utaban. Falling. This is a picture of me and Gavari at the theater for my 14th birthday, and we're seeing Medea's happy family. 36 on this list is Gatchet from 1999 to present of rank 33. 
My favorite song from Gatchet is Vanilla. I also like him acting in the movie Moonchild from 2003 and Buru Naku in 2010. I believe he has a funny sense of humor. I appreciate that he speaks in English and his mother's tongue, which is Japanese. He is like a Japanese Marilyn Manson. He is necessarily scary and just funny in his own way. Number 37 is PZ05 from 1979 to 2019, ranked number 34. My favorite songs are Baby Love Child, the English and Japanese version, Happy Sad, and Tokyo wa Yoru no Shijiji. That means Tokyo at 7 o'clock. The reason why I like this group is because they have their own style in music and fashion. Their music style leans more towards the 60s and 70s sound when you're listening to PZ05. Number 38 is Ron Ron Suzuki from 1996 to 2001, ranked at number 35. She was my all-time favorite from the 1993 to 1990 show that had Amuro Namie and Bose called Peacocks, where they dressed up as bunnies. And Ron Ron became part of the show until 1999. In 1997, Amuro was not part of the show anymore. But if anyone from Japan seen Amuro in the rest of the series, please let me know. Peacocks or Punky Kids 21st Century still runs to this day. Just like Oha Star, that is another Japanese kids show that started in 1997. My favorite songs from her of Ron Ron is Of You, which is the soundtrack to the anime Kiko Chan Smile, Who Who Who, and Shooby Dooby Doing. Her voice is very relaxing and sounds natural to me. This is a picture of me just sitting at the table with my aunties. Number 39th on this list is Moonchild from 1996 to 2000, ranked at number 40. My favorite song from this band is Brand New Gear, especially since the voice of the leader named Osamu sounds super unique. He has a deep voice and there is also another band with the same name called Moonchild that will be talked about in later chapters. Love Psychedelico, a rock band, is on this list too and my favorite song from them is called Happy Birthday. Number 40th, the last on this list, is X Japan from 1988 to present, ranked at number 39. I can't really pinpoint a favorite song from them because I believe every song that they have is a really good song. And their documentary in 2016 was life changing. Rest in heaven, hi Matsumoto. I miss you, buddy. Last group to add for this list and rank is Maximum the Hormone. My favorite song from them is What's Up People because it was a soundtrack to the anime Death Note. They were technically my first Japanese rock band I've heard in 2009. Just haven't really listened to them in a while. And shout outs to Christian Cortez YouTuber for reporting their history. Let's go back to 2009. I was 11 turning 12 years old going from the 5th grade to the 6th grade. In parts of the United States, it's still the start of middle school. Outside of the U.S., it is still considered elementary school. Originally, the school I was in was kindergarten through 8th grade. It's weird how that wasn't an issue for school children and education until 2009 to 2010. And also to keep in mind, this school, Central... Uh, started the year I was born but my theory of why I believe it changed for us when we got to there is that there was a fourth grader who was pregnant by an eighth grader how I know this is because God of Ari not only knew that fourth grader but she told me and I believe that was the final straw for kindergartners through eighth grade 
to no longer be next to each other and just be separate from here on out. Pauline. This is a picture and I'm back in the fish tank with my sis and my mom. Like I said, therefore, this is why elementary and middle school kids had to be separated. When I was in elementary school, I would just do my schoolwork, get home from school to do homework, and then just play on the computer. At this point, you might be asking, why did you listen to Asian music? Well, here's my reason. Don't get me wrong. I do like the music I grew up listening from my birth year to 2008. However, it seems like around 2008, music in the United States, for me, it sounded too much alike. It had no originality anymore. Music was produced and everyone was just trying to sound exactly like everyone else besides just being themselves. And having auto-tune from that period just made it worse. But I'm here to say that it's not T-Pain's fault. I will forever love this guy. He has his own voice and own style too. Even before Akon helped him out, T-Pain just made Autumn more popular. But I felt that other companies and most artists abuse Autumn so they could sound like T-Pain or just sound more inhuman than ever. They think it really sounds good, but it just sounds awful. On the school bus, they would just play that boring music on my way to school and on my way off it. And I was just tired of it. So I had to turn my back on it because the music to me, it just wasn't the best music to listen to. Even though there were some bangers that came out from 2012 to so on, I just switched to Asian music and never looked back. But am I up on the R&B, hip hop, rap? rock pop and alternative music yes overall i love all music from all genres and decade even though the music i was listening to was old school i still trying to figure out the music that's being presented to me right now my first japanese television show i watched was called hello morning it was the third show that moi musume has hosted from 2000 to 2008 their second one was Garage from 1999 to 2000. And their very first one they've ever host was called Idol on Stage. That was from 1999 to 2003. This picture is me at the Bug Museum. If I remember correctly, my neighbor Jamesia is standing in front of me. And the guy on the left behind me was Nolan. But apologize if I forgot anyone else that was in front or behind me. In this picture, I'm looking at alligators. My favorite sketches from Hello Morning was Minimoi Boing Alien Adventures, which is Minimoi Pyong Sejin. Pyong in Japanese stands for Boing. Minimoi is tiny as Minimoi Chicha. Minimoi Evil Turtles flower path which stands for mini money kappa and kappas are usually spiritual or evil turtles and until the bus arrived basuga kumade these sketches are so funny and cute not just because of mini money but shows everyone playing a different role from their characters while the show is casting their own talent and silliness and musical as well Pauline. Utaban from 1996 to 2010 is a show hosted by Takai Ichibashi from Yain and Masahiro Naka from SMAP. They interview guests from Japan and internationally. They do a great job interviewing their guests too. Plus they throw in some jokes and skits that goes with the song and artists of the group is performing. It is entertaining. I imagine a show like this in America would be hosted by D.L. Hughley and George Lopez. Hey 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 Music Champ from 1995 to present. They are almost the same as Utaban, but 
The hosts are very different because they interview guests from everywhere and they are a sketch team called Downtown and Gaki no Sky. The Downtown comedy duo is Hamada Matsuyoshi and Hitoshi Matsumoto. I would say if there was an English version of this, it would be of Chris Rock and Howard Stern. And also they do a lot of slapping on the show, so equal slap opportunists for sure. This picture is me bowling with my family. My favorite sketch that was shown that they did from downtown was that it was called like Naruku-kun. Hamama Mateyoshi, my favorite because I love his yelling and calm voice. And, it, that, and that's what, what reminded me of Chris Rock is the host and plays as the older brother, Matsumoto Hiyoshi, that is holding a puppet body, but his head is still visible. He plays as the little brother. In this segment, someone sends them a letter asking, how do babies know when their mother is around? This is my mother's favorite skit. My father's favorite skit is the Pai Batsu game. And I'm guessing my little sister's favorite skit would be the parody of Universal Japan skit. So they all dressed up as mothers and they wanted to see who the baby girl would pick as their mother. The baby girl keep picking their actual mother. The baby is named Sarah and she is two years old at that time. I hope she's still alive and well and while laughing at this segment with her mom. They were the next generation of the late and great Shimura Ken. Their humor and skits are memorable. Some of my favorites are the history of Batsu punishment game, Makun which is mother and son, Kids versus adult drawing game. Five Rangers sketch is they always end up with the wrong suits to fight battle. And the evil person has to keep correcting them. And Aho Man that stands for Idiot Man. They also have their own school that teaches comedy to students as well. Because a lot of other comedians that came after them is their inspiration to be a comedian. Speaking of this, my favorite comedian from Japan of Shimura Ken is a skit of Bakatano and an English teacher. In that skit, as an English teacher, he is teaching his students that all look American to speak improper English. And as for Bakatano, he is a king and a geisha. I like the fact that his voice can range from high pitch at low to any time. I see how now people in the US can relate to him as Robin Williams. May his soul rest in peace too. This is me having McDonald's and the ice cream machine works. The other Japanese musical programs I watched during that time was Pop Jam, Music Station, Idol on Stage, and CD TV that stands for Countdown Television. They're really a great musical live show. During the summer, since we couldn't really afford our own swimming pool, we had this inflatable pool in our backyard. It was fun to fill it up with the water hose. That wasn't the problem though. It just kept getting dirty all the time. So we would just play in the local pool at the Jambalaya Park to have fun. Often I would see my friends and teachers there too. And this is how I learned how to do handstands in that pool. This picture is me outside having lunch at a school field trip. Falling. During that year, Michael Jackson died. Not just his music and philanthropy, but definitely his death changed my life and the lives of some around me. There were people who hated him. And there were people that loved him. I was one of the people who loved him. Two years before his passing, I was just getting into his music. And also just had a collection of Michael Jackson DVDs. June the 25th of 2009 was just a regular sunny afternoon. 
My sister and I were eating lunch in the kitchen. The phone rang. My mom picked it up. It was my Auntie Tabby. They were just having their regular conversation, I guess. But my mom just started laughing super loud because Auntie Tabby, you know, she always says some funny stuff. But this time it was serious and my mom just didn't know. And so I asked my mom, hey, you know, what what did Auntie Tabby said this time? Why, why are you laughing, mom? My mom replied, your Auntie Tabby is saying that Michael Jackson is dead. And I told her, girl, stop playing. And so my Auntie Tabby interrupted and said, no, girl, turn on the news. It's real. So one of us grabbed the television remote control in the living room and turned on the news. Not only she was telling the truth, but it was every news station and channel you could imagine. So my sister, mother, and I were in complete silence. I recognized my mom. Her skin just turned so pale, almost turned white. And then she ran into the room and it was just more silent. My mother really did not want to leave her room ever. I thought she was trying to kill herself. That's how quiet it was. I knew that Michael was a real inspiration in the US, but the thing I really didn't know is that he was famous all over the world. There does not seem to be a place where the whole universe know about Michael Jackson. Even if you lived under a rock, you knew who he was. I remember for a good two to four months that stations would play shows and videos on every channel about Michael Jackson. Even the kid channels too. He was just that big of earth and space combined. A few days passed. I don't know what it was, but I knew I had to have my mom come out and be happy again. So I knocked on the door and I asked, would you like to watch TV with me? We were watching all the Michael Jackson videos on MTV Jams and VH1 Soul. The first song that we watched that was a complete version of Gone Too Soon, the tribute version of Ryan White. White unfortunately died of AIDS in April 8th, 1990. While my mom and I were watching those videos, my mom felt better again. I remember we both cried together while hugging and holding each other tightly. For my mom and father's generation, Michael and the Jacksons have always been their entertainers. My mother and Michael were kids themselves. They were just five to eight years apart. She always loved his songs. My mother played his songs in front of me, as well as my father sharing information of talking about him as well. I didn't really know how to feel about Michael's death. I knew it was a sad moment for everyone, especially for my family, let alone his own family and friends. Even though I was cheering my mother up because she still had us and my father, I still felt a bit weird about it. Let me just explain it. The weird way I felt about it, it's like someone being traumatized at SeaWorld by a stingray. My feelings I thought was like, hey mom, would you like to go back to the stingray so you can get over your fears? But one thing that is for certain, if I didn't do anything about it, I felt like I would have lost my mom in the process. She was depressed for real and I just couldn't let that happen. All my friends everywhere had some sort of the same reaction, which were shocked, depressed, and inspired, but... No one was really happy that day for sure. But before I move into the next chapter of 2010 in K-pop, I would like to list my favorite songs from Michael Jackson, which is Scream from 1995 since I love his sister Janet Jackson. I like that they shared creative backgrounds, anime, and having fun in the mixture of genre of music in that song. This is true 
for me, even though I don't like black and white videos, speaking of which, black or white and jam were hot fire to me too. But the way that they did this specific music video for Scream made me have a bit of appreciation for her black and white videos, which was kind of a rarity. My other favorite is Speed Demon from 1988 from the movie Moonwalker. My favorite thing I liked about it was the claymation and live action people that were chasing him. And it was super creative. Their costumes and plastic heads of people that wore in the video was just so cool. And also wrestling Clay having to Will Vinton. He was the first claymation artist and not only worked on Moonwalker, but he did the commercials for the California Raisins and Eddie Murphy's The PJ. I am happy that both Michael and Vinton existed. Michael stood his ground and learned how to have fun with life while sharing his gift with everyone. And I would like to go that way when I am 100 or older. Now... Let's move right into the K-pop in 2010. Here we go. Falling. Chapter 4. 19 favorite K-music groups and artists from 2007 to present. This picture is me in 2011. I believe I'm just in the living room. So, it was my very first time experiencing Korean musicians, artists, and groups. I was 10 years old at the time. The first song was released the year I was born and it was from a Korean trio called S.E.S. and they're ranked at number two. Their first music video I saw was called I'm Your Girl. The focus was to show the three members of the group named Shu, Eugene, and C. In Korean, it's Bada from SM Entertainment. They were the second project that SM worked on. The first one was H.O.T., which we will talk about a little later. They really reminded me of the groups TLC and SWV because there's three of them. They were pretty and they had abbreviations on their names too. It was the fall of 2007. I was watching an AMV, anime music video of the anime Azumanga Daio on YouTube. Then suddenly, I saw a thumbnail that says, S.E.S. I'm Your Girl. My brain thought, I never heard of this song before, but I should check it out because I might like it. And surely enough, I did. At first, I thought this was a forgotten or new song released in America because the title of the song and the artist was in English. It was called S.E.S. I'm Your Girl. But it turns out it is a Korean song. But I also thought at first the song was in Japanese. Although Shu from SES is Japanese but is very bilingual. And so is Eugene since she was raised in Guam. This picture is me getting an award in elementary school. It was a different and rare version of I'm Your Girl from the Asian music video channel called Channel V that is pretty much the Asian version of MTV even though in Asia they have MTV there too. How is this version of I'm Your Girl different from the original one? Well, everyone is shown in the music video of the background dancers and more of the backgrounds look like their first album cover of the same name and song of the music video, I'm Your Girl. Most of the scenes from the music video for I'm Your Girl was the same as the original that had the close-ups of the member's face. Both versions were directed and edited by Hong's Pictures and Bada C saying yeah at the end of the video, that was the same as well. Yes, this is the first music video I've seen from Hong's picture, but it wouldn't be the last music video that I would see from Hong's pictures. And also, I messaged him 12 years later on his Gmail. And this is a picture of me at a museum studio in 2010. Falling. SES was around from 1997 through 2002. My other favorite songs from them are Oh My Love, I Love You, Norder Salon He, 
Dreams Come True, Shy Boy, Twilight Zone, Be Natural, You, Just the Feeling, Sha La La, and Nonsense. Nonsense is my all-time favorite song from SES because there were two rappers that were featured here along with I'm Your Girl. They are Eric and Andy from Shimwa. They really sounded like the characters of Ed and Eddie from Ed and Eddie, the television show. I know that that probably wasn't their intention either. It would actually be ironic if Eric and Andy played both Ed and Eddie of the Korean dub of Ed and Eddie. But if it is or isn't true, someone please let me know. This is a picture of me and my sister during Christmas time. I remember from 2007 to 2009 winter, I always asked for an SES DVD, but I didn't receive it, probably because it was just too expensive. The second artist I love from Korea is Wong Boa, or in short, Boa, from 2000 to present, and she is placed at number one. I really like her because she is the first artist I've seen that sings in more language than her mother's tongue. She sang and talked in Japanese, English, and Chinese. My first song I listened to was the English version of Amazing Kiss and ID Peace Be. Once I heard that, I was set as a BOA fan stand. One day in 2009, when I was at my parental grandparents house i was flipping through the television channels and i saw that my grandparents had fuse on demand and it showed boas i did it for love that featured sean granette this was the moment i knew that asian music was coming to america along with getting pocky from walmart from the grocery store I know in other states it was already there, but when you were in Louisiana at this point, it was a slow come up for sure. Also, in 2001, Fuse was back, but G4 was canceled again. This picture feels like I'm in the MV, which is music video, of Boa's Atlantis Princess because Boa and her background dancers was dancing on this balcony that's very similar to this image. Except the music video was filmed in Australia in 2003. And this is in New Orleans of 2010. Third on this list is Flinko. That stands from Fine Killing Liberty on DSP Records. From 1998 to 2002 ranked at number 3. My favorite song that was also my first song I listened to was called To My Boyfriend in Korean Ne Namja Chingu Age. They were a new generation of SES to the MV music video. Until recently, I didn't know that Flinko was a rival to SES. I always thought before 2016 that they were in the same record company, which is SM Records, but they weren't. The music video for this was so bright while being heavily blurred and colorized at the same time too. I love the dance steps and their outfits match the concept for the video too. My favorite random YouTube comment for that video, it says, This video looks like someone was using Window Movie Maker and SM Paint, top notch. And for the recording of it, turns out this comment is from a YouTube user named Um Connor. I thought they looked like Meanie Money at the time, even though Meanie Money did not arrive on the scene until three years later. To My Boyfriend was released, which Meanie Money debuted in 2001, but this was 1998. Although, Yaguchi Mari, the leader of Minimoni, joined in Mori Musume in that same year. This is the same year that, of course, Flinko debuted. This was the first music video I saw in November of 2009. My other favorite song from them of Flinko is Blue Rain, Ruby, Feel Your Love, Waiting For You, and Now. What I really love best about them is is that they have great harmony like brownstone and total combined. 
One of the members of Flinko that won me over with their vocal was Ok Joon Hyung because her voice sounded so strong and powerful like C's voice from SES since her voice sounded so small but strong at the same time. Like the way that Bada says yeah and baby you're always in my heart. Especially since those lyrics are in English too. Falling. This picture was in the year that Flinkle debuted in 1998. And this is also the story how I told about the Gerber Spoon from chapter 1 page 17 when I was 1 years old. Fourth on this list is Wonder Girls from 2007 to 2018 ranked at number 6. My favorite songs from them are Tell Me and Like Money featuring Akon. I love how creative Wonder Girls were when it came to their projects and music videos, especially since they were one of the first artists that was blowing up in America before 2012. Fifth on this list is H.O.T. High Five of Teenagers from 1996 to 2002, ranked at number 20th. I was just scrolling through YouTube in the summer of 2010. I found a thumbnail of five guys that are just in front of the camera. My brain said, hey, take a look at it. Boy, was I in for a surprise. Their first song I saw from H.O.T. was their second song from their first album called Candy. Their first album was called We Hate All Types of Violence, released in September of 1996. And this is their album title too, meaning that both of these things were in English. Their first song is translated as Warrior's Descendant. It was released in that same year of 1996. The music video for Candy just starts off with five guys just having fun in front of the camera in a car while sharing items for their fans as well. But once H.O.T. put those fuzzy costumes on, I was blown away. This is a picture of a hot air balloon going through my neighborhood while waiting for the school bus. This was actually one of the best moments of my life and I never knew exactly where it came from either. It was pretty much the same experience that I had when I first saw Mini Money. I was shocked and amazed at the same time of seeing HOT's second music video of Candy. They had these fuzzy overalls on, mittens, and hat. I felt like it was a Teletubby vibe, which I guess that's why I really liked it. I was thinking that this was going to be the happiest song ever, but the translation was about a breakup. It really opened my eyes to what I was listening to because when I was growing up, I often thought that males cannot be cute or shy. We had to be muscular and almost kind to have no soul to be super cool. So that's why I loved their approach because they were always different and they just had a box full of surprises. April of 1997 in Los Angeles, California, they did a song and music video called Wolf and Sheep, but they went back to Korea by the end of April 1997. So possibly by the day I was born, that's Probably not only when they left, but also that's when the music video of Wolf and Sheep was released too. On that note, an artist named Steve Yu filmed his music video called Nightmare in my birth year of 1997. But not even just that, like the exact date, April 28th of 97. My other favorite songs from Steve was Na Na Na, Aha, Can't Wait, and Like Always. I believe he would be on number 5 of this list as well. His upbringing was not really the best, but to me he's very awesome of being bilingual, just like Boa. He changed the game when it came to music too. I am happy he's back in Korea once again, and I just want to let him know as an American, I understand and forgive him, if it is even needed for the draft dodging. I do respect the military at the same time. Good luck out there, and you have big supporters in America and China. 
Thanks for still being here, my friend, Steve. This picture was my very first room in 1998, and here's my mom again just holding me. My other favorite songs from H.O.T. are We Are the Future, Wolf and Sheep, that is Nuge Wa Yang, Aya, that stands for Hey Kids, Happiness, that is Hangbok, Warrior's Descendant, that is Junose Huya, Line Up or Make a Line, that stands for Your Macho, that won the MTV Awards in 1999. And yes, they were in New York and Age of Uniqueness. The coolest thing about them is that every song that they perform, they change clothes. They have different messages too. And they have also solo careers and solo parts in their song. That is why I believe these guys definitely deserve a high five. This is a picture of me posting in front of a house in 2010. Six Korean musical groups on this list of Korean music is One Time from 1998 to 2005, Jinushan from 1997 to present, and YG Family from 1997 to present. They all deserve a number four even though they're all different, but they're in the same record company. When it came to One Time, I found these guys right after H.O.T. Once I saw them, it was another experience that blew my mind, especially with their self-titled song and video called One Time. I remember thinking right away that Danny and Teddy in the group had to be from America. Then I saw them in interviews talking about that they are from America, specifically in California. My father often said that One Time sample was taken from the Eminem song The Real Slim Shady because the bass line in the beginning sounds similar meaning that the song of one time was in 98 and The Real Slim Shady that was released in 2000. I wanted to believe that too as I'm writing the book however in the beginning I didn't think it was similar until today. Nonetheless the group was super awesome with the use of hip hop in the makings of their song as well. My other favorite songs from one time is Good Love, Nasty, Ready or Not, the Korean and English version, Make It Last, and Hot Durgol. It means hot Durgol means hot in Korean. At first I thought the chorus they were saying hot tickle tickle hot tickle tickle hot hot but they're actually saying hot diggle diggle hot diggle diggle hot hot which mean in English it would be like hot 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 and even Korean diggle 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 so what I mean to say is that they mix the English and Korean words together very well and my last favorite song from them from one time is do you know me that translate as ne gum Na a a yo. This picture was the era where I was listening to YG Entertainment in my Domo shirt. Gino Sean was definitely something new that I liked. They came up with the name of the group of their actual real names of Gino and Sean. My favorite songs from them are Gino Sean Bomb, Gasoline. I love all the versions of Gasoline. I also like Throw Them Hands Up. Like this, like that, what you want to do, the English and Korean version, Ayo, how deep is your love, and celebrate. My YG family favorite songs are Familinium, Get Ready, that is the soundtrack of the Korean Rush Hour 2, STP, that stands for Sean, Teddy, and Perry, YB Normal, YMCA, Hip Hop Gentleman, Mut. Jenna E. Sansa, Smoke of the Devil, Lights, Camera, Action, and G Dragon. Yes, a song about G Dragon. His very first song is called My Age is 13, Na Na Yourself, and Nelera featuring Missy Elliott, and Storm from Perry that featured G Dragon. And also Jinushan and Master Wu as well. 
The reason why I liked Perry in all of this because he is the one that believed in the idea of YG family, especially to bring hip hop to the game of Korea. At first, this label was going to be called the Major Flavor Family, MF Family. But the reason they changed it is because a clothing company in England owned that name. Plus, Perry had clothing companies in Guam and California, but they had to scrap it up very quickly. So, what we have now is YG. Then it stands for Yang Hook Salk Gentleman Entertainment, or even more likely, Yang Gentleman. To be honest, when I came across it in 2011, I thought it stood for Young Gangster Entertainment. This is because I believe in their early stuff, they really had a lot of hip-hop and R&B on it. I believe that they were the best hip-hop record label of Korea before they went into pop. I believe that this picture was the first time I saw the glance of the hot air balloon. So like I reiterated before, uh, Yang Hook Song Gentleman Entertainment, Yang Gentleman is how we got YG Entertainment. And I, like I said, I remember that I thought it would be Young Gangster Entertainment when they were, you know, the best before they got into pop. But oh, they were a little bit better right afterwards, you know. I hope Perry from all this is doing great. I miss his presence on the scene. He really laid the foundation of the path along with Yang Hung Sa and Jinu Shan while finding new artists and groups to be a part of YG too. Wherever you are, Perry, I hope you're safe. I appreciate your work since 2010, and that is why all you guys are in the rank of number four in the Korean music, along with Master Wu and Lexi. They are also part of YG Records, too. Fun fact about this picture is that my sister was born in 2000. That was the year of the dragon. Also, G Dragon being born in 1988 was born in the same exact zodiac as my little sister, but they both have different years. This was called the Dragon of Mardi Gras. In that picture, we went inside that dragon, the toy dragon, and there was a video monitor inside that dragon as well about the history of Mardi Gras. On that note, I really miss Kim Jong Jae's work. He was really about to transfer his music to America. He is from the duo called Dukes. His friend Lee Hon Do, I believe, did the job for him on two albums dedicated that he made that's called Do It from 1996 and The Saga Continues from 1998. This is because he went to America to record and make the music videos. Also, he did a song called To My Friend, Chu Rong Age. In 1995, unfortunately, he died. There was other artists of like Easy E and Selena that died that same year too. This picture is just means to fly high everyone. Number 7 is Sharp, ranked at number 8 from 1998 to 2002. When it comes to Sharp, I will list my favorite songs and I'm very sorry of what the member Lee Je had went through. It was so messed up. Thanks Poppy678 from YouTube for reporting on their story too. No one should ever have to deal with bullying and trauma it's to just make a song. The songs I like from Sharp is Yes. This is the first Korean song from August of 2010 that I slowed down, but it wouldn't be the last. My other favorite Sharp songs are Tell Me and Sweetie. Number 8 is Uptown, ranked at number 12 from 1997 to 2002. Until we meet again, Dashi Mana Wahejo. I not only like this song, not because it came in my birth year, but it's also mixed with English and Korean lyrics together. The song also introduced me to Tasha and Drunken Tiger too. Fully. Another group that I want to share on this list with Uptown is Coyote from 1998 to present. My favorite songs from them are Pure Love that is Sun Jung. 
The first style of this dance was before Gundam style and meeting, which is Mannam. That was the first music video from Korea that I saw anime characters in, but it wouldn't be the last. This is a picture of me in 2012. Knife on this list is Shimwa, that their name can mean myth or legend. Number 11, from 1998 to present. My favorite songs from them are Resolver, Sharing Forever, Chu E Yu Hong, T.O.P. Twinkle of Paradise, Yo, Only One, Hey Come On, English and Korean Version, and Perfect Man of English and Korean Version. Tenth on this list is Rong Ha E Ra Hung, from ranked at number 7 to 2000 to 2004. I like just about all their songs. They are identical twins. They have a good taste in fashion and dance. My friends thought at first that they looked like the Dylan's twins from the characters of Zack and Cody on a television show. Number 11 is Soteji and Boys, ranked at number 10 from 1992 to 1995. My favorite songs from them are Come Back Home, I Know from English and Korean version, and Classroom Ideas. They are the first one that made rap and individualism combined with clothing genre in K-pop. Number 12 is Baby Vox, ranked at number 9 from 1997 to 2005. My favorite songs from them are Ya Ya Ya, Get Up, Haircut, that is Modern, Hanun Na, and Waiting, which is the English version of the Korean version that they have called Start. Number 13 on this list is two artists and groups of Eagle 5 and Easy 1, ranked at number 6 of 1998 to 2000. What I liked about Eagle 5 is their combination and dancing with their voices of their songs of Fire and Orbit, that stands for Cuerdo, are just my favorite things that I really like about them as well. My favorite song from Easy One is called Peace, just because the song mixes Korean and English so well together, and it just feels like peace listening to it. This is a picture of me petting a donkey for the second time in Florida of the summer of 2013. Yeah, like I said before, the combinations of Fire and Orbit is my favorite songs from Eagle 5, and my only favorite Easy One song is peace. Number 14th on this list is Tutu, ranked at number 15 of 1994 to 1996. One and a half, the English and Korean version that stands for Ilgawa Ibun U I, an ungrateful woman that is Balam Na Yoja. Rest in heaven, Kim Jong Hun. You were a great visionary. Yoon Jun has passed away in 2013, and he will be missed. Another group I want to add to this list is Linus Blanket. They are the best indie Korean band I've ever heard. My favorite songs from them are Picnic, Puppy Love, and Summer Night Magic. Falling. This is a picture of me inside a bug house in 2011. 15th on this list is G.O.D. that stands for Groove Overdose, ranked at number 14, from 1999 to present. Dear Mother will always be their best song ever that I have ever liked, especially the series where they take care of a random baby in a show called Baby Diaries. Number 16th on this list is Psy, ranked at number 13, from 2000 to present. My favorite song besides Gundam Style is Bird, which is Sai, Sai's first song, Korea, Champion, Yes I Am, Daddy, the best Father's Day song ever, Hooray, that stands for Ola Sugu. This is the funniest song and music video ever. And my last favorite song from Sai is translated as Factual Assault, Pakuto. Pong Gong that featured G Dragon. Number 17th on this list is Ru Ra that stands for Roots of Reggae, 
ranked at number 16th from 1994, actually, to 2001. My favorite songs from them is The Angel Who Lost Wings. That stands for Nage Ilun Chun Soya 3 4 and Lover, which is Yoon In. This was a group that started G Dragon's career as a rapper, and they had their own little group that's called Lil Rura from 1995 to 1998. Fun fact the song The Angel Who Lost Wings became the background instrumental. Of produced by the late and great Kim Jong Jae from Dukes, and the cover is from the rapper Shaggy Oak Carolina, but was originally from a Jamaican musical group called Folks Brothers that pretty much had the same song as Oak Carolina. Definitely another group I want to put in this category is UP, or known as Up. This is another group that had many different members than original members. And my favorite songs from them is Puyo Puyo and C that stands for Bada. This is a picture of me and my sis at Auntie Tabby's house. And the picture on the right is me and Gavari on the boat again. Number 18th on this list is Sex Kiss. That means six crystals or pebbles. At first I thought their name was called Six Kiss. Ranked at number 5. From 1997 to present. My favorite songs from them is Couple, School Anthem, Bayoka, Pange, A Man's Life, Live or Die, Pomse, Pomsa, Renovation or Hunch that stands for Yegum, and Walking in the Rain. Walking in the Rain was the cover from Orange Juice Jones, and they just added some rap beats and a little bit of different lyrics too. And I think I might be the only person that loved them in H.O.T. at the same time. Number 19th on this list is Keith Ape. That's ranked at number 19th from 2015 to present. One of my first that became my favorite song is Never Forget, E.G. Ma. I love both the original and remix version of the song Never Forget. My other favorite songs are Underwater Rebels, Diamond and Achu. This introduced me to highlight records. And on that note, it's like my favorite Jazzy Facts song is the whole first album that they have that's called Life Like. Other artists I like from Highlight Records is Time Spread the Words from Okusan and Bad Tooth from Ready and Hardcore Song 6. BPM, which stands for Beats Per Minute. Number 20th on this list is Young Turks Club, ranked at 21 from 1995 to 2002. My favorite songs from them is Jealousy, that stands for Jalitu, Affection, that stands for Jiong, and Strangers, that is Taiyan. 21st on this list is Dumbfounded, ranked at number 17 from 2013 to present. My favorite song from him is Safe. This was another song I sped up. Hyung, that means older sibling or person. Harambe, Bullets of Truth, and All Alone. The honorable mentions that we got since we went through the numbers and rankings is BTS from 2013 to present and ranked at number 22. My favorite BTS songs are No More Dream, No, DNA, Mic Drop, and Dynamite. It's a completely different song from SMAP. And here comes some more in the next page. Falling. Next we got is EXO from 2012 to present, ranked at number 23. My favorite EXO song is Growl of All Versions. Next is TXT 2019 to present, ranked at number 24. My favorite TXT song is Dogs and Cats of All Versions. Blackpink from 2019 to present ranked at number 25. My favorite Blackpink song is How You Like That and also Duh, 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 Duh. Lastly, we got Big Bang from 2006 to 2019 
Like I said before, they're ranked at number 4 since they're part of YG. I love their documentary of their first audition. And I also like the interview that they did on CNN in 2016. My favorite songs from them are the intro of from their first album, Put Your Hands Up, La La La, English and Korean version, Fantastic Baby, Good Boy, Bad Boy, We Belong Together. Fun fact, this also has an English version. This Love, Take Me to the Higher Place. This is a Big Bang pre-debut and Bang Bang Bang. Fun fact, that's my father's favorite song. This picture is my 15th birthday, and this is the same hotel we went earlier that year since I accidentally clogged up the toilet really bad. I have now added a rank of number zero, and this means that this is bigger than number one to me. And this person I have added is Yang Jun Eun. The reason why I added him to this list is because he is the very first person ever to have the genre of K-pop, especially the fashion and adding English lyrics to what K-pop have today. Believe it or not, he is still making music as I'm writing and narrating my first book. My favorite song from Yang jun is Dance With Me Agashi. Agashi means miss. This was the very first song I listened to before I left for college and went to Full Sail University in 2017. I instantly fell in love with that song. Based on the information from the YouTube channel DKDKTV, I couldn't believe a legend like Yang Jun Eun was mistreated of his debut. He was popular and pretty much his timeline was from 1991 to 1994. He was banned from Korea just for speaking English and also he was born in America. He did try to make a comeback in the year 2000 but it just wasn't as popular than the first time and so he got rejected again. Once he came back in 2019 he was back for good. What's even funnier was while I was living in Florida from 2017 to 2019, I didn't even know he was living there too. But the thing I'm so happy is that he is back in music once again. If he is reading this right now, along with the other legends that are put on this list, I just want to say thank you guys for being the first Korean pop music and being ahead of your time. As an American, I've been a fan of this art since 2007 when I was 10 years old. I had to go in the future to find you. Once I found your work, I wasn't disappointed. I love that he mixed the lyrics of English and Korean together. Bless your heart. I am happy that you're still here. Keep up the great work, Mr. Legendary Yang jun -un. This is a picture of my dad now sitting in front of the fish tank. Before I talk to about my experience in 2010, there's just a few things left over, including the next chapter of ranking the list of anime. Falling. In Halloween of 2009, I remember the cable went out, but luckily for me, I had a DVD player at the time. That when I plugged it into the TV, I got to watch my own videos and other DVDs that I owned at the time. Around this same time in 2009, this was the moment I stopped trick or treating because believe it or not, I hate being scared for candy. But dressing up as Spider-Man wasn't that bad. And this is my last costume ever that's called Venom, but we all collectively just said Black Spider-Man. I also remember around this same time in 2009, I had a Halloween special I mixed of Matthew's Best Hit TV. That show ran for 2001 to 2007. That this features Tuji Nobuzumi and Kago Ai as W and I mixed it with the ads. It was really fun for a while to play my own videos on a DVD player. It, because it felt like I was watching my own show that I made on TV. I like 
Matthew. He is the Japanese comedian known as Takashi Fuji attitude on the show because he reminds me of Narwar of being so cheerful while being funny at the same time. And Takashi was also featured in a movie, an American movie called Lost in Translation. Like I said before, believe it or not, I stopped trick-or-treating because I was so tired of being afraid to go get candy. So I just joined in with my dad or my mom for Halloween to just give out candy for now on. But one year in 2013, my friend Hunter scared me while I was napping and watching Despria America. That means Good Morning America in Spanish. Since 1997, that show is still continuing on today of the morning news show. And it was from the television station called Univision. In the winter of 2009, when my little sister and I learned the truth about Santa Claus and everything else, we cried. The picture on the left is our very first winter holiday in 2005, and a year before is where me and Gavar we saw our first mall Santa. Honestly, it looks like the picture is a poster for a cover sequel of Are We There Yet? The reason why I cried is not because Santa Claus was my parents, but it was the fact that the story just sounded so believable. You know, about a dude who could just stop time at night, eat cookies, opening doors to your house even if you don't have a chimney, and give you presents if you've been a good kid the whole year. Also, if there's any kids listening or reading this right now, I'm sorry that you have to learn the myth of Santa Claus in this way, unless you really never believed in it in the first place. I think my sister cried for the same reason. When I have my own kids, I don't know if I want to tell them about Santa Claus like the way my parents told me, even though it's a generational thing. From that generation, I don't choose to do everything the same way that they did but i will take some stuff into consideration and now we're going to move into the next chapter of the anime in the rest of 2009 as you can see santa could be every color too and now we're moving on to chapter 5 of 40 favorite anime and group makers this picture is me with the Teletubbies. Turns out I am a rare breed of people that wasn't afraid of watching Teletubbies. In fact, I had lots of their merchandise and I actually would start crying when the show would went off even though they had so many great shows on PBS Kids too. Now for this list of anime, I can't go through the ones that are popular, not just because I didn't watch them as much, but also at the same time I didn't really understand their stories either, which are Pokemon, Digimon, Naruto, Yu-Gi-Oh, and anything similar. Fun fact, my first Halloween costume in 2004, I was Yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh. I had a wig cap and my mom made the costume jacket. Of course, I don't have it anymore, but there's a picture of it and you can see also in one of my YouTube videos about Halloween called Edo Halloween Memories made in 2018. Yu-Gi-Oh! came out in Japan and America. On that note, the words in Katama meaning the words that are in English but written in Japanese text is not going to be translated here. Even though I watch these shows in English, I really do have a big support of watching the Japanese language and any other language I just found interesting too. Halloween. This picture is my first Halloween costume as Yugi in Halloween of 2004. So, my very first anime I've ever seen is called Hamataro that's ranked at number 5. This was the first anime I saw at the age of five. It really reminded me of the hamster version of Rugrats. It was so cute and funny. Also the fact that in Japan, they not only have the movie, but also have Minimoni in it too. Also the, half of the cast of Ed and Eddie was in Hammer Tower 2 for the English version. Number two on this list is Bobo 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 Bobo. 
from 2003 to 2007, and they are ranked as number one. This was really the best because it really showed me of what anime was about, and it was funny too. It broke the fourth wall in all languages. Breaking the fourth wall means that you are not following the script or story, while telling or showing the viewers that are the actors of actresses of the characters, you are fully aware of it. Another show I'm going to put on this list and rank is The Boondock, since it reflects life and comedy while using the art of anime at the same time. This picture is the age I watched Hammer Taro at age 5 in 2002, and I love both the English and Japanese and the opening theme song of the show as well. Breaking the fourth wall can also mean that you're looking directly to the camera while going off topic in any emotional way, like I'm doing right now, explaining the fourth wall. Speaking of which, the first show I've ever seen to do this is Animaniacs from 1993 to 1998. I was 7 years old when I saw that show, so at that time, that's 2004. This show helped me understand literal jokes and gags because of my autism. I couldn't really understand jokes, but once I watched shows like Animaniacs and others that became like them, I understood jokes and stand-up comedy too. Before I move into the third anime on this list, I want to pay my homage to the funny voice actress Felice Sampler that voiced Beauty from Bobo Bo Bobo Bo, Tomoko Nomura from Great Teacher Onizuka aka GTO, and Hiroi Tamura from Lucky Star were my favorite characters that Felice voiced in the English version of anime. Rest easy, major beauty. Number three on this list is Azumanga Dayo that stands for the Great Keen Dayo from 2002 to 2004, ranked at number three. This was the show that me and my little sister watched a lot. I really liked this show since it was relatable of what real high school was at that time. All the characters was fitting except for Mr. Kimura. I feel like I can do without him. My favorite character of all time is Kagura. I like the fact that she's competitive and funny too. My little sister's favorite character is Sakaki. She was my favorite as well. She was so tall. She loved cats and other cute items. She really reminded me of my mother. The thing I really liked about it is... The manga and anime was created by a guy named Kihiko Azuma. He gave all the characters different traits instead of being pretty high school girls. I also really like his work in Yostuba too and that manga is still going as well. This is also telling because this was like the second thing I always like to use for my own movies. And lastly, the fun fact is the fourth episode of Azumanga Dial came out on my fifth birthday. Fourth on this list is Lucky Star, ranked at number two. My favorite thing I like about this show is growing up was the main characters of Lucky Star talked about food, jobs, and references of other anime and gaming. I definitely could see Konata being a wealthy business lady in the future of manga and anime. While also seeing Konata being an international and helping her friends with their careers as well. This was the funniest and cutest anime I've ever seen. That's why it's number two. Bye Lucky! It's a quote from Lucky Star. Nichijo, that means everyday life. That's why this anime, Nichijo, is ranked at number 4. Even though it's the 18th anime I've seen, it's going to be on that list and rank once we get there. Falling. This is a picture of me being 15 years old and my sister now being 12 years old, which means that this is 2012. And my knowledge of Asia has grown to 3 to 5 years of time. Number 5 is The Melancholy of Haruhi Susumiya, Susumiya Haruhi no Yutsu, from 2006 to 2009, ranked at number 6. The reason why I chose this is because of the episode where Kone 
is brought into a different world with his new friends due of meeting Haruhi. On that note, one of my favorite episodes is the second episode that they made the SOS Brigade. Even though the show can be a bit wacky at times, it's still a comedic routine and characters that make the show very worth watching. Don't watch season two though. Number six is Full Metal Panic from 2002 to 2018, ranked at number seven. This was a great show because an army guy named Sotsuke Sagura goes to a regular school, but he takes things so seriously and literally in military terms. Meaning that there are situations that Sasuke is in or not in at the correct time of using the military terms and his action. He is a high school student. The Sasuke character has fought wars before he was taken into high school. So I can relate to him because even though I've never been to the military, I often take things as literal just like he does. I can relate because we both mean well in protecting others. This includes especially Miss Kanemi Chidori. I like her personality. Another show that reminded me of this, of Full Metal Panic, is School Rumble. I didn't watch School Rumble as much as I watched Full Metal Panic, but they're both just as equally as good, and possibly in the same number and rank. I do believe that since both shows have the same sense of humor, one of the videos I can remember remaking for my own video was the Judy and Mary song called Doki Doki. That means dumping, usually like your heart moving when you're in love. And Dream, a Japanese group of their song Moving On, that I would include parts from the TV show Ed and Eddie in my personal videos too. Like mixing the music videos with that along with Full Metal Panic. And school rumbo. Lastly, this picture was me in the Mardi Gras costume in 2012. This is the same place I got the picture with the Teletubby, but also this is the same night that Toonami, an anime of Cartoon Network Station, was coming back on April Fools. I wanted to stay up all night to watch it, but I fell asleep halfway. However, I am happy it's back once again. But they need more hours and shows for the whole Saturday nights or evening. Falling. This picture is me and Gavari driving in the bug car now. The seventh anime in this list is Panty Pony Dash from 2005 to 2009, ranked at number four. This show was a big step up from Azumaya Dayo and just like Lucky Star. One of the characters from Azumaya Dayo is Chiyo-chan. She is a 10 year old girl that attends high school. But in this show of Penny Pony Dash, the main character Rebecca Miyato aka Becky is a teacher and she is 11 years old. This was the first anime actress in English that caught my attention from her voice named Hilary Hag. My favorite episode of the show is where Rebecca and her students must go inside Himeko's dream to have her normal again. In one of those videos that I remixed with Eda and Nettie and put it with a Japanese musical group called Mission with their song Power Game. This was done with the original Japanese episode. I couldn't download it in English at the time in 2009. My favorite character is Masua. He is a rabbit and he just really needs a hug because Masua character always get pushed around a lot and all bunnies need hugs. Speaking of which, the number eight on this list is the pretty guardian soldier Sailor Moon or shortly known as Sailor Moon in Japanese Bishoujo Senshi Sailor Moon from 1992 to present, ranked at number 10. This show was so magical to me. The theme song was made by Tetsuya Komuro from Globe and Avix, which brings to me tears and nostalgia that all the characters and villains are well put together. Thanks, Nako Takoshi, for this. On that note, happy 31st anniversary for the show. 
This was the first anime I have ever seen that had to be censored for its original content that was formed on TV Asashi. The characters of Sailor Moon's name and character traits were changed from the Californian and French entertainment company called Deke Entertainment. This picture is myself, mom, and dad at the Ashiston Villa. And I believe that Gavari took this picture here. Deke is the same network that had the Super Mario Brothers Super Show and Heathcliff and the Cadillac Cats that I actually owned on DVD at one point. While I'm on the subject, rest in heaven, Christian Bishoripic. I will always remember her work as Zosite. Originally in the Japanese version, the character was voiced by a boy. They chose a girl to be voiced in the Deke version because that's what the character Zosite just looked like at that point, a girl. But it wasn't the only changes that was made from the original franchise. Thankfully from 2014 to 2019, Viz Media revoiced the English episodes with a new cast and they have done every single episode exactly like the Japanese version. Although, I often like the Deke version from time to time. My favorite character is Usagi Toskino that stands for Bunny Moon or aka in English we call her Serena. I understand that she could be a piece of work to deal with at times but I have patience with her because I can relate to her struggles periodically. But this show has no chill. They just straight savage with everything that happens. Even the villains can be cold hearted too. I like the fact that the monsters of Sailor Moon dress exactly like the trouble situation that the main superheroes have to deal with. The show came a long way and I'm very happy it was still on as of 2021. Wedding Peach is also a show I think about when it comes to Sailor Moon. Wedding Peach was the first anime that I have seen at my grandmother's house. So that means that this show will be in the same rank and place as Sailor Moon. Falling. This picture is my cards of Mini Moni, Sailor Moon, DG Karat, Slayers, and Balf Athlete's Victory in the year of 2022. The three animes I've mentioned, I got the cards from 2009 to 2011. The other cards are pretty recent, but they're fun to look at and play with while keeping them to this very day. The ninth anime that I saw that is on this list is Digi Karat from 1998 to 2006 and UFO Baby aka Da 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 from 2000 to 2002 both ranked at number 32. The whole series is so cute of a mascot trying to live a regular life while selling their own products. This is Digi Carrot by the way. I like that they're all diverse and have so many funny and cute adventures like Hello Kitty in a way. The same thing could definitely can be said for a UFO baby. The show I found was on a channel called Animax on YouTube. The 10th anime I have seen on this list is Super Boing I No Yuki Pig Ga Tonde Buring. The Love and Justice Pig Girl Flying Buring from 1994 to 1999 and this is ranked at number 11. Speaking of the show like Sailor Moon, this one is about a girl named Karin Kobo. She transforms into a super pig. This was the first time I saw the English version being done in the Philippines. Unfortunately, I can't really find it. The only episodes that were found are 1, 7, 16, and 35, and also 43. I recently heard that there was a Fox Kids version from it from the company called Saban. The same people who worked on the Super Sentai Rangers aka the Power Rangers. The show that is still pretty good to watch. I really hope I can find all the lost English episodes of Tonde Buring soon. This picture of me and Gavari 
was at one point on my dad's phone screensaver and the desktop to our computer as well. 11th on this list is Inuyasha that stands for Dog Demon from 2000 to 2022, ranked at number 8. I remember between 2009 to 2011 while living in Louisiana, my sister and I would wake up at 4 a.m. to watch this show on Adult Swim. Let me tell you, it was worth it. I love most of all the theme and closing songs of the show. I would listen to those artists and group, especially Boa. I wonder if the creators of Adult Swim knew that Boa made an English version to every heart. Furthermore, the show had really great adventures of the new generation mixed with the old era of Japan, especially the spin-off series of Yasume, Rest in Magic, to the voice of Lord Miruku, of Kyoji Tishutani, the original Japanese actor, Mantu Raguchaman, the Thai voice actor, and Kirby Morale, the English voice actor. Number 12 on this list is Rama One Half from 1989 to 2008, ranked at number 9. This was another classic made by Rumiko Takahashi, and she is a female manga artist. I also liked her work in Yurisei Yasuda too. Just like the fact that the cold cursed water changed Rama's gender, his father turns into a panda, and many mass hysteria problems happen too. Fun fact, the original version of Rama One Half, the five female characters are voiced by a Japanese musical group called Coco, and one of my favorite songs from them is Equal Romance that became the soundtrack of Rama One Half as well, and the first anime DVD collection I have for season one since the winter holiday of 2009. Yeah, that became my winter present in 2009. If you've seen the last episode of the whole series, I would actually deem it not a great Mother's Day episode. In fact, I deem it as the worst last episodes to ever seen. Like, the manga did so much better than this. This picture is me graduating middle school. My friend Conrad is behind me. His house is in the same place I took the picture of the Japanese stuff behind me and we both lived in the same neighborhood. Earlier when I said that Sailor Moon was censored, I did see Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! But those weren't really shows I paid attention a lot to notice the changes happening in America. Even though I knew they have changed the same amount of names and other stuff as Sailor Moon as well. The 13th anime I have witnessed was called Hidamari Sketch from 2007 to 2013, ranked at number 15. This was the first version of Lucky Star and an advanced version of Azumanga Daio. My first and favorite episode is where all the main characters would go to a summer festival. This was one of the best episodes I mixed with one of my personal favorite videos including snippets from Edda Netti, South Park, and Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I put the Japanese group Zone Secret Bass song on top of it too. This was the second anime I saw at my grandparents house. Number 14, Tenchi Muyo. This means no need for Tenchi or Tenchi is no need. From 1992 to 2010, ranked at number 3. I like this because it showed a heirloom that Tenchi never really asked for, especially for his own kids and his own relatives too. Everyone around Tenchi will pretty much sacrifice themselves because they really love him, but Tenchi mood is like please don't, although he does do the same for them too. I do like the spin-off series of Tenchi Muyo of Tenchi Muyo GXP and Tenchi Muyo War on Geminar. This is a picture of my family at the Jambalaya Park in 2012. So in this part I'm going to explain what a heirloom is. A heirloom is where multiple people love the main character or any character in a show, movie, book, and etc. 
My favorite character from Tenchi Muyo is Ryoko Hakubi. Her voice in the original Japanese and English versions sounds so funny. Even though I haven't seen the other versions of the voice actresses that did Ryoko, I bet they are funny too. While her rebellion is hilarious and cute, my favorite episode is where they all must take care of Tenchi's baby cousin. Another anime that I think about when it comes to this is the island of Aranto, where a boy, Ikto, gets trapped in a typhoon and he traveled 100 years into the past of 1907. So it meant that his future is 2007 and I was about 10 years old at that time. He is in an island that is filled with only girls, so he is just the only boy that is there. My favorite episode is where the main character, Ikto, is trying to get Suzu to go to school. Number 14th on this list is Invasion Squid Girl or Squid Daughter, Shinryaku Ika Musume from 2011 to 2014 ranked at number 38. It was about a girl that came from the sea to stop pollution, but she just ends up working at the summer food shop. I actually had a playset where I would build the shop with the characters as well. And the toys felt like Legos as well. My favorite episode is where the squid girl tries to be equal to a dog. And also when she spoke English to a foreign tourist that is named E.R. This picture is me on the fence of the first black person that owned a home in Florida of 2013. Number 15th on this list is Kodocha Kodono Onomodocha. That means child's toy from 1996 to 2009, ranked at number 12. This is like the kid version drama of Marmalade Boy. This was an introduction also to Laura Bailey as Sana and Tomi Shinohara too. Number 16th on this list is Bleach from 2003 to 2013, ranked at number 16. My favorite thing about the show is that it's a battle between the spirit world and the real world and that Ichigo and his friends have to go through the fight. It is funny because they have funnier adventures as well. And it also has a good soundtrack as well, which that is called an OST. 18th on this list is Cowboy Bebop in 1998 and Ghost in the Shell, Kokaku Kidotai 1995 to present. And they're both ranked at number 14th. I like them both because they both take place in the future and they go on adventures and add humor and suspense at the same time too. Falling. This is a picture of my sister playing in band and her instrument is the clarinet like Squidward from Spongebob. 19th on this list is Strawberry Marshmallow as Ichigo Marshmallow only in 2005 and ranked at number 13th. My favorite episode is not just the first one, but the fourth episode is also my favorite because Nobue Ito had to work as a waitress in a maid outfit to earn more money to buy cigarettes. The difficulty was she couldn't smoke while she was working and she didn't like the outfit that she had to wear because she felt it was just a bit too revealing. But in the end, it was worth it since her little sister Chika and her friends made her job harder. So she quit and wrote on Miu's forehead, Miu is Chika's friend and neighbor with a permanent marker that translates to runaway child. Number 20th on this list is Slayers from 1995 to 2010, ranked at number 26. I liked it because it provided a lot of adventure while being funny at the same time too. My favorite character is Lena Inverse since she is not only adventurous but she's cute and funny too. Other shows and media that really remind me of this, not really episodes, are Popful Mel, Ruined Explorers of Fam and Ihiri, Monkey Typhoon, and Mighty Magisword. 
Number 21 on this list is Dead Man Wonderland, only in 2012 and ranked at number 41. This is really a very sad anime. Ganta was forced to live in a prison for something he did not do. And of course that made him sad too. While at the same time it was a carnival. In the end he made a lot of friends that helped him to get out of this situation and the prison as well. This is a picture of me on the computer and I believe I am watching the Strawberry Marshmallow episode of probably the 4th episode by the way. Number 22nd on this list is Sword Art Online SAO from 2012 to 2020 ranked at number 37. This was really cool because the fact that you're not only inside the game but you can feel and taste everything in that game as well. But the only bad news is that you cannot turn off the game because it not only kills you if you try taking off the headset but also People were in a coma state for such a while as well. Hats Off Entertainment, a YouTube channel that does parody of SAO, really did a great job on that. Number 22nd on this list is Kill a Kill and Akagami Got Killed. That stands for Red Kill. Both of them were only in 2012 and I have both ranked these animes at number 39. What both of these things have in common is the rising power of the underdog while adding humor and action at the same time even though it could also be sad as well. Number 24 is Boys Over Flower Hana Yuri Dango from 1996 to 2006 ranked at number 28. This is Marmalade Boy and Kodocha mix. I like that Tsuki Makino is her own person. She stand out for her own right and even though she is treated like garbage of half the series, she finds new way to get back up again. Number 25 is Card Captor Sakura from 1998 to 2018, ranked at number 29. I love this show because this show had all the characters of Eda and Eddie on it. It also had the best theme song of the original version and the song was called Catch You Catch Me by a Japanese artist named Gumi. It was a new version of Yu-Gi-Oh and Sailor Moon and also Pokemon mixed into one when I was watching it. This is a picture of being in my mom's birth town in Texas in the summer of 2011 going to Slither Bomb. Number 26, Crayon Shinchan from 1992 to present, ranked at number 20th. Happy late 29th anniversary or early 30th anniversary. Rest in creativity, the makers of this, named Yoshihito Uzu. Your creativity is not lost. Anyone else involved in this series that also passed away, I miss you too. This is a show about a kindergarten kid named Shinosuke. He has a regular day and a fantasy in his world. He is very crazy. At the end of the day, he means well. He even helps people out with their problems even though he is the same person that drives them to go to that problem. He would give any villain a run for their money. Until I turned 18, I possibly could not watch this show. And that is the case for every parent in America since it shows nudity and potty humor. But in the original place in Japan and Asia, every kid or baby can watch the Shinchan show. This is a picture of me eating bugs at a bug museum. Number 27, Ghost Sweeper Mikami. GS Mikami Goraku Daikusen from 1993 to 1995, and Little Red Riding Hood Cha-Cha, Azukin Cha-Cha, from 1994 to 2000, both ranked at number 30th. What both of these shows have in common is that they both have an English Philippine version, and they seem to use magic and humor together as well. When I first saw the show Cha-Cha in 2013, I was thinking about making an English script, 
but in 2020, I realized that they already had an English version, so I just threw my scripts out the window or deleted them off my computer. Fun fact, Ghost Sweeper Mikami came out the year that my parents got married, and one of the main characters, Rhea, in the original version of Cha-Cha was voiced by Shingo Katori, that is from the boy group called SMAP. This picture is my 14th birthday cake of Kung Fu Panda and Bolt. Bears and dogs are my favorite animals. Number 28 is Galaxy Angels from 2001 to 2008 and Battle Athlete Victory, Donka Dong from 1997 to 2021, both ranked at number 17. Both of these shows start in the future. They go on adventures and they have a good mix of action, humor, and cuteness collectively. Number 29, Kagamir Kaparis Orange Road from 1987 to 1999, ranked at number 6. This was an anime that had a third wheel of a girl between a guy and a lady. A third wheel is to be between two people that love you or being tagged along with someone that is love. But another person likes the same person that you liked as well. I love the fact that Kyosei Kazuga, the main character, tries to fix everything. His magic gets him in and out of trouble. The only English version I could find is the last movie and it was pretty good. Probably soon in the future, we'll have a full English version of the whole series of Orange Road, just like another anime called Dirty Pair. Number 30th is You're Under Arrest, Taiho Shizu Hazo, from 1994 to 2008, ranked at number 25. This is about police officer girls that follow the law and take everything into their own hands. This picture is what my room looked like in 2013. Even though this picture was taken in 2021, this looked exactly the same as it was back then. Falling. Number 31, Samurai X, or known as Veroni Kenshin, that also means the Wandering Samurai. The main character Kenshin has a reversible sword and super nice to everyone. And the character also has a serious personality as well. Judy and Mary did a theme song translated as Freckles that means Sobaku, which was another icing on a beautiful cake too. Especially since that song became one of Judy and Mary's very popular track ever. Number 32, Hyper Police from 1997 to 2000, ranked at number 24. This was a big step up from You're Under Arrest since this anime takes place in a world where humans and monsters live together in the future. The show was released in my birth year of 1997 and the ending song is so enjoyable too. Number 33, Black Lagoon from 2006 to 2013, ranked at number 21. This was really fun to watch about Rock the Businessman becoming Rock the Pirate. The best character that became my favorite character is Revy because she is bad as in good. Thanks MJ for bad as in dangerous. I believe she is a party person that ensures that nothing will ever get dull. This show really reminds me of Guron Lagin in Ikura 7. This picture was from my bed and my closet that had more posters on it too. Number 34 is Black Cat from 2005 to 2007, ranked at number 34. This is like a detective and a mystery show combined with comedy. My favorite episode is where the character Train turns into a kid and helps another kid out from an orphanage. Number 35 is Hikaru Plays Go. Hikaru no Go from 2001 to 2008, ranked at number 39. I really like this anime because it was a new way for me to learn how to play chess, and the main character is voiced by Double D, so that's a plus too. And Go is a board game like chess and checkers. 
Number 36 is Hunter x Hunter or Hunter and Hunter from 1999 to 2019 ranked at number 23. Gone and Kyoa best friends vibe really carries on the show to a whole new level from the reboot version in 2011. This was one of the best shows I've seen in Adult Swim for a while ago. Number 37, Kaleido Star, from 2003 to 2004, ranked at number 36. It took a lot of work for Sora to become a star, and she did it along with meeting new friends and new family too. This is a picture of my 15th birthday cake. Falling. Number 38, Kenichi, the history of the strongest mighty disciple. Shijo Sako no Deshi Kenchi from 2006 to 2014, ranked at number 31. This was one of the best shows for me that introduced me to martial arts. Shigure is my favorite character. She is super helpful and funny when helping Kenichi, just like Miu. Number 39, Case Close, a.k.a. Great Detective Conan. Mattel Conan, from 1996 to present, ranked at number 18. This story is about a 17-year-old named Shinichi Kudo, in English we call him Jimmy Kudo, that became Conan and turned into a 7-year-old because thugs have gave him a pill. Thankfully, Conan was not the only one that got transferred into a kid. He found new ways to solve clues, and it's the anime version of Law & Order. Fun fact, the 58th episode came out on my birth year of April the 28th, 1997. This picture is my dad sleeping on my birth of 97. Also, he was the first one to watch movies with me when I first started making them. Number 40th is New Game from 2016 to 2019, ranked at number 35. I love this anime because this was a show that teaches people how to make video games and the challenges that goes on to it too. Unfortunately, at first, I thought the show had a young girl that was doing voice acting for pornography. I'm so happy that I was wrong about that. However, it's the first anime that I found when I enrolled in Full Cell. Number 41, The Town That Forgot About Me, or Erase, Boku Dake Ga Inamachi, from 2016, and Jormogulan of 2012, both ranked at number 33. Even though these two shows are very different from one another, the biggest thing that they both have in common is that both of these shows is about fixing the past. It's action-packed, emotional, humorous, educational, and has nostalgic moments as well. Speaking of which, number 42, Pop Team Epic, in 2018, ranked at number 19. This was one of the best shows because it was about two characters that parody everything, that they would create content in many forms of animation and real life footage too. Even the manga version is really good as well. The Shield Hero from 2019 to present ranked at number 40th. This was the last anime I saw while writing this book. All of these things that I put together is equal into my own musical group. I'll explain that in further chapters, and even though I will often watch these animes in English, I often became curious and appreciated the original Japanese version, and also other versions as well. Also, Rest in Shield, Mr. Billy Comet, the original English version of The Shield Hero, and this anime also became very similar to my life as well while we go into the deeper later chapters. I'll come back to that like I said later. This picture is me and my mom on a boat in New Orleans. At this point we're moving back to 2009 once again. From the winter from that time this is where this was the first time I saw a show from Comedy Central called South Park. I fell in love with this show instantly while putting it with Ed and Eddie and window movie maker of my own videos of movie. 
The first video where I put South Park and Ed and Eddie together was on a Japanese show called Papa Papa Puffy. Yep, Puffy Ami Yumi's Puffy. It was an episode about the winter time where Ami and Yumi they gave presents to everyone, also featuring Tomi Shinohara as well. I've noticed that Tomi Shinohara has always been a part of Puffy's show of the full season that lasted from 1996 to 2002. Another video mix I did with South Park and Ed and Eddie was the Meanie Moni's Great Cake Adventure. Yes, Meanie Moni's very own movie. It was pretty cool. My favorite one of all time is where I mix Ed and Eddie and Sailor Moon's seventh episode in the Deke version. It was episode four along with the South Park episode called The Ring. Falling. This is a picture of me dressed for school. Because in the ninth grade, my class and I had to pretend we were going on a job interview. And would you believe this became my first Gmail icon too? This was around the time I had my first and only dog named Mika. I had her from the start of 2010 through the fall of 2015. My mom heard about her from some neighbors. The neighbors had friends in another city. And they wanted the puppies from the litter to go to a child that has special needs or in need of a pet to be their best friend. This is a picture of what my first room looked like where me and Godavari switched rooms in 2007. I am reading notes I read in the history class in 2011. This became a YouTube video that will be explained later and my dog is in the background. And she grew up so fast. So my mom called the family that was giving away the dog. She secretly set up a meeting if it all came together. She wanted to surprise me. They met my mom and wanted to see if my mom and the puppy would take care of each other. There were two puppies to choose from. One was not interested and the other one that became Mika kept staring at my mom. My mom didn't want to separate the puppies because they were siblings to one another. She said she cried when she picked up Mika to take her to her home because she felt that she was splitting up a family. The agreement was to never sell Mika. That if for some reason even years later we are no longer wanted or could take care of Mika we will return Mika to her original owner. We honored for that agreement. I remember specifically I wanted a Japanese dog and I just got my wish. She was a German Shepherd mixed with an Akita and I named her Mika. This is a picture of my mom with Mika in the living room. To be honest here, I didn't know that she was a mixed breed. I did not know the real Mika Teresa Todd had parents that were also different races too. At that time, not to compare a dog to a human, I just wanted to have a Japanese dog. I called her from one of my favorite artists, Mika. It's funny because both of them were born in America and are both half Japanese and also they're both females. This picture, believe it or not, I surprisingly didn't take any photos of me or Mika together. On that note, I don't even remember any photos of me and Mika being taken together. So this is a video of a snapshot of myself petting her in 2011. She is shedding at the moment. Also a fun game I love to play with her is where I would have this yarn toy out of her mouth while chasing her. If I got it out of her mouth three times, then the game was over. We didn't play fetch, so this was just a better option. Falling. During this time, I had to use the AVS video editor. I was already familiar with it before I only would use to convert videos into WMV because that is all the Window Movie Maker could take. Don't get me wrong, it can definitely take an AVI and MPG video file too, but unless it had the DVX 
video logo on it, the videos would never show up. And I remember I had to sign on to my parents' email to even make that happen in the first place. And this timeline right here, this is 2010. I remember I was watching the Nicktoons version of Domo at my friend's Matthew's house. And his older brother Darren showed me the origins of Domo from NHK from 1998 to 2002 on a website that had most of Domo shirts and I fell in love with it immediately. This is back in 2011. I would never get mad if anybody would call me Domo because Domo is a brown monster that everyone loves. It only eats food, not people or buildings, and there's even one episode where Domo met Godzilla. It was a short, and it was so epic and funny at the same time. This is a picture of Godavari playing the clarinet in front of Mika. Around that time, School Elastic Company, while they were doing a promotion at my school, offered me a Domo book. And once I got it, I loved it ever since, and I still have it to this very day. Now, from that year of 2010 summer, after all I've learned, I realized I wanted to make my own Asian group, and it would be a mix of all different races, but it fell due to the hard times. I was building two groups that's called 4WA and K5. 4WA stands for 4 White Angel. It is a name I came up with because my favorite number is 4. And I often would see White Angel wings. Over time it became too problematic. So I now changed the name into 4 Y Angels. I kept the W in the name. It's an inspiration from the Thailand rock band called Why Not 7. And no... I didn't think this name 4WA is because of NWA, I promise. So this name is officially called 4Y Angels, aka 4WA. This is another photo of myself applying the job in high school. Pretty nice picture. K5 stands for K95 because I love dogs. It's funny no one had a problem with that name. However, I am changing it now to C5 that is now K95. The direction for 4WA at the time was to have two Asian girl, one European girl, and one black female rapper. I also drew a picture of them so many times from 2010 to 2014. Now at this point, I don't really care what race is in the group. It's all about the talent and personality, which was pretty much what I was kind of going for in the first place. As of C5, it was just going to be all Asian boys. But like I said before, it could just be mixed with anyone talented and able to harmonize to be in the group. Their costumes would be the mixture of dog ears and tails with some dog paw prints as the costume. And the print of the shirt would be C5. As for 4WA, the clothing was going to be dresses. Then I realized it could be any type of clothing that just spells out 4WA. In my vision, the W is split in half of the two different members wearing it. So at least I kept the idea. And as far as C5, that could also be any type of idea that is just related to like a mixture of having a dog costume or just wearing regular clothes. My sister made this picture of a rectangular rainbow with a black heart in the middle for school. I asked her if I could use it for a 4WA album cover. She said yes, and I still kept that picture to this very day. So the first album of the 4WA is going to be a picture that my sister drew while just adding some new filters and stuff as well. Pauline. On that note, that's the first time I wrote lyrics not just for the group I wanted to produce, but also myself as an artist, creator, writer, producer, singer, director. I am called Fast Ed. In physical education classes known as PE, I was not really a fast runner, yet my coach would always yell out to me, Go Fast Eddie, go! 
I pretty much would do my best to run faster like Forrest's character in Forrest Gump. You know the time when he had crutches around his legs? Yeah, that was pretty much me when I was running. Yet, when I would run faster, it feels like they would come off of me. That's how I got the name Fast Ed. Fun fact, there is a house rapper that is called Fast Eddie. So that's why also I couldn't call myself Fast Eddie if anyone's asking. A nickname that I now have as of 2023 is Edo4 because of one episode of Edda and Eddie called Sir Edalot, they were playing with Sarah and Jimmy of Kings and Queens. Eddie had a puppet named Edo and that was the original name of what is now called Tokyo. The name change took place in 1868. My favorite gym teacher was Miss Mo. She looked like Sailor Uranus from Sailor Moon. She really took care of me and she was the first person that got me to wear deodorant too. This picture is what I made in Photoshop class. The two images at the bottom was 4WA and C5. And there's the picture that God have already made that I just wrote words on them. In 2010, there was a girl I met that was named Lovely. I'm not joking because that is actually her real name. I met her during recess. At first, I thought she was a boy because she had an afro. At that time, I didn't really see girls with an afro except for old pictures and old television shows. They wore afro during my parents' generation, which was the 1960s and the 1970s. Lovely and I talked a lot while hanging out at school. Every time we saw each other at school, we talked. Unfortunately, we never really went out on a date, and I never knew what she did outside of school. She knew a whole lot about me, though. She was born a year after me, which was 1998. We were both pretty quiet. We both liked the character Double D from Etta and Eddie. I liked Kenny, and she liked Kyle from South Park. It's funny because both Kyle and Kenny from South Park is voiced by the same person of Matt Stone. We both wanted to go to Japan and if I remember correctly, she wanted to be a doctor there as well. She asked me how would it have been possible. I said to use Google Translate. Also Google Translate came out on my ninth birthday and I started using it at age 13 but then learned about more translation sites later in time. This picture was the era that we kept Buddha along with the beautiful gray water fountains too. In later years, we still have statues of them as well. Another trick I learned to do on the AVS video editor is to put a video or a picture on top of a main video. It is a process of transitioning from a video with another one while adding my own subtitles as well. I previously tried that on the window movie maker, but this was a bit of more of an upgrade. This was the first time I even put my own face on camera and introduced myself. You might be wondering about how did I make lyrics? Well, I would just have a spare sheet of paper that I did not use for school and I wrote on them with an ink pen. I don't necessarily like pencils because when I try to write with a pencil, it hurts my hands and ears. It is a symptom of how my autism would show up. It relates to occupational therapy that I received over the years as well. One of the goals was my gross motor skills and in this one trying to get my hands strong enough to clasp and grip stuff. The sensory part of me is effective because the feel and sound of a pencil, which was just so harsh to me. I one time had a pencil sharpener. That one time I actually stuck my index finger in there, twisted it as a joke, and my left index finger almost peeled my skin off. And this is a picture of me getting on the bus to the Bug Museum. Pauline. With pencils, I often use a grip or a magical pencil. This was so I could write down notes and answers in class. We eventually switched to me taking notes on a keyboard. This was before I had or we all walked around with our own laptops. 
The best way I could describe this magical pencil is it's like a mechanical pencil but smaller and if I turn the tip to the pencil on the right it extends the lead of that pencil so it could be longer and if I turned it to the left the lead would get smaller or disappear completely. Although these were more of a fun way to make me write using a pencil it still irritated me like nails on a chalkboard. It's the same way of how I feel about styrofoam or anything like that. That's why I like writing using an ink pen or typing on a keyboard. I wrote so many scripts and lyrics and made so many burned DVDs. I would often share this experience with my friends at school. Even though they couldn't understand it, they didn't stop me from experiencing learning more about it. They would often ask me of what a specific word meant or to perform a dance or even an act like the car driving dance from HOT's Candy or anything similar to that. I've later started to type my own songs, scripts, and this book that you're reading right now. This is a picture of my mom, Gavari, and I posting at a restaurant in the New Year's of 2010. It is going to be 2011 next year. Earlier that year in 2010 at the public library, they would have anime night at the end of each and every month. I would watch anime and get a chance to talk to different people of who was in the anime and stories. When I went to visit my father's parents, I would watch anime on demand on their television. In the winter of 2009, we saw Avatar. I heard the Sailor Moon Christmas song that my parents played when my sister and I woke up. We also received Pocky Hello Panda snacks. Both were so delicious, but in the winter of 2010 was so much better. And here's why. This is a picture of me and Godavari and LSU stand in 2010. My sister and I opened gifts as usual, however this time my father was filming us opening them. I remember I got the South Park Season 4 DVD, Fish Eggs, Not Real Fish, Just Plastic Water Ball, Morning Musume Keychain from 2000 of the Happy Summer Wedding Era, and a DQ Ice Cream Machine. My little sister got a Sonic and Wii game and 10 years later I made a video about us opening present. If I read another book I'll tell you about those gifts in 2020. On that same day we went to a museum. I was filming of what to put for my video. Afterwards we ended the day by going to a Hispanic restaurant. On that day forward I learned how to say you are welcome in Spanish which is de nada. This is a picture of my family standing next to a dragon. Fun fact, my father now wears my clothes. They're pretty much hand-me-ups for him. My New Year dream of 2010 came true. A week before the New Year came in, our anime club from the public library was watching an anime XXXholic. You go was one of the main characters from XXXHolic, appeared in my dream, and I was looking around. I saw videos of Flinko, Boa, and Morning Musume in the background. Yuko said to me while patting my head and face, you can go now. I dropped through the floor like Daniel's Kalua's character and get out. I was in the sunken place. This was five years before I even saw the movie Get Out. There is also another thing I want to add here, even though it's not in the book, is that for the rest of the dream, I ended up at PE and then I just end up like just peeing on myself. And then I woke up and I realized it was a dream and I just had to go use the bathroom. So thankfully, my dream just woke me up in time for me to use the bathroom. This is a picture of me standing in front of a hot dog stand. These were one of the last photos of 2010 and I was recording and talking photos on half of them too just like right now. Now we're in the year of 2011. This was the moment I started my own YouTube channel. Two years before I had the channel but I didn't really use it. In fact 
I often have my father share my videos on his channel by transferring it from the real time player and then I learned that I could use my burn DVDs to revise my video or have it play regularly on the PS3, PlayStation 3. I couldn't previously do it because it couldn't read the disc. Also I have my DVD player from 2004 to 2011. It accidentally got damaged in the rain while me and my friend Hunter were waiting on the bus. So that was the last time I saw that again. But it was a really good thing for me to play with. Once I was going to see Vince again to go get my usual haircut. It was different because not only it was in a new location than it was previously. But he was with his partner again. So those would be the days I would bring my DVD player before it broke. To be honest, I brought that thing everywhere, except for school, of course. This is a picture of my mom bowling with me, my sister, and my cousin Yakisa from my dad's side of the family. Bowling. My first ever YouTube channel was called Eddie Blue 9. I was doing the same video with the mixtures of the Eds and South Park. And the first video I uploaded was the Tomi Shinohara rock band that was mixed together like it was before, released on my 14th birthday. But my channel only lasted from April to August. It got deleted because of copyright rules that were really heavy at the time. And that same year, I remember I wanted to be on Two and a Half Men, the television show. I was going to play as Uncle Charlie's Lost Child, but I never really contacted the show. But as I'm recording this, happy 20th or 21st anniversary to that show. This is a picture of my sister bowling. One of the videos I did on my first YouTube channel was the auditioning for my group called 4WA. The auditioning was set up at our public library. I didn't have any social media at the time except YouTube and I've even asked some Asian girls that were at my school, there wasn't really a lot of Asians in Louisiana, to come to the library for the audition but they couldn't really make it. I extended the audition invite on YouTube but not only it could have been seen as risky because many people were too far away from Louisiana but hey, at the time I thought that was a good marketing strategy to just get myself out there not only on YouTube but for anyone else to just come to be invited to go to America to be auditioning for a group I was setting up. I thought it was a good idea at the time. So, the day of that audition, no one showed up. All of my family was there and my mom was there as well, but she was sick. So, once we got home, I cried so hard. All my happiness went away that day. My parents did their best to cheer me up, and I didn't want anything like this to ever happen again. Life is unpredictable, but what cheered me up is that I had a vision of Lil Wayne walking into my room and telling me that I'll make it soon and just to never give up. Speaking of sadness on that same year, we had a bunny rabbit named Lavender, and I said had for a reason. She stayed in the house. We got her in 2007. She only always let Godavari near her since it was her pet. My bed had more space for her than anyone else's bed. She would often hang out under my bed and peek her head out to see what I was watching on TV or video. The best memory I had with her was after I was finishing up school for in the fifth grade. I was super upset that I had to go to summer school in order to get to the 6th grade. I was watching Tampa Po, stands for Dandelions, the girl excited about pasta, that stands for Otome Pasa Ni Kando. Lavender looked up at me, she didn't do anything, it was like her face was telling me, it will be okay, please be happy. Rabbits are very similar to cats. Here's a picture of... Lavender and I am trying to pet her. My sister is nervous. My dad is holding her and my mother is taking the picture. And that was like I said, all of this was very rare. But I guess just for the moment, Lavender was just okay with this. 
Another memory that sticks with me is that after I was eating food, Sprite, and a banana while watching my sister play Mario and Sonic Olympics, I started to hang upside down and about an hour later, I end up throwing up. My friend Hunter had to leave and go home and Lavender stumped her paws to say, will you stop doing that? Another memory that I have was at 5 o'clock in the morning as I was getting ready for school. Lavender tried to rush into my room, but I closed the door. And the crazy part was is that I guess her cage wasn't closed or something like that. But here's where we're going to get to the had a rabbit part. One day when I came home from school, my little sister was crying. She got home before I did. Lavender had died due to complications of her bowels and diarrhea. I was actually the one that was telling them that lavender poop wasn't normal. Although, I was sad too. Because I felt like we were going to have a lifelong connection. And unfortunately, that didn't last. Fully. I was petting her deceased body while saying, if I have a daughter, I'll name her the same, or at least have a song dedicated to her to show my love for Lavender. And while this was all happening, there was a big wasp that was disturbing my final moments with her, so I just had to run inside. A few weeks or months before her death, she allowed me to pet her for just a few minutes, and then she bit my thumb and say, that's enough. Prior to that, on the couch, she would try to get closer to my bed and my face while jumping over my lap. Rest in peace to Lavender. Not to mention, in that same year of 2011, Kago Ai from Moi Misume, Mini Moni, and so many more almost died from suicide. And I definitely would have made a YouTube video showing my face right then and there if that would have happened. During these rough times, there were two groups that made me just a bit more happier. And they are ICP, Insane Clown Posse, and OF, Our Future Equaling Tyler the Creator. And this picture is the last photo of Lavender in 2011. Now... We're moving into chapter 6, favorite Chinese and Taiwanese musical group and artists from 2009 to present. This picture is one of the last photos of the New Year's of 2010 with my dad and Gavari and my best attempt at smiling again. The first group on this list is SHE from 2001 to present and what it stands for is their name which is Selena he be in Ella. This was my first group of Mando Pop that I first listened to. I found them on Mega Upload in 2009. And my favorite songs from them are HBO, Superstar, Ring Ring Ring, Zong Guo Ha, that means Chinese language, and possibly many more. I also like the fact that they're all different. Ring Ring Ring, released in 2007, is how I found them on Mega Upload. I typed in Mini Moni even though they are two different groups and live in two different countries. However, they both did start in the same year of 2001, just like Mini Moni. Another person I'm putting on this list is Coco Lee from 1994 to 2023. Not because I found her around the same time as SHE, but she actually was my very first Asian artist I remember from the box. But she unfortunately passed away from suicide recently as I was making this book. My first song from her was Do You Want My Love. I was around two turning three years old, but I liked to take this time to talk about all my other favorite songs from her which is Di Da Di Hints, All Around the World, Wo Dang Shebang that means My Wings, Can't Get Over that featured Kelly Price, Fancy, 
Ja Ting Yingxi. That means listen one more time and I will be your friend. I made a video tribute of her a year before her passing and just recently celebrated her 29th year in music too. Rest easy my queen. Nothing and no one will ever hurt you anymore. And also say hi to Lavender too. This is a picture of me eating at an Asian buffet restaurant in 2013. Number second on this list is Vivian Hitsu from 1990 to present. The reason why I like her is because yes she is a funny person. She was in Black Biscuit and she often reminds me of Jackie Chan. And yes Jackie Chan also made songs too. My favorite Vivian song is called So So from 2006 and the first time I listened to it was in 2011. Number third on this list is TF Boys from 2013 to present. These guys are just really funny and really good dancers too. Number fourth is JJ Lin from 2003 to present. My favorite song from him is Down, the English and Chinese version. This is a picture of me and my mom at the fish tank now. Number fifth on this list is Higher Brothers from 2013 to present. I listen to them on my way from California to Louisiana. I love all the members. I love Hikari and J Mag too. I like their own version of swag and flow while rapping. So I really like every single song that came out. Even their solo projects as well. Number six on this list is MC Hot Dog from 1997 to present. The Higher Brothers inspiration came from him. My favorite songs from him are Sha Zin Zin, that means Mr. Almost, Wo De Shinzo, this means Messed Up Society, Pimim Ba Wang Gexin, that means Ghetto Superstar, and Slumdog Millionaire. Pussy so san sashi jan hin dashi that means no breakfast for hip hop and rock and roll featuring soft lupa and his new release in music in 2023 is pretty good too this is me in 2015 in my own room number 7th on this list is marvis fan from 1995 to present my favorite song from her is Bartender Angel because of her soft voice and I believe that this was the first song of hers that I ever sped up because I thought the original was just too slow. Number 8 is Jolin Sai from 1999 to present and my favorite song from her is Show Your Love. Her other songs before this one were pretty good too. Falling. Number 9th on this list is China Dolls from 1999 to present. My favorite song is the Boom collaboration with their Thailand label called GNM Grammy. And my other favorite songs are Yak Na that means don't. Hooray Mundi that means hey it's good. This was also a song I sped up. Both of the members are mixed nationalists. They are both Thailand and Chinese. They debuted in Thailand in 1999 and the next year have translated their album in Chinese. They speak several languages including English and Japanese too. This picture is my 18th birthday in 2015. So I first found Our Future in 2011 on the summer trip to Texas. We went to Slitherbomb the amusement park. Once we got home, we plugged back everything in the house because we had left lavender in the house. So we had to unplug everything so we can make sure she doesn't eat anything. When I turned the TV on to MTV Jams, there was a music video I saw that was called Trouble On My Mind. This was the soundtrack to the movie Project X that I saw the movie two years later on HBO. At this point, it featured a brand new artist I have never seen before named Tyler the Creator. When I first heard his voice, it was so new and dark, like he had a deep tone voice. But I loved it because it was just so different. I was already familiar with Pusher T because he was previously in a group called Eclipse, 
produced by Pharrell from the Neptunes. Once I heard and saw the video, I knew this wouldn't be the last time I would get to see him and his crew of Odd Future. This picture is me going to Texas in the summer of 2011 with my Pokemon Pocket Monster that I got from school currency called the Mustang Bucks. I wonder if they still have that in Central today. How I found Insane Clown Posse was there was a show on Comedy Central called Tosh.0. In the web redemption segment, there was a kid named Anthony. He was inspired by them. Once they revisited the song where he was previously rapping, they invited ICP. As soon as I saw that specific moment, I was down with the clown. Beforehand, I saw a song of theirs on the box called Halls of Illusion. At the time, I was a baby, so I didn't really know much about them until 2012. And once I heard Hocus Pocus, that's when I really wanted to know more about them. Violent J and myself shared the same birthday. So I took it as a sign that they gotta be cool and I gotta be down with them. ICP changed my life entirely. Two of these groups really inspired me to improve my own lyrics and script writing. Coming up next is 2012 and a lot of things were changing. And also a lot of people at that time believed it was going to be the end of the world. They also believed the same thing when I was two years old and was beginning of my autism spectrum back in 1999 when it was about to be the millennium. And this picture is me and my father at my 16th birthday. Falling. In 2012, I wanted to make a kid show. During this time of this research, I was looking at new and old kid shows to get some inspiration and to entertain myself as well. My favorite shows when I was a baby were Arthur and Teletubbies. Arthur has a lot of classical memes and lessons like Spongebob. Teletubbies was one of a kind. I love how cute all the characters were. The fact that they were outside a lot with bunnies and grass and having fun made the show so much fun to watch. Although my friends saw the show completely different than I did. Especially since my friend's peers were more likely they were either afraid of Teletubbies. Or they just did not like the Teletubbies at all. This is the same picture with a different angle for my ninth grade project. Around that time on paper... I wanted to create a spinoff of South Park called Dog and Bear Show. I advise it of being on the same network with now with a kid friendly name of Comedy Central Kids. Dogs and Bear Show is a story about a dark green bear that is half human and has magical powers. The bear's name is Shante Sagwawa and it's going to be voiced by me. I came up with Shante by a stuffed green animal I had. And it was inspiration of a singer that's named Ashanti too. I moved the A right by the T and the I of Ashanti to make Shante. And fun fact, there's actually friends I've met that also have the same name with either in the same spelling or different spelling. Another character I thought of is a brown pit bull dog named Dog Girl Pup. Also based on a stuffed animal I have, which was uh, a dog puppet. And that will be voiced by Sarah William. And she would have a New York accent. I thought of her voice when I watched SAO. And I was thinking, oh, she would be perfect for this. This show is about Shantae and Dog Girl going on real life adventures from the late 1990s to the early 2000s. While it's in a first person view. Of basically talking to the camera. I created the scripts for this since 2012 all the way up to seven seasons. With new characters along the way that would feature South Park characters, Ed and Eddie, and so many more. And musical groups of old and new would be on this show too. I'm making this statement in that in the year of 2021. This was a show I really wanted to make and finally reach out in 2018. But I don't think I know how to really contact Comedy Central correctly. 
Although they did do a special episode about Timmy creating an Uber. So it was close to what I wanted. Because I remember specifically I wanted a Timmy episode. And on that note, the show Dogs and Bears would be more similar to Time Warp. Because I really have studied everything that was done before and during South Park. The, all the makers of South Park, they're just so talented. And also, this show is going to be like a musical too. Because I've also heard that they're really big fans of that as well. I worked hard and earned my way to high school in the year of 2012. I remember my father saying that it was going to be different because I wouldn't see all my friends again. However, in this high school, I not only see all my friends again, but I also met some new friends I met even along while being in summer school. My high school I attended was called East Ascension High. I had lots of ups and downs when it came to high school, and at the end of the day, it was pretty fun. There was a kid that was bullying me at the time. His name was Brandon. And when his father visited Japan, he brought back some peanuts and other things that I've recognized. I mean, that didn't make us close, but at least like his friends gave me the peanuts that he had because they noticed that I've often recognized a lot of Japanese stuff. And I remember I made a video about mixing those peanuts with the planter peanuts that my father was eating. His reaction was that he loved them both. I would say nowadays when it comes to Brandon, I guess he probably would be a pretty cool guy now. I know, like I said, it's been a while since I've seen him, but I believe he might be a good person today. And speaking of more changes, my barber Vince have changed locations again, and this time he was alone. But he was still kicking knowledge while cutting my hair. And more on that will be explained later. So the picture on the left was my very first new day of high school. With myself, my dad, and Gadavari of me being a freshman. And the picture on the right was us standing near a statue. And I'm guessing my sister took the picture because it's me, my dad, and my mom. Another great part during this time was my 17th birthday in 2014. I received a cake and a stuffed dog. The cake was from the magazine page of An America from Rama One Half, and the stuffed dog was signed by a lot of my friends at the school, but ripped apart because I thought it was a good idea for my dog to play with it. Along with my original Domo plush, and another stuffed bear that I had that was named Katomi that would also be a character for dog and bears. Pauline. Another surprise I got on my 17th birthday was to watch the comedian Christopher Titus of his 2011 stand-up Neverlusion. It changed my life. My first stand-up of comedy I saw was Dave Chappelle. I was around seven years old and my favorites are everyone named of Chris and Eddie and the late and great Bernie Mac and Robin Harris and also like on the note of D.L. Hughley and the whole cast of true televisions of world dumbest are my favorite comedians of all time and even the international comedians I really like as well. Here is a picture of my 17th birthday. One important note I must include for the year of 2012 is that I wrote a letter to President Obama. My letter said that I really wanted him to be re-elected again because I didn't want PBS to go away. I was also thinking that without him, things wouldn't be good. You'll never believe what happened next. I remember when God of Rari wrote a letter to him around four years ago in 2010. She just got a letter back. But when I wrote a letter to President Obama, I got back so much more. I felt seen, heard, and recognized. I did not only receive a letter back about his appreciation, but it included a certificate of Autism Awareness Month, which is my birthday month of April. The envelope had an autographed headshot of him, a picture of his great and late dog Bo, a map of the White House, 
and a memoir of how he felt when he first entered the White House. To this day, it still surprised me how much I got back. And yes, he did. He did get reelected again. I got my wish of 2012. This picture right here is the letter that President Obama has sent to me. And here was my design of how I drew 4WA. And unfortunately, their dog Bo died a few years back. During that time, I remember a lot of the white friends I had did not like him at all. I especially remember two years before that time of getting this letter is where we had a dress down day at school. Some staff there didn't want me to wear the t-shirt and it, it had President Obama on it. And the thing about it is that my grandmother gave me that t-shirt. So I just couldn't figure out why they hated him. They didn't like the last president here, so I guess that's a plus. Anyway, once I got this letter from the White House and a letter from NASA, everyone pretty much backed off in her of harassing me and just, you know, let me be. I want to talk about how I almost had the 4WA of what I was looking for. I pretty much had it for girls that I really wanted and matched the description at the same time. I was trying to make music, but their schedules was always conflict with mine. So in the end, I just had to throw the project all together for now. I just hope that maybe by 2018, things got better. Well, more on that will be later. And as better, well, you'll hear. As life moved on, this was not the only thing. I would have to let go of involving my dreams and aspirations. Like I said, just for now. I even remember making the cardboard characters of 4WA and other stuff. This was indeed funny. I even tried to make 4WA sign with gum under my desk. Yes, I know it's disgusting, but you can't tell me I wasn't being creative with it because no one was cleaning that gum under the desk, so I just thought I should make some use of it. I even made a skit drawing for their own show where they were eating cake, but they had to remake it again. I still have it around and definitely once the first episode of the 4WA show comes out, this will be on there for sure. Between the winter of 2012 and the start of 2013, my mother went back to California once again to get a job there. Once she got employed, my sister and I could move in with her, but unfortunately that didn't really work out. Falling. She got a temporary job and project but could not land a permanent job and more than enough income to live well in California and take care of all of us. This was the time I had to go to summer school again, but thankfully it would be a last time, especially for me of becoming a freshman to a junior. In 2013, I had my second attempt on being on YouTube and my name was called Eddie Hughes the Fourth. Yeah, that's my real name and that also became my real username for the second time. Last time around, I got close to 100 subscribers. This time of 2013, I got close to 400 to 500 subscribers. I was on 300 and lasted one more month in September of 2013 than the last time. I did sort of the same thing that I did last time, but I was making a song mix with an anime OST of IGPX along with Tyler the Creator's song that's called IFHY and it stands for I Fucking Hate You. Or to keep it on the clean side, I guess, is I freaking or fudging hate you and tried to promote myself a little bit more by sharing J-pop and K-pop videos outside of YouTube. Unfortunately, I still got my channel terminated off from YouTube, but honestly, I can consider myself lucky that I never went to court with this stuff. This was even the time I read biography books and loved Diary of the Wimpy Kid too. I also liked the early versions of the movie. They're complete bangers. I did do these tests on these books at the school computers to earn point at the school library to also get better grades as well. 
Everyone has done this too, but I wonder if it's still being done today. As long as those Mustang bucks, I still wonder if that's still around as well. Man, I miss Behind the Music. But I definitely love that Unsung is still here from TV1. One of the fun projects I really liked making at the time, it was called J-Pop Reggae. I would slow the songs down that would be too fast and just call it reggae. Also, I was working on a project missing Etta and Nettie, South Park, and Bobo Bo Bobo Bo, 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 along with commercials. And now, let's move on to the next chapter about my last days of Louisiana, California, and how I got to Full Sail University. And here is pictures of proof of my videos from 2013 of getting that 300, 500 subscribers. And also on that note, getting lots of views at that time as well. One more thing to share with you guys. I know this is like the same thing like last time. Like my brain just does that. And here is another great picture of Mika. And now let's move on to the next chapter. Falling. Chapter 7. 10 favorite T musical groups and artists. T as in Thailand musical groups and artists. From 2014 to present. Here is a picture of another close-up of my 15th birthday cake. I can't really rank these since they're all so good. So I'll just talk about them from a timeline setting. So number one I have is Raptor from 1994 to 2002 and Ann and Anwar from 1999 to 2004. I found them when I was in Photoshop class on YouTube and it was a song called Please Don't Talk that stands for Yat Put Lui from 1996 and in the Buddha calendar year is 2539 from a duo called Raptor and Ann and Anwar Stun from 2000 aka 2543. It's ironic for a Raptor video because I was in Photoshop class because the first part of the video that you see Shows Johnny Anwar on Photoshop just copying himself on a couch to look like there's just two of him. As for Annan, I just really love the cowboy look. The choreography of the dance and the acting he did made me a Team Fairang forever. On that note, there is a Raptor report on my YouTube channel called Edo Numo IV 4th. I created it by reading a translated WordPress article about the history of them while my first year at Full Sail University. My favorite movie from Thailand is Extreme Game. Even though Johnny Anwar was the only one I recognized at the time of the movie, it's the first Thailand movie I've ever seen in 2015, which is 2558. Raptor did a concert that featured the cast of Extreme Game and an artist named Pookie. She is another Thailand artist from their label RS Friends or RS Promotions. And the song from Raptor called China Girl is a cover from another Thailand duo called Two. Along with the song from their third album Day Shock that is translated as Inspiration. It felt like Michael Jackson made that song. It was just that beautiful. This is a picture of my senior year photo in 2014. Number second on this list is Giant from 1998 to 1999. This was a group that was filled of diversity. It made up of three boys from different places. They all sing and talk in Thai. My favorite song from them is Where Are You? It's a nice mix of English and Thai. Another group that is added here is Big Three. Only released one album in 2003. So happy 20th anniversary as I was writing this. And I love all the songs from their first album as well from Big Three. Number third is Boy Scout from 1993 to 1997. My favorite song is called Hot Gullible Gang that translates as Gang Janai. I like all the songs from their first concert. And on that note, Joe from Boy Scout, I miss you and I'll never forget you. 
Number fourth on this list is Lift Oil from 1993 to 2005. They nailed acting extremely of weird and shy. And my favorite songs from them are I'm Not Happy that stands for Romajai and Do You See that stands for Do May Do. Annie and Giant did an awesome remix of that song by the way. Number fifth is Rafi and Nancy from 1996 to 2001. My favorite songs from them are Tell Me Why, UFO, and also Shock the Goof. And those are my favorite songs from Rafi and Nancy. Pauline. This picture is my very first time in a jacuzzi in 2016 at my sister's friend's house. And her younger brother would critique my movies a lot, but like K-pop. I wonder if her younger brother have seen my YouTube channels and likes them now. Number six is Nuke from 1994 to 2001. I don't really necessarily have a favorite song from her, but I do love her style and clothing and her voice is pretty awesome as well. Number seven is J.R. Voy from 1996 to 2001. My favorite songs from the duo are I Love You and only you and I also like the cover of Love Potion number nine and Puppy Love. Number eight is Natalie from 2001 to 2003. My favorite songs from her is Pichon that stands for a big brother. Also I did a video for that song for my sister's 20th birthday because I'm her Pichon. Ax Hanunka that stands for friends visiting and Makle Kankui, that stands for Goosebumps. This is also how I learned about the Buddhist calendar year. The year I will be born is 2540, that equals to 1997. So if you're born on a year that ends with a 7, you are born in a 0 of year. Like my sister was born in 2000, but her year equals to 2543. A memory I'd like to share with you all is that in the year of 2011, I got the highest grade point average, which stands for GPA scores in my school. So, I went on a field trip with my friends. This was the same place I went with my family. It was a bug museum. It is the Abrium Insectarium in New Orleans, Louisiana. This picture on the left is my dad and I at the bug factory and I hope you've enjoyed the early pictures from them too. And the picture on the right is my sister and I dancing before school in 2007. The best part about the field trip is not just the fact that my father was filming it but there was a Japanese scenery that had a lot of butterflies. I let them land on my hand. And I also sat by a house that looks like a Japanese house. I'm glad my mom was on that field trip because she loves butterflies, Hello Kitties, and sloths. This picture, if you think about it, it almost looks like I'm in Japan. But it's a butterfly room of the Bug Museum with real fish, surprisingly. Although, if I were to have grown up in Japan, I would have grown up in Osaka. And on that note, I would have been born in Tokyo and my sister would have been born in Okinawa and we would have been raised together in Osaka. And on that note, if we were living in any other country growing up, we definitely would have chose the southern side of that country. Pauline. Another favorite moment that I want to add from 2011 is my birthday. I got the Meanie Money photo book that was 10 years ago at the time, along with the magic that featured Hello Project. I brought that book everywhere that I wanted to read, even school. This picture is me at the theaters on my 14th birthday, and my sister now wears my Domo shirt since I've outgrown it. Unfortunately, when the tsunami happened in Japan in that same year, I pretty much dressed up as Tomi Shinohara while putting just lots of pictures on my school uniform, shirts, and pants about Japan. However, I almost got sent home 
because I wasn't following school policy and I was out of uniform, which is ironic because I was still wearing my school uniform. I was just putting some pictures on my pants and shirt. Like, I was still in uniform. Also, I created the construction paper of the characters of South Park from the Season 6 theme song. At this time in 2010, my parents were talking about getting a divorce. At that time, they weren't happy anymore. They told us, and since Gavari and I cried our eyes out, they realized they could not leave each other or split up the family yet. After the entire phase, they decided it was more beneficial to keep our family together. Me and my little sister were thinking everything was okay and there wasn't a reason for them to get divorced. We had a lot of our friends whose parents were divorced and some who didn't even know their fathers. There was a lot of things changing in 2013 to 2015 and here are some examples. But first, here's some of the stuff I wore from that school uniform while being held by my best friend Maddie which she'll be talked about later. So, the first change of 2015 was giving Mika back to her family. The reason was because I was leaving in the near future and I would be too far to take care of her. And I was right. Although, I really did have lots of fun memories taking care of her, petting her, playing with her, feeding her, and watching her eat. And us watching my movies together like my father and mom does. And yes, my sister watches my movies too. When the day came around to give her back to her original owners, I didn't ride with Mika back to her home since it would make me sadder than I already was. My mom and sister went. They cried leaving Mika. Mika recognized her original owners and was very happy to see them. This was pretty much the last year that I made movies on a computer that had the mix of South Park and Etta and Eddie, and it was for the second morning Musume movie called Pinch Runner. It was so much fun to make and watch it well for myself as well. You may have noticed when you started reading my book is that I dedicated this book to my Auntie Lydia among others that have known especially Eddie Hughes the first and that will be talked about in the next page. This picture is the last year of Mika with us and this is just Mika just chilling on the couch with my mom. Pauline. The reason I gave this tribute to her in my first book because in the year before 2015 she passed away from ovarian cancer. She is my mother's only sister. The part that made it so unbelievable was she looked like she was getting better and she really didn't look sick. During the time she was battling cancer, we all went to go see her in my birth state, Atlanta, Georgia, where she lives. We had such a great time too. I shared her the ideas I have for dog and bears and many other ideas that I came up with the years beforehand. She really liked the ideas that I had for the near future. Her son, Iman, that has his own clothing style, made the t-shirt that says ATL Classic that I still wear proudly to this day, and I call it the podcast shirt. This picture is my father and I in the birth town in 2004. To this day, it's just crazy that she's gone. I remember 10 years beforehand at that time, we were trying to live in Atlanta so my mom could get a good job and that paid well too. It was also so I could have a better life, especially for my little sister too. But my dad came to visit. Really, he just came to exchange cars with my mom. Also, during that time, when I was in the first grade of that year, I was in that school for only two to three days, so I don't really have any memories of it at all. But the only one memory that I have is, is that I got sick on the third day of the first grade, so I had to go home. The reason how I got sick 
is because the strawberry milk had red dye. So that's why I not only threw up, but I got sent home. I didn't even know I was really going to school at that time. I just thought it was an extended vacation for me and Godavari just to stay in Atlanta for the summer. Believe it or not, that is actually how I felt the first grade in Louisiana. And that teacher was going to send the IRS after us. That was wild. I think it was because my mom, dad, and all of us went out to spend time together with my mother and my auntie Lydia got into a verbal fight. But the happiest thing I have ever seen is that they made up and pieced it together 10 years afterwards. I got to see my auntie Lydia not in pain but just happy. She was wishing my mother, father, Gavari, and myself and everybody else in the family the best of luck. Oh boy, we sure were going to need it. I was happy that I got to see what she looked like and that she saw me too. This was one of the biggest changes in that year. And this picture is my Auntie Lydia. My other favorite moments during that time was getting to see Galaxy Angels first season, the magazine, and the toys that were sent to me at that time for 2014 winter, aka Christmas. They were so much fun to have, and I also received the Battle Athletes book too. One of the biggest things that happened before 2016 was the first time I finally got to see an Odd Future concert. It was Earl Sweatshirt. At first, I couldn't really get in the concert, even though I was 18 at the time, but it was because I didn't have ID. So my father had to go to the concert with me for supervision. I got to also take pictures with Narkel Smith. He is a skater and a rapper from Illegal Civ. I wore my Ed and Eddie shirt because I didn't know if it was safe to wear an Odd Future donut chain at the t-shirt I got earlier around that time. Because there have been rumors that they say they broke up. And this picture is me and Narkel at the Earl Sweatshirt concert. And he was really a nice person. I hope he's reading this just to let him know thanks for everything you've done. And especially legalized Civ forever. Falling. When my mother and sister went to Uncle Jahide aka Conway Phillip Jr. wife Robin Page funeral in California. This gave my mother another crack at finding a job and living in California where she was raised once again. My mom had a little better luck and was able to stay for 11 months this time around thanks to Bridget Louie, one of my mom's best friends who said we could live with her and her family and others that were supported in other ways. My sister enrolled in the school there and went to Menlo Atherton High School. That time around, I went to another concert. This time, it was Sid the Kid from the internet. I had identification this time around, which is ID, and my very first cell phone. The best part about this concert is that I got to shake Sid's hand three times, and there was another group called Moonchild. It was an indie band, not a ja the Japanese band. There's also a video that shows me in the front row. Man, it was really a fun night. I was also recorded for the Moonchild Tour Diary for their YouTube channel. While my mom and sister were doing their best to permanently live in California, I spent a lot of time with my father more than I ever done before. When it came to homework from my mother, I actually did love the experience, even though she would often yell at me to concentrate. I didn't really take it as such an offense. I was just thinking that she just wanted what was best for me like always. And this picture is the Moonchild Tour Diaries, and you see a picture of me in the crowd. I've tried to have my dad work with me on my homework, but he was just a bit too harsh to me. I experienced this treatment when I was in the second grade, and I was doing my best to spell the words for the spelling bee test, and he was yelling at me for being impatient for real. Honestly, we were both tired that night. It was just 
frustrating for both of us as well. After the experience, my mom said it was best for her to continue helping me with my homework. But after those moments, I got to open more with my father on how I still felt to this very day. This picture is me at the school that was having a paint festival before and the results will be coming very soon. In 2015, me and my father spent more time with each other, like I said, more than ever before. Tanami was back three years prior. The last thing I can remember doing at my school before I moved to California was being in a play. I played Superman. I hit the Quan because it was the only way to convince my daughter and wife in that script that I was allergic to kryptonite and it wasn't a joke. I also got a poster type sign read of week one through fourth in Chinese. The person that made the poster knew I liked Asian culture, so she just gave it to me. I also played a scary hand in a haunted house. For that same class, I had to go to Matthew's house and wait for my dad because I didn't have the keys or my phone. When my dad came to pick me up, we went to an Asian restaurant to celebrate. And this picture is the aftermath of the paint party. Pauline. My father and I saw Straight out of Compton together. I was a little surprised on how many songs my dad knew, but then again, this was a group from my father's generation, not mine. While hanging out with my dad, I went to work with him one day. He still works at Baton Rouge Southern University since 2002 in the Shea collection of the John B. Cad Library. My dad has three college degrees, bachelor's and master in African American history, and the other one is the Library of Science. I was on the Southern campus also to be a spokesperson in a class that my mother was lecturing to future special education teachers. The lecture was about helping students with disability. At the end of her lecture, I spoke and entertained questions from the class. It was a fun experience. I liked all the questions the teachers asked about me and my autism and even about my life. On that same day, I did a mellow hype I am on a window movie maker. Uh, like in my dad's work and that was like so much fun to make this picture is me and my mom teaching the future teachers about autism and I hope they're all doing well today in school I met some of the coolest people even though we had difficulties over time to shout but shout out to them of Donnie Lacombe and his crew the two Davids and they both actually have autism like me Clinton, that was born on April 29th, but the same year as Galvari, which is 2000. And as for my crush, Lovely, even though I was really seeing the signs that we were not close anymore than we once were, I could tell that she also wasn't excited to see me anymore as well. I saw her picture on one of my classmates' phone as his wallpaper. It didn't really hurt me that bad because I saw it coming. But I do wish her the best of luck and all my teachers and friends who never forgotten about me in Louisiana and also never gave up on my on that same note as well. This picture here was my best friend of the second David on my 15th birthday. I remember he and Godvar's friend were the only one that could make it. But I do remember all the fun times that I had at Donnie and Billy and Bobby's pool parties as well. Also thanks to the second David for the first season of Two and a Half Men DVD. This was probably one of my last days that I would see my barber Vince. The knowledge he dropped about working with your best friends and having his son to be an honest weatherman and so many other similar messages to that. I always just love his stories and his life. I hope he's reading this, but I also can't wait for him to release his own book soon. I do remember from previous visit that he would want to release his own book about his life being a barber. 
I can't wait for that to come out soon. From this point, I have to say goodbye to Louisiana and hello Menlo Park, California. This is a picture of me and my barber Vince in 2021. Pauline. Chapter 8 California and Florida This picture is a pink plush domo that my best friend Hunter gave to me in 2013. He won it at a crane machine and now it's being shown at a Japanese festival in Florida of 2018. And yep, I still keep it to this very day. I spent my last day in Louisiana getting everyone's phone number. It was the first time in 2015 that I ever had a phone. It was a black mini android. I would just text my friends and play this app game called Super Penguins. And yep, I still have that game on my phone. I was so happy in 2018 when I found that game again, along with Shanghai Riders too. Clinton and I were watching Finding Nemo on the school's laptop that they gave to me. Fun fact, my family and I saw Finding Nemo in theaters along with Cat in the Hat and Elf all in the same year of 2003. And I was 6 years old and my sis was 3 years old. I'm very surprised they let me not only keep the laptop but kept giving them to me too. And I'd done some stuff on accident which was at firewall on accident to the first laptop during my freshman year. I downloaded so much stuff until it crashed on my sophomore year. Third laptop for my junior year was I was just trying to watch it at an angle and I thought the way I positioned it was a good angle to really watch my programs and stuff just fell on the floor. And I was even trying to glue it with super glue with Clinton, but that didn't work. But I got a new one during that time. So that's what that was. And the last one, I accidentally turned it in without knowing I can get another one for the senior year the first part of the senior year but don't worry they gave it back and i'm honestly happy they were really patient with me with these laptops and also i just want to say i'm very sorry for these things as well this is a picture that i believe i'm in mcdonald's in 2016 i can't tell if i'm in california or louisiana I often fill up my room with printed posters of Asian artists along with my favorite cartoon and anime characters too. I've also got a lot of flash drives because over time whenever I made movies since I didn't delete my stuff the computer would crash and thankfully my movies would be on a flash drive or on that burned disc. One of my most prized ones that were my favorite was a gray mini flash drive. That's where I kept all my lyrics and scripts. Unfortunately, I don't have that one anymore because during my 20th birthday, that's when it got corrupted. And also, this is where it had the beginning draft of this book that I had to rewrite years later. And on that note, I also had a flash drive bag that was my old pen and pencil case and unfortunately I don't have that one anymore either. These pictures are the examples of my room from 2013 to 2021 and here's my flash drive and pencil case badge from 2018 and I had that since 2007 until 11 years later. My mother decided to take me to her hometown along with my sister's birthplace. She saw the movie Straight Outta Compton and there was a scene that was also based on a real life story of Dr. Dre's little brother wanting him to come on tour with them and Dre said once you graduate I'll take you. Unfortunately when Dre's younger brother got into a fight again it would be his last. That scene in the movie is what convinced my mother to bring me to California in 2016 for my final senior year. And when I asked, could I come and stay with her and my sister? And that's how that happened. Pauline. 
even though my mom and my sister were living with Bridget and her family, instead of waiting until my graduation, my mom said it would be alright if I can go to California. Also, Louisiana was changing its laws if you are labeled with special education. For a student, they cannot get a regular diploma, but a certificate. I have painstakingly attended all those classes the best way I can, like those without autism. Plus, I did therapy speech, physical, and had to earn a regular high school diploma just like everyone else. And that's what made my mother furious. So that's how I was sent off to California for my final senior year. When I was trying to transfer schools from EA to MA, the administration did not want to sign my transfer papers. They almost didn't want me to leave. But not only did I have to move forward to actually get a high school diploma, I needed to get into a university, especially since both of my parents have college degrees. Thanks to HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities, Grambling State University, Southern University, Clark Atlanta University, and Howard University for inspiring all of us. No matter if we do or don't have special disabilities to be at your school. This is a picture of me and my sister in the Easter of 2004. I was wearing my Spider-Man t-shirt and on the back of the picture in 2014, I wrote on a note that I couldn't make it to school because of my bladder problem and I had diarrhea. My mother and sister came on the winter Christmas break of 2015 and got me so I could move in with them. And I went on the plane to California Menlo Park. I found a recent mag magazine on the plane and I was allowed to keep it. And once we got there, it was raining. Also on that note, we stayed at, once again, my mom's friend's house that's named Miss Bridget with her son and the father as well. When we woke up, it was a brand new day. While it being a brand new school too called Menlo Afterton. And like usual, I got lost. We also used Mrs. Bridget's car too. I'll explain why this is important later. It was raining again just like last night. It was a perfect move because this is the second time I've been inside a big school. But it wouldn't be the last. My classes are for my final senior semester was reading weightlifting, economics, poetry, and Final Cut Pro class. They were all really so much fun. And as I was writing this in the winter of 2021, even once I got lost, it was not too bad, especially since we didn't have to wear uniforms anymore as well. Let me explain. But before we get to that, here is a picture of me at Mrs. Bridget's house in the California of 2016. I remember that her son gave me a Beyonce pin from her concert. Thank you, because I still have it. In my elementary and middle school uniforms, we had blue shirts with khakis, but you can also wear any jacket as long as it says Central, Middle, or Elementary. As of East Ascension goes, we wore blue, yellow, and white shirt with also khaki. With the same result with the jacket, but also you could just wear any blue, yellow, white shirts too. So as long as it's had those colors, you could just wear that as well. In Menlo, we could wear any type of clothes we like. Anytime I'm now thinking about the khaki dance from the rich kids, I miss that group. They had such fire songs, not only just that, but also my school bus is my limo my bike, and many other classical songs from these kids here. But the one thing that these schools had in common was the name tag scan to get breakfast and lunch. When Gavari and I came home, we would have to walk a few blocks away from where we live. There were a lot of restrictions in that house, but now that I look back on it, we were living in someone else's house, so it made sense. In this picture, I believe I'm in an art gallery and this was right after my 19th birthday on that same year of 2016. 
Helene. For my reading class, we would read and explain stories such as The Five People You Meet in Heaven and The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. This would be a movie about an upcoming British black boy. I know originally it wasn't like that, but things have changed. And also, to reiterate, I'm not doing it because this is what everybody's doing today. It's just something I just thought would be creative to not even change the story as well. What makes this book interesting, it is talking about an autistic teen that is trying to solve mysteries like Sherlock Holmes about... Who in the neighborhood killed the dog in the nighttime? And so I can really tell why this book was really related to me. Whoever is the main character of color, you know what I'm saying? Speaking of books, Relish My Life in the Kitchen. This was one of my favorite books of all time. Not just because it reminded me of food, but it also talks about recipes and international food. And the chef tale at the same time reminded me of chowder and ratatouille at the same time. I also thought about making this movie as well with Laura Bailey voice because they really do sound similar to each other. The author who wrote Relish My Life in the Kitchen and Laura Bailey. I got that book from the Central Library and I really wanted to keep it so badly because it reminded me of the biography books that I read from that school from the library. I read them for extra points so I can get a higher grade any chance I got. Especially the book really reminds me of anime and animation put together. Especially when you read that said book. It has lots of animation pictures inside that pretty much inspired me to make this book here. Along with other books I read that are very close and similar to this as well. I believe once I die, the five people I would believe I would meet in heaven would be my Auntie Lydia, Eddie the First, along with his wife, my great-great-grandpa who named his child Eddie, and also his wife as well. This picture is an indication that coding is fun. In weightlifting class, it was almost like PE, but we didn't do a lot of weightlifting. It was just a regular gym class. I was weighing stuff almost a little too much bigger than my body weight can take, but it did pay off. Also, this would be the last time I would use a locker combination. Yes, we had that for gym clothes. At first, I didn't like it, but over time, I got not only used to the combination, but I started to ace it, and it also reminded me of a rotary phone. Back when my parents were in school, they used locker combinations for everything. And I wonder nowadays if any school districts still even use lockers at all, or even locker combinations, or do they just carry everything in their backpacks like I did when I was growing up, you know? The funniest moments I can remember was, but I'm not sure if this was on the same day, we were playing basketball. When I made the hoop, my glasses fell off and then the basketball crashed my glasses. Luckily, I had a spare one in my locker room. And then when we were playing soccer, aka football, I saw something was about to come down on me. So I moved backwards and it was bird poop and it landed on top of my shoe. But thankfully, there was nice wet cut grass for my shoes to be wiped on and remove the bird poop. This picture was from the 4th of July in 2016 and this is where we saw a dead alligator. More will be explained about that later. A gift I gave to my sister's 16th birthday is an Azumanga Dio tribute song as my own videos. I just put them together for her birthday. And she really did like them. For economics, we learned about money and how to spend it. Ironically, from that time, we were watching a kid's show called Cashville Kids that was teaching the same thing. And that class was in Louisiana. And we were also teaching about politics as well. In Final Cut Pro class, this was the first time I've ever been on a green screen. So I acted like I was lost in a disturbed island. And what I put on the green screen for the editing background is a restaurant, space, and these edited rocks that have scary teeth. And then I just explode. 
Pretty cool, huh? Falling. The other project we were working on was how to move a logo. Mine was called Eddie Productions, which would be my own company for music, television, and etc. But I might change it to Everything Productions in the near future. With the backwards fireworks would go in the background. With a bit of an eerie tone of the background sound. Like the late 90's Avix logo at the end of their commercials. In last of 2020 I remastered it in Premiere Pro. I recently just want to change it to Everything Production. So that's something you may see for my future projects. The first time I made the Eddie Production logo stuff was in 2013 with just my voice singing in acapella the title of the thing and it went like Eddie Productions on a photo I made on AVS Video Editor. That song commercial I made it for was for Lovely called I'm In Love With You and Supposedly that was going to be the thing I was going to put for the first album if I made one. But I am scrapping that for sure. So the picture on the left is what I made back in 2016. And then the one on the right is the updated version in 2020. Another thing I want to share with you is my fast ad logo. That was pretty easy to make. And I made it a year before I worked on the Eddie Production logo stuff. It was a yellow background with a brown spray paint for paint of my glasses and smile. And then I put Fast Ed shown here with green and red words. And I made that on MS Paint. And even thanks to Canva, I could definitely update it and make so many other cool features as well. Yep, this picture is the logo since 2015 and I can't wait to just see the changes it could be every now and then. I can't wait to see what everyone else can create from it as well. The two other projects I was working on that class was my own documentary for my poetry class and a movie called The Gift and also half of my Vine videos were made in that time during as well. These stories will be explained a little bit later. When it came to my poetry class, the teacher that I can remember, her name was Miss Angelone. She wanted us to share all the creativity whenever we need it. I remember most of the poetry homework doing it on the computer and learning about juxtaposition. And that means something happy or something sad happening in the opposite direction. We even did a project for Beyonce's Lemonade, the movie. Yeah, very advanced of poetry, I tell you that much. And this picture is me with the filming equipment for the GIF. Falling. Even though I have explained the best moments of California, now I gotta talk about four of the worst moments of California. Being pulled over by a cop and that was the third time in one month. And by the way, I'm not the one driving. Uh, my mom's driving. I don't really have a license at that time. He was asking us, why are we here? Or it's a shame that you guys got to go to school. So badly I wanted to stay in school even more. And I remember my mom went off. And probably for a good reason too. It was because the taillight was supposedly out. The light was not even out. My mom was borrowing the car. It wasn't even my mother's car. From that moment, me and Gavari just walked to school. Which is ironic because the second thing that happened is the car crash. When that day happened, it was the same day that the artist formerly known as Prince passed away on April the 21st, 2016. And that's my birthday month. I was in weightlifting class when I heard on the radio that he died. On my way to class, I saw my mother's text message that said I just got in a car wreck. I almost cried on the way to my economics class, but the good news is that I saw the rest of the text and it said, but I'm okay, so please don't worry about it. How it happened was that there was a couple walking on a sidewalk. My mother was turning into the entrance driveway where she worked 
and so when she saw them, my mom stopped. Another car crash happened to her from the back. The person was named Rebecca, was afraid to get out of the car, but my mother actually got out of her car, excuse me, Miss Bridget's car, to check on her. They both hugged each other because they both were still alive. Even though at first she was afraid that my mother was going to fight her, my mother couldn't really go to work after the injuries and plus having no car as well. This picture is my speech at my mother's church when she was growing up. I actually thought I was bombing through the graduation speech, but it turns out I was getting a standing ovation and I didn't even know it. No Ricky Rose. Fun fact, the driver that hit my mother, I checked her ID out of curiosity and I saw that she had the same birthday as me. She was 27 years old before she turned 28 that year and I was turning 19 years old. My mother said that I was a guardian angel for looking after her, to which I replied or maybe thought of saying it, you know, just a thought. It's like, if I was a guardian angel, first off, I wouldn't let Prince die. And secondly, I wouldn't let the car that my mom had borrowed get smashed. But I knew she was saying that because she is here as of 2016 and she is still here today as of 2023 and 2024 just in case anybody was worried. On that note, I remember my mother saying Prince wishes he was me right now. Even though my brain was saying too soon, my mother was right. What was even more saddening for me was he died the same way that Michael Jackson died and they were both the same age as well. Well, not the same age when they passed away, but they were both born in the same year. But my favorite songs from Prince were Raspberry Beret, Diamonds and Pearl, Adore, Party Man for the 1989 Batman soundtrack, Delirious, and When Doves Cry. I miss you, buddy. Heaven is now your kingdom. And also, I hope you're getting along well with Michael as well. And many others, too. Falling. The third worst thing that happened in California was, on my sister's 16th birthday, we rented the house to party. All of the friends I and Gavari has met, they came to the party. We had so much fun with the DJ, but while we were all dancing, someone had to call the cops on us. And we were just getting the party started. And this is a picture of me of my graduation photo of May of 2016. Yeah, like I was saying before, my friends and God of Artists friends came to the party. We were having so much fun. We were just dancing, just nothing too serious or anything like that. But like I said, the cops were called on us. And not only the guests had to leave, but we had to leave the rented house and go home, staying back at Bridget's house. We weren't even doing anything wrong, and my sister lost her phone. The cops said the neighbor called and reported that she didn't feel safe, so that's why we had to not only stop the party, but go home. Not too long after that, the worst moment was... A few days or probably just a few weeks later, I lost my first phone. We were on the bus and before I even knew it, my phone dropped from my pants pocket. When I figured out what happened, it was already too late to get it back since the bus drove away. The only highlight we got from that is that we met a homeless man that was showing us around the city of California. After that, we just had to go home. Now going back to the good stuff about my time in Cali, the first good thing about going to California is that at that point I got myself a brand new phone, which was the iPhone 6S. From that point, Gavari showed me two social medias that would change my life. The first one was Twitter and the second one was Vine. And by the way, the iPhone 6S, I still have it to this very day, but only for games of course. This photo was my very first tweet for me thanking 100 people for following me. I got on there since May of that year and my first tweet was a picture of a rainbow and I tweeted rainbow power. 
I was very familiar with Vine, but I haven't posted anything. And I had a little bit of ideas in mind before I moved to California of what type of vines to make. So my username on Vine is called Edo2 because someone else already had their name as Edo. My other favorite vines that I made from this time before it was deleted, which was really ironic because it was the same year of 2016, was the radio DJ on a budget, which is me. And I had a Galaxy Angel DVD of the first season. And I said, you're the winner because this is all I can afford while yelling. And the other one is where the lights were flickering on and off. I was doing that effect. And my little sister was saying, you forgot to pay the bill. The next ones I made over time, it was in Louisiana. But from the beginning, I made my first Vine stuff in California. And... Like I said, I'll do be doing my best to explain more of those stories coming forward. This picture, I remember there was a cultural dance festival, if I remember correctly. And this is me with the laptop that M.A. gave to me. And there's my little sister. So I was dancing and eating. Also, this was added for my 19th birthday Vine video as well. Speaking of which... For my 19th birthday, I made a vine of love psychedelical song that is literally called Happy Birthday. I believe on that day, the friends I made and the teachers just gave me gifts. I don't remember what they were, but they gave them to me. Speaking of friends from Louisiana, I unfortunately didn't write all their numbers down, but most of my friends back in Louisiana, I did since I lost my first phone. But if any of my classmates from Louisiana is reading this, I just want to let y'all know I didn't forget you guys from Central Elementary, Middle, and East Ascension. Go Spartans and Mustangs! And also, most of the friends I've lost, I gained them back from Facebook. And also, like I said, if you guys can see or read this, I didn't forget you guys at all. And I still got love for all of you. And the love of my friends in Cali too. Pauline. This picture is my grandpa, my mom's father, my sister, and myself. I'm wearing a black khaki pants from EA and Central School. Another thing to add for my 19th birthday is that I went to see Tyler the Creator in Santa Cruz. This was the era where he released Cherry Bomb. Unfortunately, this wasn't really every fan's favorite, but this was really my favorite album for sure. My favorite songs of all time from that album was Find Your Wings, Def Camp, Two Seater, Buffalo, and etc. In this concert, I have an ID so my father didn't have to go in this time, and the special guest for the event was ASAP Rocky. One of the best moments for me is when Jasper the Dolphin and Taco Bennett were just looking and pointing at me. I almost lost my wallet the night because I was trying to give the homeless person some change. But thankfully we called back the Uber and while it was just there in the car. But I still had a good time. And I like that my dad came to visit before we leave him during the summer. This picture is my father and I in the line for the Tyler concert for my 19th birthday. During the Chinese New Year, my little sister and I went to Chinatown to walk around the crowd in San Francisco. We ate at a nice restaurant and went into a shop where I took a photo with this plushie called Rakuma. That was my ID profile for Vine. On that note, before Vine was deleted, I had 100 people following me, and we made it home in time, just like Cinderella at night. One of the projects in further detail I worked on for the Final Cut Pro class is my own documentary. This assignment was for my poetry class, and I call it The Things I Carried. In this video, my mother was interviewing me with a plastic foam microphone, but it glowed in the dark and it was a pretty cool toy that my sister got at a night race. We were filming each other on my iPhone and I was talking about my inspiration of life 
which was the Korean artist known as Boa, Tunkun, the producer of Hello Project, and many more, Ed and Eddie, and the Dog and Bears Project that I want to work for Comedy Central for, and of course, the teacher herself, Miss Angelo. This picture was from my graduation from 2016 yet again, and my friend from gym class really went all out with his design, and it was beautiful. My favorite thing I've added for the project of my own documentary was the Lion's Blanket song called Summer Night Magic. On Twitter, they really loved that I was a big fan of them. And I also edit this on the Window Movie Maker too. And I really hope Linus Blanket is doing well today as well. And hope they didn't forget about me. When everybody was reaching to it, everyone started to laugh and built inspiration from it. Especially since we all had to write notes about what we really liked about our project film. Interesting enough, while making this book, I might make another documentary video, not just about this book, but also my life itself. It might be like a movie, I'm not really sure, but definitely I would like to make another project like I made before. And also, while I am typing or writing this, there will be an audio version of this book soon, which is probably means you can hear my voice and it's Probably being made right now as you're hearing. Breaking the fourth wall yet again. Pauline. This is another picture of my graduation in California. That flower was sold in from my mom. Since yesterday I found that it wasn't being used. The school says I could use it. And yes I'll be reading these parts too. This right here was my second to last film that I made in California. The last one, which was the documentary, was the actual last one. But the reason it's in a specific order is because there is a very important note about my popularity as well part of the story. The movie was called The Gift. My little sister, Gadavari, plays as Sam, and I play as Sam's older brother, ironically. That's literally my character name, Sam's older brother. Like, that's it. In this movie, my little sister has been getting notes from an unknown person, and that's where me and her go to investigate, I guess. But as we were kidnapped, we escaped, but my character dies by a rock being launched on my head. Ironically, I was wearing the Black Student Union t-shirt, so that's something you could wrap your head around. But my sister not only lives... But she kills the person that not only was sending her these lovely messages, but kidnapped us. And like I said, killed me. Killed her older brother. Yeah. The ones that were working on the edited version was not just myself, but also Mata Vatavi from India and Alexandria Petrova from Russia. This picture was the shirt I was wearing in that film, by the way. I was in Fresno for the BSU conference. It felt like we were going on tour. And I believe I'm watching YouTube on my second phone. The iPhone that is. Filming this movie was really fun. We filmed at Bridget House. Menlo, the studio inside the Final Cut Pro class. And the background garden of the gym. This was one of the vines I put where one of Alex's friends were running for ice cream. And that's why I added Eddie Murphy's ice cream scream from his stand-up called Delirious. One of the hardest parts to film was me trying to lay on the ground. Not only that, but falling, I had to fall down very properly while also not smiling. But it was very hard for me to lay on the ground because someone had to trip over my leg which was the kidnapper lover named Yafi Bajaris Gomez. When we were being wrapped in duct tape that was a pretty hard scene for me because there was hair growing on my legs and my mouth aka peach fuzz. This picture is me with BSU. Believe it or not, this was my first Instagram profile picture in 2019 to 2020. Another piece felt I'm putting in is Ricardo Flores, 
who knocked me out when I tried to fight him, but also Aaliyah Richardson. She was the person who really had the direct idea for this, but it felt like a team effort too. There was a music video we did for class where we danced. I changed into a skitty guy and twerked. I'm not proud of it, but I am admitting it to the public. But when the trailer came out for the student film festival, my little sister showed me the trailer because I had more screen time in that trailer. And here's the kicker. My sister was in another movie where she played as a teacher that loved the Playboy director, Hugh Hefner, yet I was in the trailer more than she was. Just like Louisiana, a lot of people knew about me and wanted to be friends with me. But in California, this pretty much skyrocketed because everybody from the teachers and the students knew who I was, which led me back to the Black Student Union Club. And it was really a fun club too, which will be talked about in the next page. Falling. This is a picture of me and Gavari at the film festival, and also the Obama shirt that my grandma gave me that I talked about earlier. Meeting new friends, we went to Fresno for a convention, the Facebook building, where I spoke Japanese to one of the dudes that also spoke Japanese too. But there was one little problem. But it's not about the crew that I was with. They were okay with me. It was the point at this convention in Fresno. The cops wanted us to be more like Chris Rock's humor. And then there was a guy that was saying that the Japanese didn't really help us at all. And I really wanted to say to him from that moment. It's like, but you know, the Asians really did give us weapons to defend ourselves during the Black Panther movement, but for some reason I couldn't get it out of my mouth, so I just kept silence. Also there was two people dressed up in anime costume characters and I really wanted to take a picture with them, but we were leaving at the same time. But other than that, I really had a good time at that convention, of course the Black Student Union Club itself. Thanks Mrs. Sharenda. I hope you're doing well too. The two little things to add before I graduate from California of Menlo Atherton is me, my little sister, Alex, and another friend went to a quinceanera. It was lots of music playing. First time I've ever heard Selena. I was dancing along with eating and suddenly a dude dressed up as a robot and was dancing in front of us. And that really made it one of the best parties I've ever seen in my whole life. This picture was the guy I was speaking Japanese to. And also a year later in 2017 is where I made my own Facebook account. Like I was saying before, that was really a fun quinceanera. And especially the dude coming out as a robot. And I really had a good time of dancing, eating, and just... Being around others as well. One random morning, my eyes kept feeling like there was water inside. Like I was like I couldn't stop crying. But once I got to school, I realized I had pink eye and I was sent home immediately. During that moment, we went to the doctors and Frank Sinatra's son died. And I brought my laptop with me too from school. But thankfully, I didn't really miss much. And I still made it in time not only to just pass my classes, but graduate from high school in general. This is a picture of Alex, Gadavari, me, and Mata. She's Indian and Spanish. And my mother took the picture as well. Falling. On a post-graduation note, we went to the church that my mother used to go to. I made a speech about my life and how I have improved of not only for my autism, but also how much I have grown as a human being while talking about accomplishments and singing the song at the same time. Keep in mind, I just recently saw the video of what song I was singing and I have no idea what I was singing. I was just, I was just going on the fly. And like I said before, I literally thought I was bombing because I was looking at the notes, but 
I was getting a standing ovation, surprisingly. Another thing I did not know until my mother told me at the moment was that the school that I was graduating from was the same school that she wanted to graduate from, which was Menlo Afterton. While my sister was really worried about her after the crash, by the way, my sister is really great at dressing up for anything, especially my mother helping out with the designs too. I wonder how did my mother not become a fashion designer, but maybe it'll happen in the near future of the stuff I create in the near future. This is a picture of me and my mother at the doctor. Unfortunately, she got sick with pink eye too. Another post-graduation note is we went to see my Uncle Jihad. He studied Muslim religion since 1991 while ignoring everything around him just like I did when I studied Asian entertainment. When we went to his house, it was like a mansion. Funny enough, it was an apartment complex. We talked about the memories about myself, my little sister, my mom, and of course himself. We had a lot of fun with each other. The moment when I was swimming in a cold pool, it wasn't summer but I really wanted to swim badly, and his jacket, jeans, and shirt were also awesome too. So thanks Uncle Jahai for your swag of fashion. Here's a picture of me, my sister, and a BSU crew. And one of my friends, Blake, is in the front kneeling. I hope he's doing well, and I really have big plans for him once we meet each other again. On that note, when my sister made the school news video, which that was the announcement to start the day, I was in it too. Originally, I was running late, but somehow when I was rapping a little bit, it made my excuse count. I just got to school on that same moment as well so this was still probably like my first or second week of starting MA at that time also I was so unaware that like a camera was filming us during class but we were just you know we were just there and also on that note I remember I got an announcement to come to the front office for them to me of the final cut of me being on the news it, was, it just took a few weeks, and I remember this was, like, by the time I graduated where I finally got to see the episode where I was in it. And it was it's also available on YouTube, too, but like I said, it was all the way back in 2016. And if I also remember correctly, they still have it around. At EA, we had to do the Pledge of Allegiance to start the day, and I often wonder, I wonder what other schools do. Fun fact is, when it was raining, someone let Gadavari be under her umbrella because she was in the school news. And I remember Gadavari, she said, but what if I wasn't? Would she not let me be under her umbrella? We went to the In-N-Out restaurant together, meaning me and Uncle Jahai, we went there together. The reason why we did that is because my classmates kept recommending me that I should go to that restaurant. And so when I got there, I got the chicken burger, fries, along with the shake. They were honestly mad that I didn't try the burger. I also remember their costumes looked like they were from the 50s and 70s. And this picture is Ms. Sharenda, Gadavari, and me for our last day of school. And like I said, this was my graduation too. Falling. On the day of the graduation, my father came back. One of the ideas I had was for my hat to have a plastic flower to be stitched on it. I found the plastic flower on the ground as well. And Mr. John GM Bruno, my final cut pro teacher, wanted to be the one that handed me my degree. And it happened. He also was the first one to show me VR for the first time too when it was at that time, believe it or not, it was a brand new thing. On that note, it was a really fun event that we all took that night where we went to a barn and church to take pictures. Everyone wanted to sign my yearbook and the best present I got from Mrs. Bridget's son named Jonathan was a Beyonce concert pen. And that's the end of the journey of California. And yes, he was at my sister's sweet 16th birthday party too. 
Now we're going to be going back to the journey to Louisiana again. And this picture is my mother at my high school graduation. When we got to California, we flew there on plane, meaning me, my mom, and my sister. But we drove back to Louisiana for me, my dad, and my sister. My mom was still at California at the time, just to hold things up for now. My favorite moment once we made it to Arizona, my father said it was beautiful and stuff like that. But at the same moment, I said, isn't this the last state that celebrated Martin Luther King Day? And then my father quickly said, excuse my language, fuck this place, let's get out of here. <laughs> we were staying in different places in the states before we got home, like different hotels and stuff like that. Once we got home, and while I was home, I was making a little bit more random Vine videos. And also the video mix of Mike G featuring Earl Sweatshirt Stick Up and Odd Future Swag Me Out, featuring my favorite cartoons and anime to put these worlds together. One of the most exciting parts is when I was telling all the members of Odd Future happy birthday, and Mike G not only just replied, but liked my post. It was so beautiful. And I hope he's doing well today. As well as many of the other members of Odd Future too. Also on my way home. Eddie Juan had his own cooking show. And yes I did see and love his show called Fresh Off the Boat as well. And the Jamaican episode of Eddie Juan's cooking show was released on my 19th birthday. Well, I also got the complete DVD set of episodes 1 to 100 of AVGN, aka Angry Video Game Nerd. This is a picture of my room back in 2017. Another found memory I'd like to share with you guys at this point was when it was a father-daughter dinner dance, I would spend more time with my mom watching videos from YouTube, playing games while talking about the memories of our life. In NHK News Newsline on PBS, I've always enjoyed watching that in the morning. My favorite episode of Newsline is when a new guy that moves into the old neighborhood of farming. And also another episode I really liked is when a dude created a light bulb out of a plastic bottle. Yeah, that existed. This picture is my room after graduation. Cube World was one of the best toys I ever played with, along with the notes that you could see from my classmate from my poetry class that they have gave to me during my video presentation. This is now where we're going to get into the story of the protest for altered stirring. Trust me, this was not only my first protest, but also, I've seen many others pass as well. But this time, this was very different. And even from this point, I could see myself being in protest would never be the last thing ever. Falling. It all started on a usual day. We stopped at the store where Altern was killed. We all thought they were just practicing, but actually... The protest was actually about to start for real. Who was with me at the moment was my dad, Godavari, and her best friend, Asia Thomas. On that note, I can definitely imagine Beyonce's superpower featuring Frank Ocean and Destiny's Child playing in the background while this story continues. There were other songs that were playing at the protest, but that's besides the point. And... For obvious copyright reason, I can't really play this specific song. But like I said, just imagine this song being played in your head while I am narrating this specific part. But before that, there's a picture of me in the background with the blue jeans, if you can really see it, though. When it first started, we were walking in the night. My father left his Gatorade in the car, along with bologna, too. I almost tripped on something while wearing flip-flops and someone said to me, Hey, don't fall, man. Your black lives matter too. And my cousin Kanisha and Yakista was there too. Our plan was just to get 
a peaceful march because we believe injustice was done. We were marching during this and I lost track of my family. They were in the front somewhere and I was in the middle somewhere. Next thing I heard was glass breaking. Everyone started running. So I started running too. I made it back to the store from where we were going. And I was thinking two things. I am about to go to Washington like Martin Luther King because we walked so far. Or am I about to make it to Gonzalez? It's just too bad I didn't bring my home keys with me. Or even call an Uber home either. You know, I didn't even have that installed on the iPhone yet. Let alone any phone yet. I saw tear gas and I ran away from the area. I realized my family was not with me anymore. I thought they were going to be right with me. I waited for them, but I didn't see them. This is a picture of my sister in front with the braid. Ironically, I'm thinking about the Pepsi commercial, but, you know, it's nothing like that at all. At that moment, my Auntie Tabby called to come and get me. Then I realized they got arrested. Luckily, I had someone to take me to their home, and Yakista still had her phone to record what was happening. When it was all over, I stayed at Auntie Tabby's room to fall asleep. As I go to bed, I saw a picture of Godavari and my dad at the father-daughter dinner dance. This just felt like a movie, and then my thoughts were saying, well, how can they get arrested for this, and why? And this was the exact picture I saw in my Auntie Tabby's room. That picture right there. Falling. The next day, I was watching A Hundred Ways to Die that had the ICP as guest stars. We waited for my father and many others to be out of bail. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see my sister until tomorrow. But I got to see my father and thankfully nothing happened to him. That's also the same with God of Ari as well. On that note, the jail actually had to remake food for God of Ari since she was a vegetarian. And a cop also complimented her of saying that she could be the next Martin Luther King. Rest in power to not only him, but along with many others like him and everyone else. Her lawyer gave her the book called The Hate You Give. The movie was really good too. Both my father and Gavari were in a YouTube video explaining what happened. And the funniest experience is when we all talked about it as a family. And I was saying, I didn't run, I just walked very fastly. This picture is me on Channel 9 News website. I'm not sure if there's a video report, but I did make a Vine for that event. And I also was having a thousand followers on Twitter at that time for my first year as well. Then again, my father had to do the same thing when she was fighting for Martin Luther King Day to be a holiday in 1981. It was at the state capitol and they chased him with horses and it was also snowing as well, but my mom escaped. And there is a picture of my mom in Washington with a poster of Michael Jackson. And plus, two years before I was born in 1995, my father was part of the Million Man March. Even though my father took pictures, he was in the middle, so it would definitely be impossible to find him. Not just because I didn't know where he was that day, or what he wore, but there were so many people. It was just like trying to find where's Waldo. But if anybody can spot my father from any video recording, please let us know. And here's a picture of both my parents in Washington. And one day, I'll be there again. Because the last time, I was one years old for my second Christmas in 98. On that instinct, that's what inspired for me to write my own song called BLM 2. And the direction for that music video is where a cop is chasing me everywhere in Louisiana. But he can't touch me up to this point. Hence the term Fast Ed. And for the next video that will be called I'm Too Fast, I would like to do something a little similar to NWA's 100 Miles in Running or just, you know, anything similar. And I guess I'll tell you more details for my second book. Before we get back to 2016 before the protest, it was the 4th of July and there was an alligator. And here's why that was important. When I was in weightlifting class, my coach would often ask me, did I wrestle alligators? 
And here it was, a dead alligator. Even though the place I lived at was far away from that region to see alligator. And here is the photo picture proof of this. Pauline. On that note, I remember going to the Scared Straight program two years back in 2014. Even though nothing happened to me, I was just sad to just see what it is. It was a plantation farm and I understand the meaning. But that was still messed up that school offered the kids to see what is a long, like a zoo in a circus. It felt dehumanizing. And I'm surprised to this day it doesn't even bother anybody along with others messed up things in this world. I just wish it could stop. Now looking back into 2016. And now this is where the superpower song ends. At this point I... Unfortunately, felt like I jinxed the whole situation of us coming back to California. On a road trip back, I was just saying it as a joke. And I was thinking, oh, what happens if we just stay back in Louisiana? And Godavari immediately said, don't joke about stuff like that. And guess what happened? We stayed there for another two years. Then again, California is very expensive as their forest fires, man. So for the time being, I was in the Louisiana college for a little bit, and I got myself another mini Android for that time. There was actually supposed to be a film inside the college, but actually they just would have been teaching me stuff that I already know. So while I was in that college, I was listening to Ice Cube and Money for the K-47, and that really got me through a lot of times from college, along with... My new favorite YouTubers I liked at this time that would be coming up in a second. Here's a picture of me in college and there was a guy that looked like Brandon Calavero. He's a Viner and a YouTuber. So we took this picture together. I hope that guy in the photo is doing okay for these days. I had art which this is actually how I found Quizlet. It's a pretty good website and she, the teacher I had was pretty cool too. Human psychology, he was a cool teacher in a wheelchair. At lunch, I saw half of or a little of my friends that I remember from high school. And there was also a person named Monica. You were a really cool friend if you're reading this right now, Monica. Not my mom, this, this person named Monica. The funniest adventure at that time was going to Voodoo Fest in 2016 with Godavari. It was a fun time. The best guest we saw was g Easy, Melanie Martinez, Carnage, but most importantly, Diet Ant Word, which means the answer, and they're from South Africa. I just got into them because my sister was into them, but she was more of a big fan of them way longer than I was. Originally, Kevin Gates from Louisiana was supposed to play, but he got some backlash at the time, so he couldn't be there. So they invited Ray Summer instead. I like them just the same as Kevin Gates. Fun fact, he is best friend with my cousin Brian and took a picture with my grandma with our picture of the cookout in the background. So technically, you could say I was in a picture with Kevin Gates, even though I'm in the background, I'm still in that picture. Speaking of pictures, this is me and Galvari at the Voodoo Festival of 2016. The best part of the concert was I was wearing a Dragon Ball shirt and Ray Summer was wearing the same one. As well as someone else wearing a Goku and Vegeta as Ice Cube and Chris Tucker from Friday. When I was at the DJ Carnage set, which was the last set of the night, Sway Lee jumped into the crowd and danced with all of us, so you know I had to film my part as well. At the end of the night, we walked and talked all the way back into the dark. My sister, I, and my father. We had to go back to where we first parked, and boy oh howdy, our feet was sore. When we were watching Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, I made a joke about it along with my wife and kids. And the people from the other room behind us were dying laughing and still probably from these days forward. I never really knew I was that funny. Maybe I should do stand up at this point. This is a picture of an app game that's called Mitomo. I love playing Mitomo so much. 
these are collaborations with other people that were dope and that were friends. And there's me in the mill with black dog ears. And this is from Nintendo. On our next day, we went to see Die Antwerp. It was really fun, especially when you know all the songs. When they played this song, once again, excuse my language, Happy Go Sucky Fucky. Just like the music video, which was ironically a concert, Ninja, which is one of the members from the duo, jumped with the audience and I felt his legs. I remember they were just so bony and sweaty. And this was the second time he jumped on stage. The first time I wasn't in front of the crowd at the moment. But other than that, my sister and I had a really great time. I kind of wish she was standing right in front of me during that moment though. Another introduction from college that got me through these classes was when I first fell into Filthy Frank, iDubs TV, H3H3, 88 Rising, and How To Basic. I'm also going to throw in Max Mofo, even though I didn't really know him at the time, he still counts in this as well. And it was really worth watching all their stuff, not only while I was going through the classes, let alone not finding my own classes on time, and even just checking out their stuff while I was waiting for classes at the same time. This is a picture of Me Tomo Part 2 from Nintendo. And this is me in Mitomo form of my college in the background. For Filthy Frank aka Joji, I first found him three years ago in 2013 on a YouTube channel called Jif With Sound of his song called Ramen King as one of his characters called Pink Guy. While the loser reads hater comments were really good and the different voices he used with the characters. He adds so much flavor and story to his own story arc. And also, of the bunch, Filthy Frank was the very first person I saw from that time. Before we get to the others. Just to reiterate. As for Ian, aka iDoves, his bad unboxing, content cop, what's in the box. Unfortunately, there was only two episodes, even though there was nine boxes. And yes, I was watching two of them while I was at Voodoo Fest. And Kickstarter crap, when he would just destroy or fall onto stuff, it just hits me on the floor dying of laughter. I also remember I sent him some mail during Bad Unboxing in 2017. I still haven't seen it or opened it yet, but either way, he's still funny to me. For H3H3 and How To Basics, I found them at the same time with the recommendation of the YouTube channel. And this is the start of Edo 4 in 2016. But I haven't really had any content until like two years later. But that's just what I had for the time being. Just to watch YouTube channels. I also want to thank Galvari that found for me Hey Watch Your Mouth. He was a guy that had awesome content before and after Leafy the Snake. Here's a picture of another moment at the BSU club, and I believe I'm the third person you see in the back. Another concert where me and my sister were headed off before the end of 2016 was the LSU concert. The reason why we went is because Sid the Kid from the internet was going to be there, but the problem was they were taking too long to get there before it started but you know it's not really their fault because you know they're coming from california at one point of the concert there was a dance contest whoever wins gets to talk to the internet backstage i won but it didn't go because the thing about my mind it was saying at that time since they took too long to get there i won't go backstage but honestly, at first, I didn't even know they were allowing me to go backstage. Like I said, because especially since I won. And I also remember saying at the time, I'll see them in the near future. Which to this day, I really regretted that of my curiosity. And should have just stayed and went and backstage at the time. But I didn't know it was like right there in front of me though. I really didn't. Falling. On that note, Sid the Kid and the internet, if anybody is reading this or listening to this, I'm very sorry that I didn't get to meet you guys backstage. 
and I actually didn't think I had another chance to do that. But the good news is that my sister, Monica, my friend, not my mom once again, and myself, we made the YouTube thumbnail, and we were kind of talking to each other during the interlude as well. Here's the picture of the thumbnail, and that became my third to last Vine video before Vine closed. At this rate, I didn't want to go back to that college. I needed to go to an actual film school, but for the time being, I had to go to work with my dad. To update you of how I wake up in the morning is from the schedule of 2016, middle school, and near futures. I don't have an alarm clock. I simply just wake up. Even before I got rid of the alarm clock completely, I would just get up an hour or a few minutes before it got up and I wouldn't even hit the snooze button. I would just get right up and play on the computer while eating breakfast before school starts. And yes, there was breakfast at school there too. The only time I would go back to sleep is if I have enough time to sleep or I'm too sleepy to just wake myself up and get ready for the day. I am both a night owl and an early bird at the same time. So let me explain. But first, here's a picture of me dancing. I'm just a dance machine. If I have to go somewhere in the morning or do something in the morning, I become an early bird. But if there's nothing to do in the day at all in the morning or whatever's happening the next day, it's in the later evening or midday, I become a night owl to either stay up all night and sleep in the morning. Most definitely, this comes from both of my parents. My mother would go to sleep at 7 or 9 p.m. And the next thing that happened, my mom would be up at 3 in the morning reading a book while watching TV and drinking tea. My father would just sleep until he hears his alarm clock. As my sister, I often remember a lot to knock on her door while singing this in this tone. It's time to get up now. Sometimes she would just wake up before I even knock on the door. On that note, it's rare for me to wake up late, but it happens. But yet, yeah, I still don't like it. But you know, like I said, it happens. When I would wake up to go to my father's job at Southern University, we would listen to the Tom Joyner morning show. My favorite segment would be about Huggy Lowdown because Huggy always had something funny to say. Even during my first days of college and days when I would just visit my father's job before I even went to college. And after work during that time, I would weight lift with him too. And this picture, I can't really tell if I am in Louisiana or California. But either way, I really do love this picture. Falling. Another thing I love while tuning in for the Ricky Smiley morning show, believe it or not, I actually have his own brand of glasses, and my favorite segment of the show was Black Tony. He unfortunately would always have some type of excuse of why he's late, and even Lil Boosie showed up and was saying, hey man, you can't be late all the time because I'm here, so why can't you be here on time this time? And that had me rolling on the floor laughing. On those days, I would just be on YouTube as a viewer, not a creator, making lyrics and scripts. From that moment, I had my own laptop called Acer. Unfortunately, it didn't have a DVD opener inside, but I still appreciate it and still have it as of 2021 and as recent as 2024. I also had an app that I really enjoyed very much for the time being called Mitomo, where I would meet other avatars, kind of like IMVU, but since this was so popular to the Wii character development and Tomodachi's friend's life, it made the app so much fun. The best people I met in the game was Teki the Fairy and Skill Will. Lastly, I found this at the same time as Twitter and Vine in 2016. Thank you so much, Godavari. This is a picture of Me Tomo Part 3. I did try to get into Line at the time, but it wasn't as fun as Me Tomo. And once again, this is from Nintendo. The way that I would make friends at the time of social media was, 
anybody that followed me, I not only would follow them back, but I also would follow the people who followed them back. I don't really do this anymore because of spam, but if you want to try it, my friend, I mean more power to you. While all of this was going on, I found a college that really fits me. Without going back to the college I was previously in, and it was called Full Cell University. When my mother and I sent resumes for college earlier that year, Full Cell messaged us in September of 2017. Yes, my mother came back to Louisiana once again. They offered me a place to stay that was called Collegiate Village Inn, which as of 2021 isn't here anymore. But like I said before, it will be explained later in the second book that will be coming in later in time. So this picture is my 20th birthday. I kept this present from Clinton and it was Japanese pop rocks, possibly for my 18th birthday. And the last time I messaged him on my first phone was I sent him the Raka Raka behind the scenes video part 2. Those guys were so funny. At first I thought they were British but they're actually Australian. And another thing to see in the background is I have a green screen. I'm not sure if I have it anymore but I remember the good times I spent with it. So we went with that Full Sail University in Florida. There was going to be another option of me going to the Detroit border near Canada, but the problem was is that I was going to learn the same thing in college of what I was learning in Louisiana. On that note, another school I was actually going to be sent to was going to be in Vermont, but the only problem was is that that school would take way too long for me to learn what I got to learn. I, it was like going to be four years and I just wanted to. But on that note, whenever I do a book tour or a performance tour, I will remember to give you guys a chance. Especially, I want to throw Virginia in that as well. Especially to even go to Vermont to visit that school as well. To just take a tour and just, you know, see what's been going on there. Also, big shout out to the Odd Squad family for mentioning Vermont as well. And that was also another group I was listening to at this time and still on occasion listen to today. Now back into the story. So hello and thank you Full Sail from Florida and goodbye Louisiana. Also during that time I also like watching Desus and Mero too. They were super funny. At first I really thought it wasn't going to happen because at first there was a hurricane happening. So I thought, I'm never going to leave Louisiana at this rate, but they said to just for me to wait for next month, and that made me more nervous and scared. But it not only happened, but I am in Orlando full cell in October of 2017 of right now. Once we drove off, we made it just in time before CVI closed. This was a brand new world to me, just like when I visit my birth town, Atlanta, and my sister's birth town, California, and I also met my first best friend in Florida, and he's from Pennsylvania, named Tucker Tate. Pauline. This is a picture of the three ads again, and this is for my 20th birthday in 2017. PJ and the first David are in the background, which they are my friends from Louisiana. And I watched the Battle Royale DVD with my little sister. Since I invited PJ and David originally, but they couldn't show up. But maybe in the near future, it might happen. Especially along with more friends too. I really love Aki Mida's performance in that movie of Battle Royale. And also we were watching that movie in English dub. Yeah, they have an English dub of the first one, but I wonder if they'll have an English dub of the second one. Aki and I, Mieda, I have been a fan of them for a while, just because they're so super funny and cute to me. This was at the moment I could not bite my nails anymore. Let me explain. Previously, I would bite my nails off so they could just be shorter again, but one day I just couldn't do it anymore. And I didn't know how to really clip them myself. 
So the alternative was to go to a nail salon that was conveniently right next to the haircut place and the vinyl record store that I was living at in CVI. Although that place, the record store, did not open until two years later of 2019. This picture is me and Tucker on our first day at the apartment. He was a really great first roommate and also, like I said, the first friend I met in Florida. And ironically, he's from Pennsylvania. My first class I had was introduction, where everyone from different programs get to meet each other. And on that note, that's how I even met my new friends at CVI too. The two other YouTubers I really became interested at this time was Fredjin and Elysis is here. How I stumbled to their pages was a recommendation from YouTube, where they would drop truth bombs on irrelevant YouTubers and since they were the remedy of comedy and creativity, Fredjin, an artist of his own in comedy and music, and Elysis, the new generation of not only Filthy Frank, but also his own party too. Shout out to Filthy Frank TV too. You're the best as well. And I understand you tried to do your best to fill up the cracks, but it wasn't complete, but you tried your best. And I want to thank you so much for that Filthy Frank TV too. My first day there was just like all the other schools I went to. They were super big and easy to get lost, unless you see the same place all the time. I am a fast learner of directions than the GPS by the second or fourth time, of course. And this is a picture of our room. My bed is on the right. It was pretty memorizing to see the games, music, and movies that were made by people at Full Sail University. I do believe my favorite overall is Leslie Braftaway, and I'll definitely go into more detail in the next year of 2018. On the first day of Florida was actually my third time being in Florida. My second time was the outdoor history event in 2013, and that was the picture of me standing on the fence of Frederica Wilson in the earlier chapters. And the first time I went to Florida was me and my family going to Disney in 2004. This was the first time I learned about Dance Dance Revolution. And the song that was playing at the time, I believe, was Waka Laka from the Zippers. That really became a famous AMV for Azumagadayo. And I recently learned that this was a business trip with my dad for the first time. But definitely it probably wouldn't be the last either. But we weren't a part of this. But this is like for the family. For me to be a part of the business trip. But I think afterwards if I remember correctly. I don't think I was in any other of them. But my dad surely has. That's just where I'm trying to get to at the end of the day. Falling. I wanted to learn more about my roommate Tucker more. We both were born in the same year, which was 1997. We both have autism, but he studied game development, really into horror, and on YouTube just like I was. And he was a really fun dude to be around with. And you know, for me, I was learning about film. So this is a picture of me getting my ID for Full Cell. The picture looked like I have a yellow shirt, but as you can see, it's gray. In CVI, we would not only get three courses of meals of food being served from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., we had a van shuttle that took us from the school and the apartment complex. It dropped us off in building 3F, and for the laundry room, we would use our credit cards to wash and dry our clothes. One thing I realize is I'm far away from home for the second time, but this time I'm not alone. Mind you, it's not the first time I've been home alone. It was definitely when I was in middle school and even in the last days of Louisiana, my father went to my birth town, Atlanta, for a business trip once again and I was home alone, especially since Gavari and my mom were in California. But at least I do know how to take care of myself. Even though my room sometimes can tell a different story, I do know how to cook food on the microwave, 
clean up after myself, bathroom etiquette, and now I'm paying rent for the very first time while also using Instacart just in case the food that they have downstairs wasn't meeting my appetite and if before I run out of food, you know? And this is a picture of me of my very first year at CVI. The other friends I met during this time from CVI was Madison James, Chiron Ethan, Chris, I'm going to call him Chris the Gamer, Christian Mills, and Bradley. We were just a crew that was just hanging out while talking about life. I spent the first night at the apartment while my parents were very proud that I made an independent decision. God of Ari now goes live on Twitch to play League of Legends while also finishing up school in Louisiana and my mother got a job where she listens to conversations for special needs people and type in the words of what the person is saying to them. Maddie was the third person with autism I ever made. Previously the two Davids from Louisiana, I had a bit of a birthday party with my friends with them at CeCe's Pizza for my 20th birthday. And also on that note, there was another kid from MA that I met that also have autism. Unfortunately, I forgot his name, but definitely we had some pretty cool memories of hanging out together. And this picture right here is my 20th birthday present from Walmart. I'm not sure if they still sell those happy stickers anymore. Maddie was so nice, but yet so worrisome. But I've always appreciated not only her hospitality, but her personality is super funny while she is super creative too. At that same time, she was studying creative writing. Also, she is a year younger than me, but very mature, and she's from New Jersey, just like Frank Sinatra. Falling. Now, at first... I didn't really know what to think at Kai at first, and he is the third friend that I met in Florida. Don't get me wrong, of the year of 2021, he is still funny and even in future times, but sometimes there was just times he would just say something that I really didn't like, or it would just seem super questionable too. But over time, he not only grew out of it, but I definitely see a new man out of the dude. Even though at first our family wasn't really feeling his vibe at first, he was born in 1999 and from Baltimore. And like I said, from today, it's like having a little brother. He's just really cool to be around. This is a picture of Maddie celebrating Sue Young's birthday. More on him later. Also, one fun part I liked is where we opened the sodas outside of our balcony. And thankfully, no one was outside to catch the wind of the soda. When it came to Chris, his heart and brain was in the right place, but sometimes his execution is what almost kills us, literally. He's from New York, Brooklyn, a vegetarian, a gamer, crazy driver, related to Al Capone, and study film like I do. Christian, just slice it, Christian, he is a musical artist named Amalotti. On SoundCloud, he is what I am right now at the moment of making this book, which is recording art. He even puts together songs for me. Although I've never performed it, it was still nice that he made this song for me, among other helpful things. And Bradley was into gaming and anime. And like I said, that was our crew. One of the craziest class I had before the New Year's of 2018 was... We had to be in a group with our own productions and we called ourselves Whoops Production because our story was is that we met on a plane, it crashed into Kenya, Africa, being the only survivors, that's how our story came about. But what we had as a group, that wasn't the crazy part. Here's the picture of my sister, me, and a friend, I forgot his name. But I do remember that God of Ari had a fake ID, but a year later, she had a real one. Yep, she got into full self. More on that later. One of my friends that's now in Jacksonville, since I forgot his name, I'm going to call him Lawrence. He's the same color as me, he had a perm hairstyle, 
And before the class, we were going to be making a gaming and animation company together. Unfortunately, that never happened. By April of 2018, he went back home to help do live stream for his brother that is a makeup guru. The trouble he was in, oh boy. The group I was in didn't have him, but the group I was in had Maddie. And I remember one time I was in one of our group's houses and we were playing with a cat. And honestly, they're often similar to bunnies. Now back to the group that Lawrence was in. The team member that Lawrence was in wasn't really matching the game plan that they needed to be a team, especially since she was really full of flaws. I do believe that not everyone is perfect, but she didn't really admit to her wrongs. That not only made him quit, but he did the biggest diss video I've ever seen in my life. Falling. This picture I took was one of our group members. I took a picture of the shirt because I just thought it was a very good pun. Thankfully, Maddie and I passed that class with flying colors, and that was the first time I first signed into Facebook. While we were presenting, once Lawrence came, he was a solo. His project is about water, if I remember correctly. That's when he dissed the group by showing them all getting drunk in a private conversation and Dave Chappelle having a clip of him saying from one of the team members, she sucks. That That's my best Dave impression. From that moment, everyone wanted to beat him up. He got suspended while repeating the class. Me and Maddie had to hide from the drama. But looking back at it now, I felt like the execution was really good, especially the fact I saw it as the ice cube no Vaseline. The message to you all, don't ever mess with the person that knows every secret about you because it'll only come back as karma later. Now we're going to move on to the next year of 2018. From the start of 2018, I found three other friends while living at CVI. Unfortunately, I forgot their name, but I can describe them the best way I can, and they all look like me. Here is a picture of me, Tomo, once again. I totally forgot if I did this pose or someone else did, but that's definitely my look when I go to Japan. And once again, this is from Nintendo. The first guy, he had a girl backpack from Invader Zim, and we would talk about life and plans in the future. Last I remember, he said he wanted to go to Japan to teach kids slang instead of the king's and queen's English speaking. So I'm going to assume he's in Japan now doing just that. And he asked a good question about Rama 1 half, which was, does Rama ever get period? And couldn't Rama cook Pichon at any time? Second guy... I always would forget his name, but he was a light skin. We talk often about similar stuff. I always forgot about him, but he will always remember me. And one thing also for sure, he will remember this as the book as well. And probably even mention it's like, hey, it's me, the person you forgot again. It's not on purpose, but it often seems like a gag. But like I said, it's not on purpose. It's just... It's just, it's just there's a lot going on in my mind. Last person is named Zach. He was in the army just like Chris. I remember going to his apartment when we were playing JoJo Bizarre Adventure. I learned that the circle meant start and the start button means to cancel your option since three of the settings are in Japanese. Here's another picture of me, Tomo, and it's just me just, I guess, having a conversation. Funny memories. I don't think I made this. Someone sent this to me, but this was really a good picture for me to not only remember, but keep. So this is where I watched the anime New Game and the sequel. It's the one that I thought the main character was going to do porn acting, but turns out our main character named Alba Suzukaze, fresh out of high school, was working at her dream job to be a gamer, along with meeting new friends and learning the business of gaming. I really liked it because it showed the diversity of girls 
and the serious side of trying to make games, which was also cute and funny to me. Before the end of 2017, I attended a contest for South Park, so I can not only be a character on the show, but it was also a cause to help for autism, which was a big surprise not only because I was autistic, but I would share the ideas of the spinoff that I wanted to do with them. This is a picture of Evelyn Evelyn. It was a great group and a musical book that I've ever seen, thanks to Amanda Palmer. I heard about Lil Peep when he released Awful Things, but shortly after that, he passed away. At this point, this is where I learned about XXXTentacion and Mac Ox. I made a music video of both of them of X look at me before he did a video for it and at the time I was doing it he was released from jail and working with artists from 88 Rising and Matt Ox too late in 2019. The flash drive that I have is great and I kept all my songs and script like I said once before but once my 20th birthday came around it got corrupted into another flash drive. So that's why I not only have to put it in a Google Drive as you could probably see and this was one of the projects I had to start over meaning this book right here. Another friend I met in film his username was called Total Trash Gamers and is now called Yeet My Beans. I forgot his real name but he got me a PA which ironically that's what I became for the rest of my film classes. Don't get me wrong, I still often make videos inside of outside my classes. And on that note, he is a gamer as well. This is a picture of, this is not Clint, but this is exactly what he looked like at the time. And I hope both him and the person I took a picture with is doing well today. There was a song called Sell the Way from a director named Sharan Phillips. It was fun that I got to film some behind the scenes of him breaking a picture frame glass and pillows along with other scenes too. And that was my first IMDB credit ever even though I still haven't signed up for it but that may all change in the future who knows. This is where I would go to my first concert in Florida which was Rich Brian Come to My Party Tour but at the time he had a different name. To save you guys the trouble, his picture of the name will be at the bottom of the book. So back into it, he had to change his name back in the start of 2018 since it was too controversial. I personally liked it, especially since it had nothing to do with me. But since his name brings up trauma that America is still afraid to face, he had to change it. But as long as he was still making music and still loving of what he did, that's all I really cared about. The night before, I had a dream where I lost my key card for the apartment. Unfortunately enough, that dream came true. But the concert overall was so much fun. I only recorded what I thought needed to be recorded. And they performed every song before he turned 19 years old. My favorite song from him is Who That Be? The Vine Days. And that was actually the very first time I heard about Rich Brian. And this is the poster I found at school. It was really a fun concert along with Duckworth performing in that concert too. And they're a musical group. <laughs> Tucker had to open the door when I arrived that night since I officially lost my key card. But thankfully I got another one the next day. Also for the start of the New Year's, I had to get another one because it stopped working for a while. If the card would blink red, it means that it's locked and the green meant that you could be inside of your room. The last YouTuber I'll be talking about in this chapter is NFKRZ that stands for, for realsies, no fuckers or as I would usually say, no freakers. He is a Russian YouTuber named Roman and he is a year younger than me but he is super funny and basically answered every single question and things I wanted to know about Russia. I made a tribute video two years later but as I said before more on that for my second book. 
And this picture, this is how I first learned to use iMovie. I still use iMovie as of 2021 and even later in the future. And also for this picture, this was one of the first projects I worked on for Full Cell that we have for when you're in film. That's called the Who Am I Project, almost similar to this book. And that's kind of also how I created this book in the first place. I have made it just in time for the Full Cell 9th Anniversary of Hall of Fame. It was an event where you not only meet the previous graduates from that school, but also there was a lot of fun, food, and presentations to go to and plan out your day. Also on that note, this is where I met my new friend and second roommate. I often remember seeing him a lot at CVI, but never really talked to him until one day I was looking for the event for the Chinese New Year. And once I got into the shuttle, that's when I saw him and his name is Su Young. Ironically, I uploaded a video of Raha and Hung trying to speak English towards June Park from G.O.D. in 2001 on Twitter. And at this rate, I got 2,000 followers on Twitter. And for Facebook, I just had some friends and family that was just following me. And now, I finally have a friend from Korea. And it meant a lot to me. Even meeting Natsumi, that stands for Summer, from Japan. She is an artist of computer animation. We were both the same age. And one of the many other Japanese girls that I first saw from CVI. I was a pretty shy guy, but yet somehow I talked to all of them at first. And another friend from China led me to meet my counselor, Miss Nicole Brooks. I was late, but we did book another appointment. This picture is my Twitter profile that I still use today. And yes, this was the day at the Tyler concert at Santa Cruz for my early 19th birthday. He had a lot of questions for me about America. Well, I had a lot of questions about him from Korea. He was a quiet and nice person. He almost looked like a kid to me, like a younger brother. He was born two years after me in 1999. His room was so nice and neat. He was a gamer and he liked about the same stuff that I did. The first night that we talked to each other, I first got to see his place and the room was 320 and me and Tucker we lived on the second floor. He had a lot of products to clean his face and we ate some food. I forgot what it was but I needed to borrow Tucker's bowl to cook it. He was the last person to see Lawrence and we went to the ramen shop and we worked on ideas for gaming and animation. Again, like I said before, that idea never took off from the ground, but we were having so much fun sitting in the back of his truck while letting the breeze flow through our hair and skin. Falling. This is a picture of Su Young's 19th birthday. He wanted to get an American credit card to transfer his money, so he went to the Chase Bank that was close to our apartment. He has parents and an older brother named Songbomb. His birthday is a day after mine, but born in 96. And he also really draws really well. I'm talking about Young. He is going into game art, and I believe he's still doing it right now. I often would spend a night at his place, but one day in Easter, spring break, and April Fool's Day, he wanted me to move in with him. And so I did. At first, I really wanted to wait for Tucker to move out, but the problem was is that our room was too small and it had a bad odor for Su Young was just really allergic to, to that smell and he would just break out in the hive because of that certain odor. And I felt at the time, I was gradually ready to make room for myself and Su Young and away from Tucker, but no hard feelings though. And like I said, we're moving in as just roommates and nothing more, you know? And here is my passport photo. He is still my first friend that I really did appreciate from Florida. And even though he's from Pennsylvania though, Su Young also advised me to make my own YouTube channel. 
Now to keep in mind, I haven't uploaded anything since 2013. I have regularly made appearances from the Hey Watch Your Mouth live stream, but only in text format. But you know, at this time, I was thinking, why not? I have nothing else to lose or gain from this. And that's how I started my channel, as you can see today, as Edo Numo 4. Actually, this channel had my full name before I started over, which I'm getting to that later. But my first video was about Su Young opening his gift that his mom sent to our apartment house from Korea. And that's why I titled the video Opening Presents from Korea. While Tony, that's his English name, his mother was FaceTiming us at, from his house. And it was a fun video to make, especially since I filmed it from my own house too. Well, actually it was my room and I had this yellow brown button shirt and that was a trademark for my own fashion and for my own YouTube of anniversaries and stuff like that. So meaning on that note, I was in Florida and Louisiana filming my very first video that came out on April Fool's. And that is how I made my first comeback video ever to YouTube. Now back into the story of 2018. But first, here's a picture of me in the New Orleans concert during Mardi Gras in 2017. The reason why Su Young chose the name Tony was because Iron Man was his biggest role model, known as Robbie Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. I often think Tony was just a usual American name. As well, I think about Tony the Tiger from the cereal Frosted Flakes. They're great! Another person I often think about is Tony Ann from HOT because he spoke English a lot from the group since he was raised in California, America. And now for more adventures about Tony and me. We partly went everywhere where we can go at that had any Asian tradition as much as we would go to Walmart for bottled water and a store called East Asian Market that's near the glasses facility. The best thing I saw when I got there was cool. It was like Juicy Juice that had a mascot and Chocobi from Crayon Shinchan. In Korea, they call Shinchan Shinjangu. We even went to the Adidas store. I even showed him the song of my Adidas from Run DMC. And boy oh howdy he loved it man. Falling. Here's a picture of my mini fridge with the cool juice. And the two bottles that you see in front they actually broke. I believe I got five bottles that I carry once I came to Florida. And I only had two bottles left after the rest of the trip of Florida. Also, here's my two stuffed animals that would become later characters for my own show, Dog and Bears. I gave Tony my chair, which I got back later in time because actually it was mine. His brother and his mother stayed as well. Tony's character really changed from him dyeing his hair reddish brown and he had a tattoo too. To myself, he really does look like the leader of Soteji, Soteji. One day, I may not only going to make a documentary movie about Soteji, but even if I do, I feel Tony would be a perfect role since he really does look like him in so many ways, especially since his rebellion side is pretty spot on as well. When we would get alcohol, I would have to get it since I was the oldest one, which I was 21 years old at the time, and my friends would have to leave the store for me to purchase it. We would get stuff like Mike Hart's Lemonade, and me being me, i mix up my stuff. So i mix up the alcohol with water, especially since the inspiration I got from it when I was 12 was thanks to Cameron Y, aka Cameron Young. He taught me how to mix fries and ketchup and mayonnaise mixed together, and that's how I mix everything to this day. And I wouldn't be surprised if my heritage of my mother and father, both sides mix up their food and drinks too. It was more likely my mother's side of the family, but it also turns out it's my father's side of the family. And like I said before, more on that will be explained on my second book. 
And this is a picture of Cameron Young, aka Cameron Y, and me in 2012 for us graduating middle school. And we're still friends to this day. Thank you, Facebook, for finding my friends again. In the middle of 2018, my sister just graduated from her school in Louisiana and moved in with us at CVI while she is studying game design. At first, my friends didn't trust her, but my sister proved all of them wrong, just like I did. Especially since she met her first boyfriend that is still here now named Jacob Morales, and he was the first Floridian I've ever seen. But he wouldn't be the last. My sister and I went to Full Sail to try to find her HP laptop that she wore her Heelys as good luck. Especially since she had a feeling she had to wear them. I definitely have more of the same feeling when it comes to good or bad signs. I act more like my mother while almost looking like her. I have my father's face and name. We have similar traits of characteristics. But my sister definitely acts like my dad since they're both Aquarius. And we both share the same mindset just like Janet and Michael Jackson. The characteristics I can share more likely is my mother. Like we both pretty much act the same. My sister intentionally has a Cali vibe. But she's very fashionable while being super caring towards others. And growing responsible although earlier that wasn't really the case. But she changed a lot like I thought she would, especially since everything else changes in life as well. Pauline. This picture is one of my sister's favorite picture of all of us as a family. My favorite moments with Tony before he moved out was when our faucet broke. Even though I made a video about it, I can still explain it here. One night after we went to the Full Cell gaming event, I won him a wristband from the Overwatch tournament and at that point it was a raffle being taken place with tickets. We usually would take a shower but this time around the faucet was hot and it was falling off. So I was putting it back together and I was saying hey no shower tonight because I was going to definitely have someone to just fix it tomorrow. But Tony really wanted to take a shower so it broke. And we couldn't get it back together again. Hot water was getting all over our floors. We tried to call CVI but it was after hours. So we couldn't really get to them. So we called the fire department. So they turned off our smoke detector and turned the faucet off. Before we get back into it, here's the picture of the day before I was leaving for Full Cell. And then the episode of Sonic 360 from AVGN have been sponsored by Full Cell a few days before I left. Here's the Etel remote control I used to have, the pictures in the back, and my graduation present balloon from graduating from high school. From that moment he wanted to move out, but I wanted to st stay since we just got this room. And we fixed the toilet problem too. But one more other moment I had with him besides fixing his hangover, he was drunk and he thought he was in Korea with him. I wish though of being in South Korea with Soo Young, but maybe one day in the future. In the Chinese New Year event, he wrote my name down in Korean. We had beautiful performance and I was in a debate. Originally, I wanted to be on the side of the diversity of why China should be more open to have foreigners or at least uh, venture out into the world. But unfortunately, I had to be on the side that didn't want to be diverse. But it was pretty fun and all of us really had some good arguments and opinions about it too. More friends I met in the film degree was Florencia, Sam, and many others. Definitely my favorite friends I met were two rappers named K-Dogs and Spirit the Fifth Power. The guy is actually named Rashad, made a song called Captain Nemo, and he's a good friend of mine as well. And Joseph, another best friend I made in 2018. Pauline. This is a picture of me winning an award one day. Oh boy, I can't wait for that. I know they're not really real, but you know, like I said, one day it really will be. 
in one of my classes when Joseph had worn a panda suit while he was doing a voice, I knew he would be a perfect for one of the characters for my show Dog and Bears. He had a really cool personality to have and have a conversation with as well. And a superstar I met named T-Ray from the band called Clover Drive. He's told me a lot of stories of being on the road and his favorite moment with his band as well. I hope you're doing well today and I hope your group is doing okay as well. On that note, you're definitely going to be invited to my show, especially with your band as well. Speaking of superstars, when my sister first came to Full Cell, when Leslie Brathwaite was presenting, he brought out t bars from TLC because she made a book called A Sick Life, TLC and Me, the stories from on and off stage. The best offering point that I got was an autograph signed from t bars herself. And this is a picture of t bars signing her book to me keeping of being the boss Tion. My father took pictures of our interaction and I remember she wished me the best of luck of filmmaking and making music in the future. I definitely needed that too. The luck, especially the good luck. And a few days later, I was in a video that had Leslie and T-Boz for the Q&A session. But the thing is, is that you can't see me, but you can hear me. And one of the questions I asked was, since it's almost 20 years since the release of their third album, Fan Mail, what are you guys going to do? I not only got an answer back, but I got a lot more details of the year of 1999. The video was called In the Studio with TLC Q&A with Leslie Brathaway and Tion T. Boz Watkins from Full Sail University. My other favorite moment of TLC is them in Japan during that time, and I was around two years old. When Left Eye passed away, I was five years old, and it was my birthday month. And from the T-Boss book, A Sick Life, TLC and Me, Stories on and Off the Stage, I too have half a sickle cell, and was told that I would be pretty much hopeless and useless to society since I have autism. But you know, look at me now. And I wrote this book since 2013 and been rewriting as of now. You're reading this and even while you're listening to this in 2024. Speaking of Asia, I definitely believe during these times when I was growing up, Zetima and Avix Records was running Japan, SM, YG, and JYP. Also, DSP Records was running Korea and RS Promotions and Grammy Records was running Thailand. Unfortunately, I don't know who was the big record companies from the Philippines and etc. But they were definitely were really big as Cash Money Records and Rough Riders in America. Rest in peace to DMX. I will never forget your stories and song that you brought to us, Big Dog. And here is a picture of me and Captain Nemo, a.k.a. Vershad. Another thing I want to share with you all before I get into the saddest chapter ever is the times I've been on television. The first time was in 2008 when I met Joe Biden for the Obama campaign and my little sister was there too, but we missed it on television. Another moment we missed was in 2011, I was dancing at the Jambalaya Park with a band and interestingly enough, I saw the same band but there was no camera crews. But a lot of my friends were along with God Vardy's friends. They were there too from that time and the next time. Pauline. My third time was in the Southern University game. You could only see me for a split second in 2010. And the recent time as this book gets is 2015 when I was an intern for Etel with Jenny and it was during Photoshop class for extra credit. It was during the film festival for all of us in school in the district promoting the band Fake Marijuana. I interviewed the president of Gonzales, but you don't see my face or hand, but you do see me in the background. And I remember I was promoting this episode to everyone to watch it by word of mouth. And everyone tune in with 
we saw you in the background. And this picture here, before we get back into it, this was the Chinese New Year at Full Cell. And this is my name written in Korean by Tony. It's upside down, but I still keep it to this very day. I intentionally wanted to go to Photoshop class to learn animation, but it never happened. But the best part I got out of it, besides making movies from the Photoshop, was the Thailand group Raptors. These guys had such a swag and beautiful looks of angels. And their sounds and concerts were improvised too, from 1994 to 2005 before the reunion. And the Buddhist calendar for that year is 2,537 to 2,548. And this picture is, as you can see, like I said before, since I couldn't really bite my nails, I tried cutting them, but I really couldn't do it. So the picture on the right was the Vietnamese nail place I would go. Believe it or not, when I used to bite my nail, it would almost look exactly like the picture on the right. They have saved me one Thanksgiving in 2017 because I banged my left toe of the steel frame of the bed, which results of my left toe looking pretty bad, like kind of of the hinges of the nail was kind of being cutting off. But thankfully, when I took a shower and I limped to the nail place, the youngest person assists me and cut it off very carefully it was almost like I didn't have a left toenail for a while, but it grew back like normal. And that person is now moving to Atlanta for college, so I wish her the best of luck. And I want to thank that place for once again helping my fingers and toenails getting cut right away. A group that I really had the biggest importance in my life was Criss Cross. Rest in power to Chris Kelly, aka the Mac Daddy. They were the first group that put So So Deaf on the map. Their swag of putting their clothes on backwards and just rapping about anything of their uniqueness was super mind blowing to me, especially since they were in the same place I was born from, which was Atlanta. Thanks to Goody Mob and Outcast for y'all doing y'all part two, along with TLC, Dallas, and Leslie, and anyone else that's also representing Atlanta as well. From their own style of crisscross, whether they're wearing their clothes backwards or normally, it was just so underrated. I can't wait for a documentary movie to be made about them, and I think I might fit in just as well to play as Jermaine Dupri. Even after their debut, they just did what they wanted to do with so much free range, and for them to pretend to hate each other on It's a Different World was remarkable. Even when I first saw it a year before Mac Dad's death. And I made a video of them be mix of the Rug Rat Rap. Fun fact, this was my first introduction to them at 3 years old from the orange videotape of Rug Rats. Falling. Another shout out I want to give is The Boys, Illegal, and Another Bad Creation. I really like their music video too. Fun fact, The Boys, The Thing Called Love was the first time I've ever seen a music video about being in Japan. This picture here is Natsume making a clay figure for her projects. And I took this picture back in the summer of 2019 and we're still friends to this very day. I remember later from interview from Bow Wow and T.I. that they said that they used to not like Criss Cross because they weren't part of the scene. And I actually, unfortunately enough, felt the same way about them, especially since I thought my cousin Kanisha would stop caring for me because she liked Bow Wow. I wonder what artist Kanisha didn't really like about the artists that I really liked over the years. But I still have my love for Bow Wow, you know? I love all the members of Odd Future because they have their own style. I remember at first I thought it was going to be the black MTV Jackass or Viva La Bam. Rest in peace to Ryan Dunn. From their show called Litter Squad, but there were more than that to me, especially for them to say anything they wanted to say and do whatever they wanted to do. In 2013, I went back to in the beginning to listen to every one of their songs from the beginning to catch up. 
They reminded to me specifically Wu Tang Clan and NWA have been put in the blender and you drink it up. And this is a picture of my sister, Kanisha, me, and Yakista at my fifth birthday party at Chuck E. Cheese in 2002 in Louisiana. Speaking of underrated and hated band in the world, ICP, aka Insane Clown Posse. I really don't know why they were hated. They do say a lot of crazy stuff, but they have their own styles of music, company, along with groups and solo artists before Eminem and Odd Future. And the fact that they spray the soda called Fago into the crowd makes it more mind-blowing to me, especially since they have a festival before Odd Future of Camp Flognog, which is called Gathering of the Juggalos. I am happy that both worlds would meet of Odd Future and ICP from the show called ICP Theater, where ICP they got to react to Tyler the Creator's Tamale and loved it immediately. Especially when they reviewed Psy Gundam Style, it was so fresh, especially since Violent J was saying, you know, it deserves to be here and popular because. In Korea, they always play our music, but we don't play anything from other countries. And once again, I don't know why they're hated, let alone they were put on a gang list by the FBI as well. I still have the red can of Fago Soda since 2014, and I haven't thrown it away, as much as the cotton candy flavor soda can that I haven't thrown away either. And recently watching their recent documentary of 2021 called The United State of Insanity helped me out so much more about the fact of why they were put on the FBI most wanted list and also for them to be taken off of it at the same time. And the fact that I have the same birthday as Violent J, it must mean that it's destiny. And I also love Shaggy Too Dope because of his swag and carefree attitude even though I share a lot in common with Violent J. Here is the picture of my very first time at CVI. Now for a closure, I have been down with the clown since 2012, even though it felt like I've hid it at times, but definitely I have so much information I've learned before I listened and got the book Behind the Pate. I might be a certified or the junior department of a juggalo. I definitely can't wait to see the story about John Kick Jazz, especially for it to make their own behind the paint movie documentary just like Straight Outta Compton. I am not a gang member just because I like ICP and the juggalos. So I appreciate the march on Washington and the gathering of the juggalo even though I wasn't in any of them. I've understood their stories and struggle and happy they won all the fights they had to encounter and be as big as popular today. Especially because of that, they're also going to be invited for my show. And also, Odd Future as well. Whoop whoop! Falling. The first video I made in Photoshop class before Forward is Twisted mirror mirror in 2014 and i really loved their documentary called behind twisted that was released in 2001 too the big reason of the love is they stuck up for everyone that is needed i remember one of my teachers who taught history he was hispanic yet he had a rebel flag and it said a lot of messed up stuff that's why icp mr johnson's head got me through those times and the album I can listen from start to finish is Dog Beat, Carnival of Carnage, The Ringmaster, and The Amazing Jacko Brothers. And fun fact, that album is very popular in Japan. So thanks everyone that was in front and behind of ICP. This picture was the first BS meeting I attend from Full Cell. Unfortunately, I didn't really come back later because I just had to get my life together again. But yeah, this was the first time. But on that note, until my graduation from Full Cell, it wouldn't be the last. On my 21st birthday, I found another J-pop group called Rip Slime. It was the 36th group. Their single commercials were the bomb, especially their ninth single, 
but it was their first music video called Stepper's Delight where the characters from the music video from Halle Carey, Electric Sensei, that means teacher, were made by the late and great animator Fujio Akasuka. He made classical manga and anime such as Genius Bakon and also Matukun. His styles remind me of the show My Hero Academia and Doraemon has been combined and this is my tribute to him since he is not around anymore. Back to my 21st birthday, I made a version of Raptor and Crisscross of the song The Way of Rhyme. Young, Chiron, Maddie, and Vince and I went to see the Avengers while going out for pizza and this is our last trip at Barnes and Noble. And that was my first birthday I spent with Florida, but it wouldn't be the last. And this picture right here is one of the best collabs with Skill Will. And if I remember correctly, he was deaf in real life, but we still connected and still friends with him from this day. From this picture is from Nintendo. Before we move on to the next chapter, the song Superpower from Beyonce, I did time it in a way where it would fit into the story in this early chapter, but it didn't really match up. I'm not sure if I should speed my voice up or have the song being slowed down, but it's just something I wanted to share with you guys before we moved on to the next chapter. But if you would like to attempt to do it, please be my guest. So now on to the next chapter. Falling. Chapter 9 Depression and 3300 Plus Climbing From 2018 to 2019 This was a goodbye message from Mitomo since it was shutting down and I would like to do a concert for them and to the app to play that game just one more time before I leave this earth. One thing I also want to get off my chest before we really dive into this is my puberty experience. I believe this also played a part in my depression a bit too. I didn't get my Adam's apple until I was 17 years old so for a while I just had a young kid voice. Once hair started to grow on me I was around 13 years old. I didn't get a beard or a mustache until I was 18 years old. One of the biggest things that changed for a male body is not just the growth but also how you start to look at the opposite and same sex with a different motion than ever before. The best way to really describe this is in the words of the rapper Earl Sweatshirt from the song Drop is I'm a nice guy in person but a pervert in the sheet. Those thoughts just jumped upon my head when I was 16 years old. So this was around that same time I was getting stuck in the fantasies. In private of course. I don't think I need to explain that any further. This picture is perfect because it looks like my Mitomo is trying to get something off his chest. And this is once again from Nintendo. Having headache was also part of this puberty too. The first time I got a headache was in the summer of 2009. For some reason I just didn't want to take my normal everyday nap. So I believe also around that time I was burning my DVD to finish onto the computer. Then once I did that my head started to hurt so badly. That's when I first started to take headache medication at age 12. But it wouldn't be the last time I would have to take it. So now that I got that out of the way, I think this is a perfect segue to talk about my depression. So here we go and buckle up for this one. Depression is really a hard hole to come out of. Remember when I talked about my failed attempt of starting my own musical group 4WA? Unfortunately, it got way worse since 2018 came around and so on. And this is my last picture of my first year at Full Sail. I entered a contest put on by Comedy Central so I could work with the makers of South Park. I did not win. South Park have been huge to me since I was 12 years old since 2009. 
when I didn't win that contest to see them because I really wanted to share the ideas I have for Dog and Bears, I felt bad. I thought it was going to happen at the time because that's when I predicted that this was going to happen in 2018. And that was going to be the time to release Dogs and Bears. But from that year, apparently that just wasn't the year. So then a rapper that really felt like a big brother to me, even though we were just an age apart, like I was a year older and he was just a year younger. Like we could have been in the same class and stuff like that. XXX Tentacion died and the depression went deeper and the drama I was going through with my friends in I made in Florida didn't really help either. On X's death, which is June the 18th of 2018, which it is June the 18th now in 2024, six years after his death. I got messages from my Twitter account. I actually thought they were talking about the music video director X, a.k.a. Julian Christian Lutz. And of course, that would be sad too. But it wasn't him, but I am happy he is still alive. Where I was the day of his death, I was in my college classmate friend's Chris's room. Chris is the gamer. And I wanted to cry that day, but I just couldn't. So I had to wait until I got up to my room to just, I guess, ball out, I guess. This picture was around the time that Gatavari got to join into Full Cell. My college roommate, Su Young, after four months of me moving in with him, he moved out but kept my stuff until four months after that. At that time, 2008, I felt super used and super cheated. Then my YouTube page got taken away. So I had to create another one for my Halloween memory video. Also, I had a roommate named Jack that didn't work out so well. So then I got another better roommate that was named Christian, which of course it was a better choice. The reason why my YouTube page was taken down is because the documentary I made in 2016, it had a copyright strike of the song Summer Night Magic by Linus Blanket. Instantly, my third channel was gone, even though I didn't get the three strike thing. But thankfully, my Gmail and drive for my scripts and lyrics wasn't lost in the process. This picture is my last picture of my first room 209 in Collegiate Village Inn, aka CVI. When Godavari attended Full Cell and moved in the apartment housing where the majority of us was college student lived, my friends immediately from Florida doubted her ability to handle the gaming degree she was pursuing. She almost immediately met another student and became her boyfriend named Jacob Morales. He really liked her nicely and they are still together as I'm typing this now. She graduated with a bachelor degree in gaming and she already has a business plan in her gaming field. And there was a phone movie I wanted to make uh, when I was at Full Cell and About that stuff, yeah, I completely just scrapped it and forgot about it. One day I had a dream about Tyler the Creator that I was attending a concert by myself and he was rapping and shooting a music video in a museum. And then when I woke up, I knew I had to attend a Tyler the Creator event. The reason why I chose Christian to be my roommate instead of Jack is not just because he was in recording art that is like close to music or the stuff I wanted to pursue, but it was because he respected my privacy more than Jack did. This picture at the time I had my right tooth wisdom taken out. 
Going back to the reason why Christian was a better person to live with for me at the time was he never asked for my personal stuff and he never took in anything away from me without my permission. Like my flash drive plug-in for the laptop. Yeah, Jack took it away from me and just pretend like he couldn't find it. So I had to go to Best Buy to go get a new one. And I still have it with me, not only to this day, but also to record this uh, vocal chapter here. When Chris tried to have a girlfriend, it didn't work out at all. I saw that the relationship may not all be that happy. And it was to the point where I was doubting even living in Florida, let alone being alive anymore. Now, we, meaning my sister and I, took a new airlines home to Louisiana in the winter of 2018. The airline was called Via Air. It was a horrible experience because it kept getting delayed from going from home and returning to Florida. When I tell you that they've canceled so many times and none of it has to do with the weather. And this picture is me and God already going back home to Florida for the new year of 2019. At one time, they didn't have enough personnel to even run the operation. It was like a movie. We never knew when the flights were going to be canceled until we got to the airport. Then you had to track your stuff down. They were not even at the ticket counter either. It's always the straw that breaks the camel's back. This is when I decided to write my suicide note. Originally, my plan was to put this note somewhere in my room so my parents could find it, maybe under my pillow. I was going to get tickets to the Miami Festival that had Tyler and other artists performing in. But since we were going to leave earlier than expected to return to Florida, my mom found the suicide note. So we all cried. My family was sad. And they didn't want me to die. I just thought being in Florida wasn't really all it cracked up to me. My parents hugged and talked to me to cheer me up. They tried to help me bring myself out of the depression. But the thoughts still just didn't go away. Even as I'm writing this diary biography. Yeah, at times it's still there. But... Not as much as it was back in 2018 and possibly maybe from 2021, 2022. This picture is the part two of us leaving. I just really was thinking I was just wasting everyone's time. My mom didn't love her job. I thought it was really my fault for her to take this job so she could pay for my college expensive. I thought... Everything and everyone would be just better without me. I'm glad I was wrong about that. And just, I just, maybe I wasn't in the right mind. Coming back to Florida wasn't bad at first. I came back to my friends and full sell Godvar's birthday in Disneyland. I did two fun videos of defending Asian culture and the first anniversary of my YouTube channel, which... Those two videos, believe it or not, those two videos that started off 2019, those were going to be my last video ever. This picture is the reunion of Gavari and me at Disney again. From a picture that we took back in 2004, we tried to recreate it again. Going to the festival in Miami called Three Points in 2019 wasn't what I expected, especially since I took online class for that month to do it. The ticket and airline Uber Lyft travel cost around $700. When I got to the VIP area, it was the part of the ticket price for the event. It wasn't even to meet Tyler Peggy Gal, The Internet, Pussy Riot, which is a Russian band I liked since 2013. They were like the next revolution, evolution group of from another Russian band called Tattoo. 
that pushed the envelope for freedom for everyone. Any other artist, it was just to go to the dance hall. So I didn't even go to see those performance. Well, not the performance of the most people I got to see, but just... I didn't get to go backstage to the people I really wanted to see and just talk to. I was super upset that I couldn't go backstage to see the artists because I packed up my stuff to really live a new life with those people. And I wanted to see because I didn't want to go to Florida anymore. But those tickets did not give me access to see the group and artists I wanted to see backstage. Truly, I just wanted to leave. And I did with the help of my mom's best friend's son who lived in Miami. He called me right before my phone died. He came and got me from the concert and dropped me off at the airport. It was close to midnight and I had to wait until 5 in the morning to go back to Florida and my apartment. This picture is not the concert. It's just an example. And like I said, it was nighttime too. And before we get to this other part of it. Another kick in the face for me is that I forgot if this was in the next month or next week. There was a concert I was more familiar with that was called Rolling Loud. And the reason why that was more important is not because I know about Ski Mask and everybody else that was performing there. But guess who else was there? Tyler, the creator, Nardwar, Hire Brothers. Gosh, also, you know, both people from China, like people I really would rather want to see there, but I didn't know about it. And honestly, if I did, that would have been the concert. I could have waited just a little bit longer, not only for that, but for myself to take the Internet class for that specific time. But unfortunately, I didn't know that is what happened so that's how we got there and it was really like i said it was because i had a dream that i was going to see a tyler the creator concert that led me to go there and be like maybe if i just go here this could be my next life and all that stuff but i felt like if i would have went to the rolling loud concert that would have been maybe a better experience but i don't think my parents had enough money to do that and like I said, I really wish at that time that I would have known, not only known about this concert, but I would have went there instead. But, you know, back to the story. So once I made it to the airport, I cried myself in the airport bathroom. I was in so much pain mentally and physically from my mind. I really tried to make myself feel better, but I was miserable. And suicide just looked more acceptable at this rate. To commit suicide, how I was going to do it was I was going to just take a lot of sleeping pill. I usually would take the sleeping pill for my back or sleepiness since back in 2017. But my plan was to take so many of them is that I just couldn't wake up anymore. Because I really thought I tried everything to make my life better. And I just think the world would have been better without me. So I just stopped believing in myself. Since nothing happened when I wanted to. And everything about life was just hard for me. So I just stopped caring about myself. And thought about death day in and day out. Like day and night. All the time. 24-7. This picture is the example of what it looked like. I'm not sure if I'm the one that made up my own bed or Christian did it, but either way, it looks nice, except for the example here, it doesn't. If it wasn't for my parents talking to me and letting me talk about all my feelings and thought and helping me out of it, I really would have just made my suicide a reality. But... From that point, I decided to go with the flow and sincerely changing about yourself. It doesn't hurt either. The best example to describe of this situation before we get back into this was going to the drama that kidney kids were in that's translated as non-human. Makoto, which is one of the duo of kidney kids, had 
a moment where he was walking out of school and he realized how much he was being tortured in school. And then it was like his mind was like, maybe I should go home. And then he realized how much trash he was being treated at home as well. So he just had nowhere to go and he just ran out of the school building. That's pretty much how I was feeling like I just had nowhere to go. I didn't want to stay in Florida, but in Louisiana, somehow it didn't make me feel better to stay there either. And it's just I, w- I just felt like I was trapped and I just had nowhere to go. Another problem I was facing was my sister's attitude towards me about networking to set myself up to get a job once I graduate. I am proud to know that there is a musical club label at Full Sail called 3300 and Climbing, or as I often say, 3300 Plus Climbing, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. I was really trying my best to get through those classes, and I did see my tutor periodically, not just for my problems, but to tell her how I was feeling. Her name is Miss Nicole. More info about her will be told once again for my next book. Full Sail really did have a lot of tutoring services. And I did have another counselor who helped me to navigate stuff too. This picture is my arms that was hurting from the pool that I was swimming in at CVI. And this was during my comeback for my third video of my revisal YouTube era and this video is called Edo 4 Things I Like About Russia. Falling. I began thinking of new videos ideas to post for my social media. It wasn't helping me that my sister was pushing me when I felt I really wasn't ready. I knew in hindsight she was trying to help me Without her, I wouldn't even be in The Climbers, a.k.a. 3300 and Climbing. She gave me a job and spoke up for my skills. Even after she graduated, I still worked at 3300. Everything she was saying at the time, it just felt like a command. It just made me not want to get up and see another day. At that time, I just thought she was rubbing my failures in my face. I thought she was being completely cocky just because she was in one of the full cell clubs and she was just one of the student leaders, but she was great at it, but it just seems like she was yelling at me a lot. It made me not feel productive and I felt anything but positive thoughts over it because it feels like when someone asks what's wrong and then once you tell them what's wrong. They just tell you to either get over it or suck it up. And those words don't sound convincing when you're on the edge of hope of life itself. I say the only time it's necessary to say those words is when somebody's full of it, but not crying for help. Like, they are just whining, but it's not serious. I get the whole trick. When is it time to to take the time to complain, whine, when concerned, serious. Like, when is it going to be, you know? When do we know when someone's being serious about it or just looking for attention? Will we ever really know? This poster, it was a joke on for X that I made for Twitter. Like, I was asking if his next album was just going to be called X. And I like the water artwork I did with my pajama shirt. It looks similar from Erica from the Japanese group Speed shirt from Breaking Out in the Morning. Also, during the winter, the ants would bite through this specific pajama shirt because they came through the bathtub floor and would get on my shirt before I would even put it on. This shirt image is now becomes a tribute for the picture of XXX Tintacion and there was like things I wanted to ask him too and also another thing to know is that I didn't know he was in Florida and I was living in it at the same time I was really of thinking of asking him for ideas and stuff but unfortunately I never not only 
knew how to reach out to him, but he passed away before I even thought about a chance to talk to him. But, you know, if he's listening today or anything like that, I just want to let you know I appreciate everything that you did up from this point and your legacy will still live on with us in millions of ways. At first, I remember thinking it was funny when I would hear the words kill yourself because I wasn't thinking about myself. I was thinking about people who are evil and deserve it. I thought they are not only wasting people's times, but the actions that they do do because they're unhappy are evils like bullies, murderers, racists, and rapists, you know? But the truth is, I don't know everyone's whole story or how they got to really be who they are. If I walked in their shoes and had the experience and thought exactly the same way, then maybe I would do exactly what they do or vice versa if they were to do it to me. I have learned a lot about people over time and just when there's a story where it's interesting or not, I feel like I can fit into any shoes. Even if it doesn't seem like a shoe I could wear, I can at least do my best and just give it a shot. Like just attempt it, you know? Um, I really felt at that specific time in 2018, I had lost myself, meaning I lost my happiness and caring about people being happy or just plain caring in general anymore. George Carlin talked about suicide in the 2005 special Life is Worth Losing. I listened to it back in 2017 I laugh because it just takes too much work to literally kill yourself. That not only made me happy again, but it helped me to talk myself out of doing it myself. What also helped me around this time was ICP song, Nobody's Fault, and our autobiography book called Behind the Paint. Those really made me feel good too. And meaning of that, fun fact, this marks the 20th year anniversary of Behind the Paint. The audiobook version was finished in the fall of 2015, meaning that the book was done in 2003 and the audiobook was done around 12 years later. This is a picture of Kai and Chris playing video games at that time. Pretty good times. For stars, I started listening to Lil Darky He made me feel better because the stuff he talked about in his song felt so relatable. And the first time I found them was from a Keith Ape song called No Cap. That means no lie. When I first heard a darkie's voice, because I have heard of what Keith Ape sounds like. He sounded like a 30s cartoon character that could just rap. He also reminded me of Tyler the Creator in Tentacion. I even did a music video tribute called Black Sheep. I hope he and his crew is still okay. But unfortunately I had to stop listening to Lil Darky because I was having dreams where I wanted to kill and hurt my sister. And this has nothing to do with our normal arguments. And like I'm saying, I'm not blaming his music for all this. It was just a point where maybe if I just stopped listening to him, maybe things might start to get better. You know, this picture was, I guess it's supposed to be me in the clouds, but I'm happy I'm on the ground right now, especially since I realized Aaliyah died the same age that I was about to, which was 22 years old. That made me stop immediately. A great inspiration that really helped me feel better was Matsuko Suzo Never Give Up speech. The reason why this made me feel better is it was about a Japanese fisherman that is him that is searching for crabs at negative 7 degrees and saying, you're almost there. Don't quit now. If that cannot help you, I really don't know what will. And also, he is a tennis player and also like 
a very famous actor as well. I say it was like Rick Roll never going to give you up should help you put things in perspective. And yes, you have been Rick Roll. The thing about depression is that it is never going to leave you alone. If it is present, alive, and well, you can have everything in the entire universe and taking medication to make you feel better, but you will still feel depressed. Sometimes, taking an antidepressant pill may get you out of the dungeon with the dragons, but then there comes the time where you have to slay that dragon. And it's not fun, easy, but it is doable. In life, I feel okay to let your feelings out by telling it to someone. You can express it in your art as well. Whatever you do, as long as you don't cause harm to yourself or others. Because not only you'll get nowhere in life, but you'll miss out in enjoyment of people, things, and accomplishment that you have or will achieve that have been given to this earth. This picture is me and my sister at the Black Student Union Breakfast Program. And I am reading bingo to the guests in 2016. People can love you and you can love people all you want. But if you don't show love for yourself, it will show. And the people you thought that love you can turn into enemies on an accidental thing. Like it just happened. Or it's on purpose. During these dark times, I didn't blame anyone because I only had myself to blame. I felt like I couldn't get out of this mess except to just disappear. But thankfully, I didn't blame my autism for it. Because for me, it felt like a gift. Even when in the beginning of those times were tough. I did not want to make trouble for anyone nor for them to worry for me any longer. I didn't want to have or be a priority anymore. And those thoughts were just not true at all. I think suicide, especially since I've been through the compilation of it, is a huge red flag for help. When it's not taken care of in time, it only gets worse. I will never say it's selfish or simply say to someone to get over it because it's hard. And believe it or not, this was part of my mom's side of the family, especially of depression and schizophrenia. This is part two of this picture. And this is me, my sis, and Miss Serenda during this time. That syrup was super sticky. Because when celebrities die from suicide, we call them legends or someone needs help. That's what I say about people who have died that way. They needed our help, love, and support. To those who are suicidal, it is really all we need. Before one becomes suicidal, it's still what is needed more of, love, help, and support. Once I got myself out of the dark clouds by basically talking to myself out of suicide, ages of 22 and 24 and even now it's not looking so bad anymore so once i got to 3300 plus climbing thanks for my sister who helped got me this job the summer of 2019 things got a little bit better because it felt like i was part of another big family again this picture is me and gavari in new orleans again we are also with a friend of Gadavari. I call him Rajan Rogers. That name was from Gadavari School Project. She passed this grade even though the teacher had trouble playing the video that I made for her school project. This will definitely will be me and my own artist collaborating with others one day on the stage like this. It was the opening mic night at the treehouse from Full Cell. My sister was interviewing the opening acts and audience that attended the show too. And it was the first job that I edited 
for the commercial for 3300 and climbing and it was fun and more projects will be mentioned into the second book like i said it was a lot of fun and that's not even how i got in in the first place i was showing them a video i made of dell the funky homo sapien song that's called cyberpunk by mixing the anime zillion and that's what the song was about and of course ed and Netty. at this time I have reached my third year of posting on YouTube. I am getting close to 100 subs and as you can see, having more fun. The best things were happening for me because I hung in there, worked smarter, and never gave up. And this picture is me and the 3300 plus climbing crew of 2020. It's like when people ask, what is the meaning of life? The only answer I have for that is, it's whatever you want to do with your life. In all honesty, I say what you want to do, as long as it doesn't hurt anyone physically and emotionally, you can just do whatever you want. You can't really teach life. You can only experience it for yourself and teach yourself. I and people who care about you can help you. Life should never be written in stone that is absolutely must go this way or that way or with or without you won't make it to an attitude. You know why? Because life is too unpredictable and you never know the whole story. There are some wonderful things and experience that at one point you can never have imagined that that type of world can exist or even the life of whatever you're doing. Be kind to your own self and leave some space and room for laughter and miracles. Leave some space to create, give and receive. You don't know the goodness that is waiting around the corner. This is me posting in front of a Hollywood poster at Universal during my graduation earlier in 2023. And I hope they're ready for me too. I did not mean to make that rhyme. You don't know who is going to walk in your life or you're in theirs. It is a match made in heaven or the perfect person to be a partner with to create something beautiful for the world. You don't know when you and many others will make a law or event something that will make your or people your love life better. Even if the curveball shows up, that's just part of it. Sometimes life gets worse. Sometimes the same life gets better. Just remember to prepare yourself for good and the bad, the easy and the hard, and the changes and the sames. Pauline. We can talk about life like a movie or lesson. We must remember everyone has different experience and various interpretation about it. I always look at it like a game. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. But if you stop playing all together, meaning you stop believing yourself or living, then you're out of the game. Death is forever. Not being yourself is selling yourself to death. You have for all reasons have tapped out. Just tap in. Tap back in. Your personality is your signature and nothing is wrong with your true self. This picture is my graduation picture from film. It was online since the pandemic of 2020 was still going on, or as I call it, the C's. And once more again, more info will be explained on my second book. I just couldn't imagine. I thought about the moment I cheered up my mom from Michael Jackson dying. And then I thought, who would really cheer my mom up if 10 years later I died from suicide? And... Where I let humanity, African Americans, Asians, and the autism community down from my death? I often wonder what would my funeral be like? Who would show up? Would my idols finally get to see me? Would anybody even smile? Would it be the biggest funeral in the whole wide world in Louisiana? And most importantly, could anybody even move on from my passing? If I just disappeared too soon, or I once thought of committing suicide. This picture is 
me and my mom at a restaurant for my 16th birthday. Gadavari wasn't present because she had a band trip to Florida Disney, but I know she got it, gave me something, but I just forgot what it was. My life was not looking like I wanted to look into a career wise or personality. I was just tired of trying to get rejected or not making any headway. I was often fighting to just be accepted for me. The challenges of just having autism was already heavy on me. Sometimes the accommodation or consideration I needed was not really acknowledged. Some thought I used autism as an excuse of why I couldn't understand certain things or could not pre perform tasks easily. But you know, we are all here for a reason and a purpose. To commit suicide, I said to myself, I don't think so. And on that note, I don't think anyone could move on, especially my mom and other family members. That's why I am happy I did not go through with that. You know what I decided? I decided not everything could go your way all the time, and especially when you feel like you need to. Things are not always supposed to happen when you want it or feel like it should. It is not all about deserving. I even realized not to stay silent on things that are really important to me. But it's always okay to speak out and always ask questions, especially if I feel uneasy or uncomfortable. This picture was a project I made from film. I believe we were trying to make lines, so one of the other practices I did was I put these lines to spell out my name, Eddie, in Japanese in the summer of 2019. And yes, that's actually what my name will be spelled like in Japanese. Of course, you deserve it and more. Sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't. Yes, you can do everything and put all the hours, energy, and hard work and still not walk away or win when the door has opened for you. But it's all about doing your best. Then that's all you can do from the start and the end of the day. I just had to go with the flow. I decided to give myself a break and lighten up. I kept it moving as usual. I would say lastly, it's all about finding your own path that makes you great. Even if the path is inspired by someone else, as long as you're not hurting or manipulating anyone, then you can be whatever you want to be and dream of in the whole nine yards. Falling. Now before we move on to chapter 10, there's a few things I like to mention. You know, as Dwayne Cleopas Wayne, known as Kadeem Harrison on It's a Different World, said to Criss Cross, you can be anything you want to be. It's your choice. Just remember, there's no lid over you. These are the pictures of me with the Shinchan chocolate box and the orange drink known as Cool. In Korea, Shinchan is called Janggu. Speaking of Korea, Thanks for Tony for taking these pictures. And also, I love the silliness of the Korean artists Jesse and Amber from 2015. And I miss you solely from FX. May you rest in beautiful rows. And also at the bottom is Gavari's favorite picture of us together as a family. Chapter 10. Ending on a Filipino note and what I appreciated over the years. At the end of 2018, I saw a band called Eraserhead. It was not the movie, it was a band from the Philippines. And my favorite songs from them are Trip to Jerusalem and Julie Tear Jerky. To me, they were a perfect mixture of the Beatles and Oasis together. Also, my friend Madison would definitely agree, especially since she loves the Beatles. The song that put them on the map is a song that is called Ang Hulangan El Bimbo that means the last of the El Bimbo that won the trophy for them in 1997 in the MTV Awards for this song. They were also shown in the pop-up video. At one time, that was my dad's favorite show 
and ICP Theater had a little bit of that. Also, happy 21st anniversary to the 6th Joker's card and 30th to the first one. This was also my sister's favorite picture of us together as a family, especially this one right here of this picture of my mom and me at my middle school graduation. Falling. How do I memorize languages and songs? Well, I just think of the same words in English and just imagine what it sounds like in English. Even though this is my book about my life and journey, you can interpret it however you want because I can only be me and I accept you that you can only be you. Even if I find myself in a stalemate of stubbornness and falling out of not seeing clearly, you are still you and no one or anything could change that. I love everything in this world such as family, friends, fans, music, comedy, food, toys, drinks, technology, and learning new things about the world. That's what keeps me alive and motivated to keep getting up in the morning and just keep living my life. As a 50 Cent song once said from The Good Die Young, I know we're all gonna go, but I hate to go fast. Then again, I don't think it's fun to stick around and go last. It's one of my favorite 50 Cent songs since 2013. So far on this journey, I realized that I am very well needed in this world, and so are you. I believe whatever talents you do or do not have, you're already a winner to me. And this picture is my family and I at my graduation re from Recording Arts in Full Sail University. And now before I end the book, it's time for a shout out time. So, at this point, I want to thank everyone that couldn't be in this book, but added joy to my life. And especially this is going to be the sequel for my book, for the second book, and it's going to Tiffany Doyle. Robito Lopez, also known as Rib, Malik, Aaron, aka Downheart, Alan Pang, Matt Tack, Yoshiki, Drew B, Noel Comics, Ang Dev, Sushi Ramen Riku, Crazy La, Shun Chan, Loretta, Ginger Root, Two Ray, Alex Hall, Russian rapper known as Detzel, and Bad B Alliance. Also on the note of uh, Lil Peep, Juice World, the Japanese band Fisherman, NFKRZ, In Living Color, Crystal K, SYR Bros from Japan, Naomi Osaka, Fishbone, Edward from International Channels for Life, Nims Rap, Missa, Lyrical Lemonade, Bonnie Pink, Penguin Zio, my second year guest of the podcast, Talking Fun with Edo, and even more of those guests that are in today and in the future as well, in my head podcast, Christina Yu, Jonah from California, Brandon the Officer, this is not the same Brandon I was talking about a few chapters earlier, Eve the Great, VTubers along with the beginning and new generation of them on YouTube, Thomas the Villain Bishop, Arang After School Club, Godfrey, J. Yang Summers, LinkedIn, Instagram, Tandem, Brack Student Union Club, Korean Culture Club, the International Student Union, 3300 and Climbing, the Movie Clubs at Full Cell at my graduation class of Recording Arts and Films, the Cub Scout gaming YouTuber. Turns out he has the same birthday as me and born in 1990. And Nate the Great. And also one other shout out I also like to give to is uh, YouTubers of Characters Welcome. And the Japanese singer Ryoko Hirosue. And also on that note. Even if you weren't mentioned in this book. I want to thank you too. I love you all and have a great day. Falling. Eddie has now graduated from Full Sail University of Film in May of 2020 
and recording arts earlier in the year of 2023, February. He is not only working on his first album, but also getting his driver's license soon too. While his sister Gadavari works in an upcoming gaming company called Jump Button Studios that has been picked up by BET and Paramount, she also graduated from the same college as her older brother in 2020 from game design, with her boyfriend Jacob graduating too, and both of them are living together in California. His father is still a librarian, and his mother is not only the one that wrote this recent book, but spending time with their son and very happy that he is alive too. And as you can see, this is a picture of my graduation in 2023, actually here on campus at Full Cell. And on that note, guys, I want to thank you all for listening. And this is the end. I hope you guys have a wonderful, great, fantastic day. And I'll see you around. See you later.